reach strong and lift him up. Cause he's the power of life. So lift him up. Rain away. Rain away. Rain away. Rain away. Rain away. He's supposed to stay. Come to the right, right. Come to the side. sessions. When I'm in town, I listen to Jerry Royce live, PositivePower21.org, where they play my favorite music. Hi, I am recording artist Marilyn Dunn from St. Louis, Missouri. If you are looking for some soul-stirring, anointed, spiritual, and heartfelt music, visit my website at www. Dot M A R I L Y N N D U N N Ministries dot com. Or you can also find me on CD Baby, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. For booking information, contact Mr. Kevin Dunn at 636 856 0551. That's 636 856 0551. Hi, this is international urban gospel recording artist Angel Session, and I have a new single out that just was released February 17, 2015. The title is Jesus is Coming Soon. It is now on all online stores for so CDs, sold, uh, CD Baby, iTunes, Amazon. Also, you can visit my website, www.angelsessions.com, for more information. And I am on Gary Ross. Live. You are listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Session. Hey, this is Pat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iris Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Chris Body with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBaron. I'm live on the Dream World Show. Hi, what are you doing? Boy, who's the same? Peace, this is Dolly, the Poet, Spoken Word Artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin in, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Lewis Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse is a so thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or Donna Inc. Org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read 
Facebook reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to PositivePower21.org. I am Jerry Royce Live. That's right, and welcome, everybody. And tonight we got a special special treat for you. I know you guys have been watching us on Facebook, and we've been, we've been promoting Angel Sessions is back. That's right, urban gospel recording artist. That's right, she's the, she the uh, songstress of Hearts of a Broken Love, my favorite, favorite, favorite LP. And we're going to have her on in a few moments, but right now we're going to have a word from our big major sponsor of this program, Dominique Wilkins. Have you been hurt? Been hurt in back day? God, I'm talking back to you. Because you're you. not alone. No, no. Escaping to another reality. reality. Through Dominique Wilkins' good books. Good books, all your books, paperbacks, e-book, good books. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbooks.com. Thank you for joining us. This is the Jerry Voice Live Worldwide presentation for Positive Power 21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. Tonight's guest is Angel Sessions. Her bio reads, I've always had a love and passion for singing ever since I was a little girl. Touching the lives of others through my music inspires me to continue my journey for God's glory until the end. Angel Sessions. The road to success hasn't been easy, but after 18 or more years in the music industry, Angel Sessions has proven she is in it to stay. Angel started out early on as an R&B recording artist before her first deal with Pit Mobile, Ichabon Records, and Bolt Records. Angel was traveling to Gom, performing at the Grammys pre-party in Los Angeles and performing at the same venue with acts such as The Whispers, H-Town, Tina Marie, James Brown, Eric Renee, and many more. She performed also on many local television stations in the Bay Area and was interviewed on local radio program show. Angel Sessions writes all of her own lyrics Ever since I can remember, I always wrote songs of love to my Heavenly Father. It was a gift God has given me along with the ability to sing. Angels began singing in church. She was one of the lead singers that would perform a special song when called on. After years of local performances in the Bay Area and the Los Angeles area, Angel was introduced to a producer and songwriter that would take her career to the next level. In 1998, she signed a deal with Pit Mobile Records. She released her first album entitled Introducing Angel. Her first single release was Never Her. Got radio airplay on 80 BDS stations and was received well. The buzz about Angel was beginning to spread and many people in the industry was hearing the name Angel Sessions. Equibon sold the company in 1999. Angel was introduced to the vice president of Fantasy Records, Phil Jones. She had already recorded her second album, Love Ride, and at the time was shopping for her deal for her new project. Phil Jones loved the album, and it was soon released on a December 99 on Bolt Records. The single Get It Right from the album was also released to all of the radio stations around the country. A video was also shot for the song. Actor, director Fred Williamson played Angel's father in the video. The album was received well and had a small write-up review in Rolling Stones magazine and mentioned in Billboard magazine. Both records also signed Lenny Williams, Brenda Holiday, Frida Payne, The Delphonics, and The Dramatics. Each of them did one album deal. 
Angel had the opportunity to record backup vocals on the album and also duets. She was also introduced to Maurice White, the singer of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Angel sang on two on Maurice's album that were late replaced on the Stylistics album in 2010, entitled Painted in the Sky. Many great producers contributed to the album Love Rise. Tony Camillo wrote the song Inconvenience on Angel's album Love Rise. It was written for the movie Held Up, starring Jamie Foxx and Neil Long. The original title of the song film was Inconvenience, but was soon changed to the title Held Up. However, Angel was invited to the movie premiere to meet Jamie Foxx and the cast and to see the film. In 1999, Angel was introduced to Mari Wilson, formerly from the talented and famous girl group The Supremes. In 2004, Angel traveled around the country singing backup for Mary Wilson. In 2005, Angel released her first gospel recording album on CD Baby. The album entitled He Loves You began the new journey in the gospel world of music for Angel Session. She auditioned to open up for Fred Hammond at the San Diego State Fair in 2007 and was later asked to do two shows performing on two different stages on that same day at event. In 2012, Angel released other gospel material. She shot her first gospel video, Chastin and You. Got him. You don't. Both videos were received well by her fans. Angel released her next video in 2013 titled You Can. And one hour after the release, it went viral to over 9,000 views. Angel released her seventh album, You Send Me Higher, an EP, If You Love Me, that same year. In 2014, her latest album, Hearts of Broken Love, gained exposure from the fans around the world after the release of her, of her single, Get Up, from the album. It was released to radio stations and Charted at number one for 11 weeks on the national U.S. charts. Hearts of a Broken Love also charted on Amazon at number 14 for the best gospel music download. Angel is currently working on a new album entitled Songs of Comfort and will release, will release her new single, Jesus is Coming Soon, in February 2015. She is also planning on a tour coming soon. She, is as, she has been featured in Encore, HD Hair Magazine, Artists United Magazine, Say What News Online Magazine, and Top Cat Online Magazine. Angel has also had her songs featured on the Coast to Coast mixtape and was nominated for the Underground Music Awards for the Most Promising Female Artist and nominated for the ATL Music Entertainment Award for the Best Female Artist. Angel continued her success of sharing her talent for all of her fans, and she is so grateful for the support many of her fans have shown her. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Angel Sessions. Enjoy his presentation on Jerry Voice Live Worldwide. Welcome to the show, Angel. How you doing? Hey, I'm great, Jerry. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Now, you got your brand new single coming out. Well, it should be out now, right? February. Jesus coming yeah, soon. Yeah. February 17th, it was out uh, about three days ago. So it's on Amazon, all online stores where music is sold. CD Baby, Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, you name it. Yeah. Oh, man. Beautiful song, too. Now, before we get started with the interview, you know, I told you my audience in D.C. and Maryland, you know, mostly my family, they love to know who they're listening to on this show. And this is for you, Eastern Shore, Maryland, D.C. The question is, who is Angel Sessions? I Angel Sessions, I myself, I am an urban national or an international urban gospel recording artist. And I've been in the business for quite some time, uh, over 18 years. Um, been in a long journey and a wonderful one. Thanks again to my Heavenly Father for keeping me uh, through his strength strong and to go on. And just a lot of great things in store this year. Um, just working hard on continuing to uh, Put out good music, mainly for God's glory and to for all of my fans. I'm just grateful for all the emails I receive, uh, for all the support I get uh, through um, my um, awesome team, um, Kelly Lee, Artists United, uh, Demetrius Gidry, and, and um, all the wonderful host radio shows such as Franz, Ape, um, Gary, North Live, and just many others if I haven't uh, named. But God has been good, and I just can't thank him enough. It's awesome. That's right. All right, Angel. You know, I'm always listening to your songs. I tell you all the time how I just love your album, your LP, and I can't wait for the new one to come out. And you're dropping that in March, right? Songs of a Comfort. Songs of Comfort. Jesus coming soon, February. March, you got Songs of Comfort coming out. 
How anxious is, is your team and your uh, and your fans? How anxious are they? Uh, from what I'm hearing, you know, uh, and all the great, wonderful emails and um, response that I get, I'm sure they're very excited about it as much as I am. So uh, I think they'll really enjoy this new album. I'm very excited about it. I, I love the latest album I have, Heart to Broken Love, but I think this is more, far more, a little more deeper because you the songs really does have a song of, song of comforting a person's soul, a uh, heart, um, as far as whatever they might be going through. I mean, God is the only one that can save. Um, so the song is not uh, as though he can save someone. God can, but God can use the song for that purpose. So um, that they can use, hear the song and God can really minister to their hearts through it, and this is what I'm praying for. That's right. Now, your, your music is so relaxing, and, and we, when we talked before, you know, you told us, you know, you write all your own lyrics. And the same for this album, you wrote all your own, own lyrics? Correct. Correct. All right. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Your, your music is so relaxed. Like, it talks to your heart. You know, Hearts of a Broken Love. I just found every, every one of those songs to be so soothing and relaxing. You know, man, if it was slower or it was up-tempo, it just was so relaxing. You know, it's like you get almost feel the angels, you know, singing to you. Now... Are we going to get the same, or are we going to get way more from song, Songs of Comfort? I mean, how do you feel about this one over? I mean, could you compare the two if you had to? Yeah, Songs of Comfort is different. It, I mean, you know, my writing ability is, is who I am. So I think when people hear my vocal arrangement, it's still in your sessions. But Songs of Comfort is definitely more, um, um, more powerful, more, you know, heartfelt, simply because... Um, each song I write, I try to be as um, different. I, mm -hmm. I try not to be, you know, similarly the same. So um, it, it definitely does have that great feel of songs of comforting someone's soul. So, you know, some great, the Heart to Broken Love is a great album, and I'm definitely still um, currently uh, uh, pushing that one. But this mm -hmm. new album that I will be releasing, I'm, I'm really believing that um, hopefully, you know, Lord Willem is going to do well. Um, and that people will see why the title is called Songs of Comfort. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, Jesus is Coming Soon is an is a exciting, exciting singer itself. Now, let's listen to it a little bit, all right? And we'll be right back. So hold tight. We're talking to Angel Sessions on Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to listen to Jesus is Coming Soon. All right, hold tight, everybody, for this presentation for James Deshaies. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. Make sure I'm faithful to God's word to declare everything that I've learned from God's word, um, that Christ is soon to come, um, and that it's going to be a rejoiceful time for his elect. Maybe not for everyone, of course, because God knows who his elect are, but when he does return for his elect, there will be totally 
joyful sounds. I mean, I can't even imagine how it's going to be, but it's going to be so awesome on that day. So it's a song of encouragement to all the true believers from all around the world, and only God knows who they are, and they know who they are, um, to hold on and be strong and don't give up and, you know, and continue to lift up God's name, continue to be faithful, stay true to God's word, and share the gospel uh, faithfully to as many as God allows. Uh, put on your heart to do so, so that God will continue to keep people safe and get people from their sins, um, because this is the this is the miracle of Christ, and that is the work of salvation that He does in the hearts of His people. And so this song is just uh, to continue to uh, encourage all the true believers to just rejoice and be happy because the Lord's coming soon, and just hold on and don't give up. That's right. Hold on, everybody. It's coming soon. That's right. Now, Angel, your music is, is like a ministry. Is, it, is that the purpose? It's a ministry from you to us? Well, yeah. I mean, um, it's not like I, I, a preaching thing. It's not something that, that I'm doing because, you know, um, it's just something that through my music that God that does all the work and um, uses me uh, through my music to share his word, the gospel, uh, in my songs uh, for everyone. And um, to whom God will to save, He will. And I just want to be that vessel that God continues to use for His glory to be faithful to His word and I'm utilizing um, um, my songs as I use scriptures. So when that song, Jesus is Coming Soon, first opens up on the first verse, that is a scripture taken from the King James, original King James Version of the Bible. Amen. 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 There's just a lot going on out in the world. You know, we know we can't save everybody, but we try and touch as many hearts as we can, you know, through our voice, you know, what we do, what God, what he's given us. When, when, when will we see you, you know, on tour, on stage, on video? Any plans yeah. for that this year? Well, as far as video, definitely, hopefully soon. I can't say as, that, as far as when that is yet, but tour, hopefully, definitely soon. Um, you know, God... He knows the ending from the beginning, and you never know what God has in store for you. This is why I just continue to pray that God lead and guide me to whatever he asks me to do. If it's right now, and continues to just put out music, and he continues to touch the lives of people, then that's what I'll continue to do. But, of course, I would, you know, uh, and I'm working on eventually wanting to tour, you know, um, so and so for me more so that I can be able to reach my fans and see them face-to-face and be able to share, you know, what God gives me through songs you know, and be able to be live and up close because I know that means a lot to my fans to be able to perform live, and that's Mm -hmm. what I'm desiring to do. I have fans all over the world, you know, that write to me and ask me, when are you coming to the UK or when are you coming to Japan or when you come to uh, Australia, we want to see you. So, you know, I get these kind of emails sometimes, and it just really, you know, inspires me and pushes me more to keep going and hope that I can, you know, I'll, you know, get that worked out. That's right. That's right. They want to see you. Now, Angel, now, we know you got to start in church. Now, when you reach your, you know, your plateau where you are right now, the, you know, the big stage you're on now being, you know, international gospel star, is it possible for you to show up at church and pass and say, hey, come on up here and sing, Angel? <laughs> is that possible? Does that happen? Um, no, I mean, it hasn't as, as, as far for a while. Um, I'm just you know, I mean, there was, like, the I was in San Diego and um, with my mom, and um, she wanted me to sing and things like that and, and, you know, share my gift to, to her friends and, and people there. So I was able to do so, and they were very, you know, happy. Mm-hmm. Um, this was off my Heart to Open Up album. Um, this was back in um, December. So, um, but I'm just looking to tour, you know, Hopefully worldwide, you know, even if it's just starting off my native city area, you know, mm-hmm. and just be able to go wherever God allows to take me um, to go. Um, I just want Him to lead and guide me, not me myself. Yeah, yeah. Now we have a, our audience is a lot bigger since the last time we spoke with you on, on Jerry Voice Live. Now um, people want to know, you know, how did you get to start? You know, they they listening to you right now. You you know, you're international. You have these beautiful songs out. Obviously, you have good support you know, to get where you are today. You know, you kept you grounded. You keep the Lord first. Any advice or can you can you give our audience a little bit, you know, 
background, how you got started in the industry, and before you got started in the gasoline industry? Yeah, well, again, as my uh, you had read a little bit about my bio, since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to sing. That's just something I started doing since I was six years old. Um, and I did a little talent show um, from the song called Our Love by Natalie Cole, and I came in second place, I believe. And um, I just always had this love and passion for singing. I started writing since I was 11 years old. I would write my little tune for God, and I would run to my mom and sing it to her, and she would share you know, uh, my talent to her friends, but she would have company and ask me to perform and sing for them, you know. So I kind of broke away from my shyness because she did that a lot. So I was able to sing a lot in front of people and not be shy. And so um, she pushed me further to, and you know, encouraged me to keep singing. And um, as I got older, I had, um, you know, embarked upon a career, you know, doing a lot of networking and just introducing Myself to many people, you know, sending out P1 packages uh, with my bio picture and CD and um, just trying to do a lot of networking here in my uh, Bay Area and mm-hmm. meeting a lot of people. I um, was able to uh, be blessed to um, perform at the Grammys pre party four times. Um, this is a wonderful friend of mine. She uh, passed away, um, but her name was um, the late Bonnie Sweeney, and she will put on uh, the Grammys pre party in Los Angeles. And she would always ask me, she said, if I have you to perform, you know you got to perform my favorite song. And her favorite song was Celine Dion, My Heart Will Go On. So every wow. time I perform, I would open up with that song first, and then mm-hmm. I would perform one of my songs um, at the Grand Week Party. And so I was blessed to do it four times, four different years, and um, open up on many other people like Howard Hewitt, you know, and um, uh, perform with H Town was there, and The Whispers, and... I just met so many great, wonderful, you know, celebrity um, performers. And um, this was before I even got my start. I was just doing a lot of networking and trying to find myself and, you know, putting out demos, constantly performing and recording studios. And it wasn't until around 1997 when I uh, met uh, someone who was a producer, songwriter uh, himself. And he's the one that kind of started me and gave me, gave me my big break and uh, started his own label, Pitmobile Records, and um, um, we went to Atlanta, Georgia. And at the time, Ichiban Records was around in, in Atlanta, and they um, fell in love with my um, my music, and he wanted to put out a single on me, which was called She Was Never Her, um, but Ichiban wanted an album. So um, I had already had a lot of songs I'd never published, but, you know, fresh new songs that I just recorded, so we put it together and recorded a few more songs to put the album called Introduce the Angel, which was released in 1998 from um, Pitmobile slash Ichiban Records. Um, the following year, um, we were going to release the second single off that album, which was called um, You Missed a Good Thing. That was a song originally that I wrote, and they had voted, and um, I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> we were about to release so, you know, getting excited, but um, we just continued to perform, I mean, actually uh, recorded a new album, and um, we used their studio in Atlanta, and um, we shopped it to various labels at the time. And then he went to Fantasy Records out of Berkeley, California, and they reactivated a label, old school label called Vote, uh, mm-hmm. Tax Vote Records. And naturally, they had signed a lot of the um, old school, uh, legendary, great, awesome recording artists, which is uh, Lenny Williams and Brenda Holloway, Frida Payne, and Dramatics. And William Hart of the Delphonics and L.J. Reynolds um, of, of the Dramatics. And um, I can't remember everybody else. But um, and I was one of the new artists, and me and this other young lady um, from Atlanta. So uh, I was able to perform on their album, doing back vocals on their album. Oh, sorry, the Mighty Dales, can't forget them. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was able to meet them and just really down there, with, you know, became friends and just, you know, great teams and just working together and recording. And we did this single call at Brand New Start, which was mm-hmm. a duet with me and Lenny Williams, Brenda Holloway, and William Hart of the Delphonics. And we were going to release that. Um, we did release it, actually, on the quote records. We were going to actually perform it on Oprah Winfrey's show. She heard the single and she loved it. And she wow. it on her show, you know. Um, um, and I was all ecstatic, excited, excited about it. But, you know, God knows, and, it, you know, it didn't work out, but, you know, the single did come out, and, um, yeah, 
So um, just kept promoting and pushing the, the Love Right album, the big buzz created with, you know, all around the, the uh, United States and, and mm-hmm. Japan about Angel Sessions and my first album and my second album. Um, but just a lot of pro, uh, 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 protocols and a lot of politics and just things that just didn't go the way I, it would have it could have went, but God knows and he, you know, works the way he works and he does things best for, you know, uh, what he knows best. And so um, he led me from, from that point to in 2005, um, put it on my heart to start doing gospel music. And that's where I decided to just continue to do that, which was my passion since a child. And um, haven't looked back as far as that concerned and continue to write my songs and, you know, arrange and continue to just move forward and just, you know, Stay indie and um, just you know focusing on what God has done. Since then, I came out with about seven you know urban gospel music, and yeah. very happy about all that. And just great things that's coming out of it. And it continues to grow and continue to meet great people that God has blessed and brought into my life to help me along the way. Because I believe in this, you can't do it by yourself. So that's right, really that's right. guide me and bless me with some wonderful people that had you know came into my life. You know. Uh, like, you know, Kelly Lee of Artists United, and it was a great blessing um, to me um, because of her passion uh, for the independent artist um, to, that you can do it, you know, even if right. because you're not major doesn't mean you can't do it, you know, because social media is a big, big, broad internet where you can... Yeah, really it is. And big even world. Though, yeah, yeah and, and even though there's a lot of music already out there and it's just get oversaturated, it's just a way of knowing how to market and knowing how to really get your music out there. If your music's good, it will be heard. And that's the main thing, to making sure that it sounds polished and, 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 and clear and clean and, 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 and positive, you know, and radio-ready and um, commercial. And um, the fans know what they like. And even if that's my right. music may not be for everyone, it's for someone out there. That's and right. So that's right. For that individual, why I do what I do. That's right. You're doing a good job, man. We see you out there staying proud. Good role model for young people also, by the way. Want to throw that in there. Now, now your bio is so interesting. It reads just like a story. Um, you had an opportunity to, to work with the great Maurice, of, Maurice White of Earth, Wind, and Fire, my dad's favorite group. Um, what was it like working with Maurice on that project? Anybody, well, really you know, wonderful, actually. He's a very down-to-earth person, very down-to-earth. And he was like, uh, you know, I'm not puffing myself up. I'm just going by what I remember and what he said, that he was astonished with my vocals because I love doing, if you listen to all my songs, you know, I'm, I do all my own harmony. Mm-hmm. And um, he loved my vocals. He loved my harmonies. And that's what he needed me for. He needed me to do some backup. So these two songs that he was working on for the Earth, Wind, and Fire album, new album at that time. And so he hired me um, to do two songs, to do backup and harmony, things like that. And he loved it. And he said, well, yeah, you you know, I would, I'd like to keep using you, you know, and um, my next project, you know, so I said, well, that'll be great, you know, mm-hmm. and um, he ended up using those two songs actually on the Sal Instance album from 2010. And wow. it's called um, Paint It in the Sky. If you hear that song, Paint It in the Sky by the Sal Instance, that's my vocals in the background. Yeah, I got to look that one up, Paint in the Sky. And, that, and the name of that album was? Was that? It's a Sal Let's look for the song. I don't know that, I can't remember the album name. I just know the mm-hmm. single called Painted in the Sky. Okay, yeah, we can look that up. All right, you had an opportunity also to write a song for a big star, two big stars, at least in the African-American community, <laughs> Jamie Foxx and Nia Long. What was it like working on that project? That song was titled Inconvenience. Was that the title? It, it, it was not their project, actually. It was a movie. It was a movie called... Um, it was originally called Inconvenience, mm-hmm. but they changed the title. Trimark Pictures, I was in Los Angeles, and Trimark Pictures um, hired me. They said they wanted me uh, to do the theme song for the movie Inconvenience, starring Jamie Foxx and Neil Long. And mm-hmm. so I flew to uh, New Jersey, and I worked with Tony Camillo, I think his name. He wrote, he wrote that song, Midnight Train to Georgia, with... Um, um, What's Midnight Train? Gladys Knight. Um, Gladys Knight, that's right. Gladys yeah, Knight. And he wrote that song for her. And, he, and he's a great, I mean, he's a Grammy, you know, award winning songwriter. Oh, yeah. And um, 
he wrote a lot of great songs, a lot of Dionne Ward and a lot of people he's worked with. So he wrote yeah. the song, He Can Dance, on mm. my album. And, um, oh. and right at the last minute, they changed the title to Held Up. So the movie's uh. out, it, you can see it online. But, and so, I, you know, that, so the song was not able to be used because they changed the title. Even though when you hear the, the, watch the movie, that song, In would have been perfect, I think, for that mm. movie. But they wanted the title to be held up instead of Inconvenience. But I was able oh. to go to, go to the movie premiere and um, meet Jamie Foxx in the cast. Yeah, that was awesome. Awesome. All right. We're talking to Angel Sessions. He's been in the industry for a while, and we want to know the secret to holding up in the industry, the, the one that we know so well, the big-time music industry. Now, Angel, a lot of people don't, don't last that long um, in the industry, and, and I guess it's because they, they're not moving along with the time or the, the labels just don't feel like and we want to carry them pay them the money they used to making or do some of the, I say some of the people just decide to go indie, work on their own projects. So that's something they probably always wanted to do, do it their way. So we're going to just get your opinion on that when we come back. So we're going to take a quick break. All right. And we'll get your, your opinion on that one. All right. I'll tell you. Okay. Right. Hi, I am Arthur Crystal Lexus, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Roy Slides. Woohoo! Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? We to our publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.vsworldpublishing.com. What do you give to a person who has everything? Hi, I'm Darlene Ruckerwood, and I am the owner of Stylish and Stylish Gifts by Dar. I get this question all of the time. At Stylish and Stylish Gifts by Dar, we specialize in customizing gifts for people and pets, too. Our gifts are original and one-of-a-kind. Not only do we deliver, we ship as well. We work according to your budget and your things. We have gifts for all things, including baby showers, sports teams, Get well, bridal, birthdays, pets, just because, and that's just the name of you. So let's stylish and sell a gift by Dara. Take the word out of your gift giving today and also for the holidays. Our website is www.stylishandseller.com and our phone number is 443-682-5664. Thank you, family. That's right. Family all over the Maryland Eastern Shore, Washington, D.C., they listening to us. They want to know who's the writer of Get Up, because they love that song, too. That's from Hearts of a Broken Love, Angel Sessions, gospel, urban gospel recording artist. Brand new single out, Jesus Coming Soon. Songs of a Comfort is on its way. I can't wait. Woo! Angel, so how have you been able to hold up? You have 18 years in the industry. A lot of them don't make it that long. You, you know, you hear about the greats. It is falling by the wayside. Mm. Tell us the secret, Angel. How you do it? How did you do it? Uh, it's no real secret. It's just about the passion, you know, the person has to have and what they do. Um, it's just about something. Some people don't do it always for their passion and love of music. They do it maybe because it's just a money thing or, you know, at the time, it's just what they thought they wanted. It just depends on the individual, but I think that it's all up to the individual. If you're in it for the right reasons, if you're in it for the love of music, the love of the people that you share your music with, um, you can continue to do it because if you give up, you never know 
how it's going to end. It won't, it won't go anywhere because you've given up, so you will never know. That's right. Now, Angel, you know how sometimes you read about these guys that, you know, they're pastors, bishops, uh, deacons, and they tell that story how they, were, they, were, they, were, they heard God calling them, but they just weren't listening. They didn't want to give up the streets. They didn't want to give up that lifestyle they were living, you know, the preacher's word. They just kept resisting them. So things went bad, and they had no choice. And then they finally gave in and said, let me go help God and his people. And they, then they, you know, got into the ministry. Now, you, you, you were out there before in the R&B on the music side, and you decided that, you know, it wasn't for you anymore. And you decided to do gospel, and you just love it. You got the passion for it. You know, you hear about some of these greats, you know, they used to sing in the church, then they went on and got big contracts. And um, you don't even hear about them anymore. I just wondered, you know, wonder what would happen if they decided to return to the, their gospel roots and start singing for the Lord again. You know, you think that was a blessing for you? You know, working for God oh, again? I do know that God has to be the one to draw you. You can't do it yourself. There's nothing we can do in ourselves. God's already said that through his word, that uh, without me you can do nothing. So God has to be the one to plant that seed in that person's heart. He has to be the one to save that person. He truly has saved you, you know, when you have an intense desire to do his will, you know, uh, uh, to be obedient is to be, you know, to keep his commandments, which is the whole Bible. And when that, you will not give up. You can't give up because God is the one who's taking control of your life. And he's the one who works in your heart, both the will and do of, of, of his good pleasure. So it's always going to be about God because it's not ever about us. If we do it on our own strength or, or on our own self-righteousness and we're thinking we're doing it, you know, by God and we fall by the wayside and we keep doing it and we keep falling, then we have to re-examine ourselves Are we really saved. Mm, you know, right. and so salvation is of the Lord. It's not of ourselves. It's something we can do to get ourselves saved. God has to be one to do it for it. He's already done the work before the, um, before the foundation of the world. So at that point in time, before that person dies on this earth, God will apply the word to his heart, to that person's heart. You know, mm -hmm. and only God knows when that happens, but they know they'll have a, a new, you know, a new heart and a new spirit, and they'll know that their life will be completely different. Mm -hmm. You know, they won't have the desire to continue to do the same things they've been doing. They won't have a desire to say, well, yeah, I backslid, but there's no such thing as backsliding when God saved you. God doesn't work like that. That's right. Amen. Powerful, powerful. All right. Now, you've been um, seen in some big-time magazines. You, um, you're in a new one that's out, Artists United Magazine. Kelly Lee, brand new. Yes. She featured you in that. What was that project like for you? Working yeah, that was awesome. She had uh, re uh, released her, her awesome magazine on um, October of last year, 2014, um, featuring the awesome Erica Kane. She was the first young lady uh, on it. Uh, she's an awesome R&B singer herself. Um, many people know her music. And um, she blessed me to feature me in November uh, on the Artist United magazine. And I was totally honored, totally honored for that. Um, and so, yeah, that was just an awesome magazine. And then um, there were others um, that was on that God was in with, with like, um, um, Say What News magazine is a wonderful magazine that got us with, with Renette Brown. She's the CEO mm -hmm. owner of Say What News. Um, that was back in 2012, actually. And, mm -hmm. um, and then she featured me again in 2013 when I came out with the You Send Me Higher album. Um, she did a review on that one. And um, then the latest album, the latest uh, magazine I was on was called, um, um, was it called Encore? Encore. Encore. Mm -hmm. Hair and Fashion Magazine featuring um, um, Lisa Rachel was on the front cover of that magazine mm -hmm. that just came out January of this year. So mm -hmm. I am in that one. All right. Now, you have, you have a great look, great look, real fashionable. <laughs> How important was, was image, you know, especially being introduced in these magazines? Because they seem like... You know, these, these magazines about the glam, you know, perfect image. Is that tough, you know, being in the industry, trying to keep it up 24-7? You know, is that hard? Um, no, because I'm not trying to be a follower, actually. I just wanted to continue to allow God to use me. And um, I just do what I have been doing for a long time, which I believe it is important um, uh, when you uh, have, you know, show yourself to be professional, 
you know, mm-hmm. keeping up with um, your website, updating it constantly, keeping current information on there for your fans, and anyone that want to know anything about you. Your image is very important, your album cover, your CD cover, your, your pictures, profile, your, your photos. You know, it's very important because if you look sloppy, your music, the people are going to make your music sound sloppy, you know. Mm-hmm. So you got to be very, you know, careful and very, if you're a sincere artist, of course, you know, you're going to want to look like most of the majors. You don't see them with sloppy albums and, and it looks like amateur looking, you know, it's very professionally <laughs> done. So um, mm-hmm. if you as, as an artist have to remain, you know, doing the same because you want your fans to take you serious. That's right. That's right. So, so Angel, where did, where did you learn all your business savvy, you know, in the beginning? I mean, how did, I mean, where, where were you in the beginning and where are you now when it comes to making business decisions? And who's helping you out with that? Uh, so the grace of God is helping me out with that, with that a lot, of course. You know, and then, of course, with, with the help of uh, Kelly Lee, Artists United, and then, of course, my husband. Um, but I, I make a lot of decisions also of my own because I've been in doing it for so long. And I had to learn, you know, a lot of the business side in order to take care of my business when it comes to making sure, you know, with my BMI account, you know, mm-hmm. uh, publishing a royalty and making sure I register my music and things like that. So when I'm coming out with a new album, everything is, is all taken care of. It's not just throwing your music out on iTunes, expecting it to just sit there and, and people are going to go buy. You really have to market that. You really have to continue to push and market and promote so that people can know that you're out there and that, you know, and make yourself visible on a regular basis. You know, yeah, right. um, if you mm-hmm. do, you know, uh, be on blogs and have other people to talk about you, you know, and mm-hmm. share your, your, your news where other people be excited for you as well as you're excited for yourself. Um, so I learned a lot of these things as I'm out there doing a lot um, uh, and along with uh, my team that's working with me. And um, I think that's, you know, very important. You should, you know, always learn the business and not just sit back and do nothing but be the artist. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it's cool to... You know, to be lazy, you have to learn to say, no, you know, it's going to take hard work. You know, nothing happens overnight, you know, but it's not about the quick, get, get, get rich quick, you know, kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. but you keep grinding, you keep working, you keep pushing, you know, and it will happen eventually. But willing, you just keep, you know, believing in yourself because if you have what it takes, others will see it. Right. But you have so to get it out there in front of them. That's right. Yeah, how was, how, how was um, you know, how important is management to an to an artist? How important is that? The management. I think for for, for new artists, that, that management could be important because new artists don't mainly know much about the business. They don't know where to go. They just do music in studios. They want to get heard. They want to be out there. Um, they want to perform. They want to sing. You know, they want to do a lot of great things. But if they don't know the business side, then of course they should need have someone that's going to guide them. So that they're not all over the map and just doing things backwards or doing things that they don't know what they're doing. But, but you know, because of the, the industry that has changed a lot, you know, in today's um, market, some don't need managers. You know, I think it's good to always have someone to guide you because even with me, you know, I don't think, think that I know everything because I don't. Just because I've been in the business for a very long time, the industry is constantly changing. You know, there's constantly new things that are online, constantly new things that are happening. To keep yourself current, to keep yourself going, you need to learn about all these new things. To keep yourself, you know, going so that um, you can not only help you, what, what you're trying to do, but perhaps share that knowledge with someone else, you know, to keep going because the industry is always changing. It's always been like that even before social media began, you know, so it's always good to, keep, you know, keep yourself, you know, grounded. And I think as, you know, with today's change of social media, if you are an advanced artist, you know, and you know an awful lot about, you know, what you need to do with marketing, promotion, things like that, you may necessarily not need a manager. But then, again, you may want one because you can't do everything. I mean, who has mm-hmm. a lot of hats to wear? You may want eventually someone to take over and say, I just want to be the creative person, and I want someone to take over my business side, and that's fine, too. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. You're making Now, who's, who decides on your, on your different looks? Because all your pictures look great, your poses, I think everything has to be perfect when you're, especially on the internet, because it moves so fast. How important was your look for the internet? Well, as always, since the beginning of time when I first started this industry, it was always important to me, you know, um, having that image as well as performing and things like that. It all goes hand in hand, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, You want to take care of yourself. You want, you know, you want to look the part, you know. Again, it's not like that's the 
the image and then that's it. But images, everything, you just look like you don't care about yourself and you look sloppy and toe up and, and you just wear anything and, and you just take a picture like a selfie picture and you stick it on an album cover and call it a, a CD. You know, that, that's mm -hmm. not going to look right for someone you want to buy your music. And they mm -hmm. buy that even if it's downloaded. I mean, it just looks like you don't care, so why should they care? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> now, how about as far as like um, skincare, eating right? Are you really in, in, in tune with those kind of things? I am. I am. I, I definitely, you know, I mean, I don't always eat right and healthy foods all the time, of course, but I do try to maintain, you know, uh, watching what I eat and exercising and keeping myself fit, you know, so that um, I can last as long as I can, look willing, you know, and um, be able to have that. Um, energy, so when I'm performing on stage or whatever, that, you know, I can have that energy, you know, so I do definitely try to keep myself in shape. That's right. Now, what is a typical morning like for Angel Session? A typical morning? No, I'm always media? just... Yeah, well, it's, 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 every day is kind of different. It just depends, you know. Some days I'm more busy, busier than others. You know, but always making sure that I'm up and on that computer and doing what I have to do, you know, and keeping um, my fans uh, updated about whatever is going on or, you know, making sure that I'm on time with my interviews or answering calls, you know, or, you know, maybe at times I have to take the break and go out and go for a walk, you know, to, to keep that going and, you know, but most of all, just making sure that I'm not all over the map where I forget about God, you know, um, think about him at all times and make sure you and you pray, don't, don't forget this trying to pray, you know, That's and thank right. the Lord and just, you know, meditate on him, you know, don't get so caught up that you forget about him. You know, I have to right. remind myself to do that all the time because it can, it's easy to be done if, you, if you're so caught up. Yeah, you hop right out of bed and forget to jump on your knees, you know. <laughs> like, oh, my God, where am I going with this, you know. Now, th and this question is for you, Angel, then we're going to take a quick break. Big, big question, work-life balance. Is it balanced? Balance? Is it balanced? Yes. Is your work and life balanced? Yes, always with the help of God. I, I, again, I say I can't do anything without Him. I depend on God for every single thing. Everything. I can't do not one thing without Him. It's an impossibility. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I lean on Him. He's, he's my Father. And, 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 and as you can say, I'm a needy person. I need Him. I need Him mm -hmm. every hour. I need Him every second. You know, to guide me, to guide me to think right, to guide me to do right, to guide me to make the right decisions, you know, to guide me to say the right thing, to guide me to say the right thing, at the, at, you know, uh, with someone who may be tweeting me and, 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 and what, how, how should I respond, you know, a, a word of encouragement, you know, to say something, because you never know what that person might be going through. Yeah, and, you right. know, and, and you want to say the right thing, you don't want to say the wrong thing, you don't want to get so caught up about yourself that you forget about the others out there, you know, it's mm -hmm. not about me. So, um... Just remaining balanced, you know, that's just thinking about that um, this is not for me and I'm not here for me, it's just for God's glory. So, you know, if I keep that in mind, that it's not me, it's him, you know, that's where the joy comes in. That's where the joy comes from. It keeps me going. That's right. Now, that was a good message because, you know, when you get caught up in your passion and, you know, you're really driving because you know where you're trying to be. Because I always try to set little pinpoint, little goals, that you, you know, and then you always want to, you know, throw them at somebody, see how it sounds to them, but then you find yourself that you're monopolizing the conversation all the time. It's always about you, and sometimes you forget to ask them how was their day, you know, what are they up to right now? It's like, you know, it's not a lot of time in a day, and with the speed of the Internet, you, sometimes you say, oh, my God, did I call mom yet? Did, 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 she, did I give her 15 minutes? Or should I time her? Or, you know, you find yourself being on a timetable all the time. Do you find that to be kind of difficult sometimes, just, you know, trying to work in little things like saying hi to a best friend, see how they're doing, about, you know, it's like about your album or your tour? Is it, have you learned from that? Yeah, Anything well, first there? of all, I wanted, when you met your mom, I wanted to say shout out to my mom, my darling mom. Yeah. Today's her birthday, so happy birthday, all mom. Right. You right. know, so, um, yeah, definitely want to make sure that I stay grounded, you know, and, and stay humble because, um, just like God's word says, pride comes before destruction and haughtiness before it falls. So I never want to be prideful in anything. You know, this gift God's given me can easily take it away, you know, so it's not about me. You know, and stay grounded and, and always think, always I'm grateful God 
only knows to uh, my fans, you know, uh, my fans who are so supportive, just people that just, you know, the tweet, you know, that they tweet me or the, or the my fans on Facebook or wherever, or they email me from, you know, different other sites like Number One Music or wherever it is, you know, and all my supporters, I am so grateful for them and just, you know, happy when I hear from them and the wonderful, loving things that they say. And they really, they don't know me at all, you know, but it's the music that they hear that moves their heart. And, and, and I'm just rejoicing in my heart when they, when I hear from them, it just makes me so happy. That's right. Yeah. Very clean style, awesome image, beautiful, beautiful message. I think people are just um, drawn to you, you know. All right. We're going to take a quick break. So when we come back, Angel, we're going to get your, your final thoughts to our audience. And, and before you go, I want to say, say this, that, that you're an awesome role model, not just for young ladies, but for people that's young in business like myself. You know, I've been in it for a while, but we, it's another phase of it now. And I think you are one of the trendsetters, one of the game changers, somebody to watch, somebody to learn from. You're just like a, just like a billboard, a video, you know, somebody to look at and, just, hey, this is the way you're supposed to do it right. And that first means give God the glory and, and give it all to him, and, and he, will, he, will, he will guide you. That's, that's a powerful message that you gave today on that, and I thank you for all of that. All right. You're we're talking to Angel. <laughs> thank you. We're talking to Angel Session. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back and get her final thoughts. This is Jerry Voice Live Worldwide. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. All right. Thank you, Leisha Sandler. That was Leisha. Thank you, Leisha. Promoter out, out east. No, oh, she's in Atlanta right now. Anyway, we appreciate her, her help. All right, we're talking to Angel Sessions. Man, I love that song, Get Up. Can't wait to get into Songs of Comfort. Can't wait for that to be dropped. Jesus Coming Soon is out there now. Download it, guys. That's right. CD Baby, iTunes, Amazon.com. Is anywhere else they need to know where to get it at Angel? I uh, uh, just want to let everyone, again, you want more information, um, you can always visit my website at www.angelsessions.com. Um, you can go there, and then uh, there you can click on that contact if you need uh, to contact for any info. And um, just stay up to date, and I will keep you informed on all that I, I have coming up this year. And thank you for all those who have supported by my single, Jesus is Coming Soon, uh, anyone who bought any of my music. And look forward to Songs of Comfort, which will be released sometime in March, towards the end of March. And I'm just looking forward to that. And definitely again, for Lord willing, soaring soon, because I, you know, I just feel in my heart that Lord willing, that's going to happen, you know. But I'm just working at it and with my team, and I'm just grateful for that. So um, I just want to say thank you and shout out uh, to um, always my loving husband and Demetrius. Shout out to... Kelly Lee of Artists United. Um, shout out to um, all the producers of Songs of Comfort, which I would like to name, which would be Franz H., um, Freddie White, Patrick Joseph, a.k.a. Beat Abuza, uh, Antonia Tizan Street. He's actually a platinum producer. He's worked with so many major great artists. Um, and Andre Rivers. He is the one who actually um, mastered my album. And um, to um, Jerry Ross Live, uh, to yeah. Lady T and her husband, and to um, uh, Faces of Success Radio, um, and to Dao, um, my PR, and to um, all of my fans from all Thank around you. the world. I love you. And anyone I left out, please forgive me. Um, but I am grateful to everyone, and God is awesome. And most of all, forgive me, Lord. My Heavenly Father, because he should have been first, I should have said that. Um, without him, I'm, I couldn't even be here doing this. So always glory to my Heavenly Father, my awesome, loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he is an awesome God. Right. Amen. Amen. And don't forget about the great state of Maryland. 
It's been supporting Angel Session. Been here all the time. That's right. We support you. All right, Angel. One thing I want to know, can we still get some of your previous albums? You know, like you send me higher, you know, your EP, Absolutely. If You Love Me. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, definitely. They're all on Amazon, iTunes, CD Baby, and Google Play, and all online stores where music is sold on all music. And um, so, um, yeah. And then, of course, I have an Amazon store where you, when you type up Angel Sessions uh, Amazon, you'll have all that on um, in my store on Amazon. So definitely, you can still get all of my previous albums out there, including the very first Introducing Angel and um, Love Right. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad I said something about that because I was just wondering because I know you release a whole bunch of albums and I'm wondering, you know, are they still available for download, which they are they in Definitely. your store. Yeah. yeah, you never mm-hmm. told us you had a store. Angel Session has a store, y'all. She never told us that. <laughs> All right, now we know. Now we know. All right, so I'm not stuck with just waiting for songs of conference. So if I want some new stuff, I go out there to her store. And don't forget about her website, Angel Sessions. Dot com, All right. And she has videos, songs, photos, news and events, bookings, all those good things out there. Bio, you can read her bio, magazine reviews. And that's something I always love doing is reading um, magazine reviews and um, in the articles. So she is available. Um, look up Encore HD, Hair Magazine, Artists United Magazine, Say What News Online Magazine, and Top Cat. Online, so those are some of the magazines you can catch up and really get a chance to get to know Andrew. Because I know I didn't ask her all the questions you probably want to hear, but you can check out those publications online and find out more and more and more about Angel's session. All right, our Angel, we appreciate you, Angel. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Well, thank you so much, Jerry, for having me. It's always a pleasure. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, thank you so much for your patience today. Simply awesome, and um, we wish Songs of Comfort the best, and we hope you come to the to the Maryland D.C. area to perform. I hope we, oh, hope wow, that would be awesome! <laughs> yeah, we'll that would be. be awesome. Yeah, they know you out here, so you you know see the management team can make that happen. All right, mm-hmm. all right, ladies and gentlemen. Like I always say, if you want to hear the good stuff, I mean the real good stuff, you got to listen to Joy Ruiz live on Positive Power Twenty One dot org. Because I just finished revising the website. The team was working on it. it. Looks good. We agreed to something. We got it going. Also, you'll see Angel Sessions on there. That's right. So you won't forget that she was just on this interview. So it's out there on demand. Also, on Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21, you can listen to her 24-7, anytime, anywhere, on your smartphone, PC, laptop, and tablet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jerry Bush Live Worldwide. Have an awesome week. All week long. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. Have you been hurt? Been hurt in that day? Gotta talk him back to you. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escape into another reality. reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books of your book paperback. Ebook, good book. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbooks.com. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic? heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. Good evening. You're listening to Bianca Harrison, author of Love and War. I'm listening to Jerry Ross Live, Worldwide, Positive Power 21. Positive Power 21.org, Internet Radio. You are listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce.
You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Pat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is I am Sandra Carter. Hi, this is Phil Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce. Hi. Hi, I'm Phil LeBurn. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what do you do? Boy, you're the same. Hey, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a award winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio. Where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the Green Hills of Western New Jersey inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse is a sense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane, is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback, and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.tamikapatrice.com. Hi, this is Angel Session. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album, and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned, and we'll see you there. This is a Jerry Ruiz Live Worldwide presentation for PositivePower21.org radio network and podcast. On Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. The anticipated new interracial novel by Bianca Harrison. Starting out writing short stories, Bianca decided to write her first novel two years ago. After writing on and off, Bianca knew it was time to complete what she had started. In a six-month time period, not only was her first novel completed, but her second novel was birthed as well. With great imagination, creativity, and faith, Bianca's hobby became a profession in 2013. Bianca is the author of Someone to Call My Own. Born and raised in South Georgia, she currently resides in North Georgia with her family. She has a Bachelor of Human Resource Management degree in Business Administration. For more information, visit her website at authorbiancaharrison.com. Available at amazon.com. Books are sold online. Love and War is a provocative interracial story of deceit, love, hope, and commitment, and heartache as a love affair threatens a marriage and silence hides a secret as a life hangs in the balance. Ava and Ryan are the ideal couple. They share two children together and seem like a perfect family. Ava is a successful, best-selling author who lives her life putting her family first. She's a diva with expensive taste. Ava is so busy enjoying her wonderful life that she dismissed signs that result in her being diagnosed with a terminal illness. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Bianca Harrison at authorbiancaharrison.com. I hope you enjoy this presentation.
Hey, hey, thank you everybody for joining us and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. I am Joy Voice Live and we streaming, y'all. That's right, we streaming tonight with Bianca Harrison. That's right, we so excited to have on here. Woo! She is here, finally. That's right. The next voice you hear will be Bianca Harrison. on site for this presentation. Hi, I am Martha Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Roy Slides. Woohoo! Hey, hey, what's up, Bianca? How you doing? Hey, Jerry, how are you? Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So awesome. The right of love and war. What's going yeah. on? Nothing. I was taking Nothing. it day by day. <laughs> That's right. Taking care of the family, right? Yeah. Care of the family. That's right. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Well, you ready for the first question? I am. All right. And the first question is, who is Bianca, the author? Ooh, who is Bianca, the author? Bianca is uh, educated. She's an educated lady. She's a family oriented lady. I have three kids. I'm married, and I am also a writer and an author and an artist. Mm, an artist. <laughs> so all that comes. Wow. Besides, I still work my day-to-day job, so that comes with it, too. But I managed to get everything done. Mm. Awesome, awesome. Now, it's unusual that, you know, someone is packaged that way. You know, they can write and create artistry. Now, how is that possible? Now, I've been in a major where there was frustration, drinking it- and partying. <laughs> so they couldn't handle it. They was about to bail. They failed. And how did, how did well, you get through that? I, well, I mean, if it's something you're passionate about, you, you find a way to get it done. It's just like with anything else. I use my phone for everything, my smartphone. So anytime or anywhere I'm at, if I have some time, I write from my phone and I transform it to my um, computer once I get home. Other than hmm. that, I mean, my phone is my best friend. That's how I write. I don't do any typing. I do everything on my phone and transform it. So I, oh, I get it done. It? I have I, I do everything like that, so I have time. Hmm. So you dictate it to your phone? Mm-hmm. I do everything through my phone. Wow, so sometimes this can be a little phone. smart. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, I think you get kind of crazy sometimes. I, I didn't it, say yeah, that. <laughs> but it, it works for me. Some people can't do that. They have to be at a computer type, and I don't have to type only hmm. when I'm doing corrections and stuff like that and when I'm you know, transform it to my Word document. Other than that, I mean, I found a way to get it done. Wow. You're going to be getting to a lot of publications. Mm. <laughs> I know. Some people are like, how do you work, have a family, raise three kids, have a newborn, and still write? I mean, if you're passionate about your craft and that's what you mm-hmm. want to do, you'll find a way to get it done. That's right. There's no yes. excuses. Uh, yeah. No excuses. <laughs> yeah, cause I, heard, I heard when you're married and you have three kids and when you're at work, that's kind of like your break. Yeah, oh, exactly. When you're at work, I mean, you have your break and your lunch break, and you can sit and relax for a minute. You can mm-hmm. think clearly. And when the kids start sleep, that's your time to write. That's right. That's right. All right. Good for you. Good for you now. All right. All right let's, let's hear a little bit about your background. Tell us, you know, how did you grow up? You know, what was oh. middle school and high school like? Um, High school, middle school was good. I was... um. Little popular little kid in high school, um, you know, homecoming court and all that. But I did play sports. I'm um, softball. Mm-hmm. Um, I came up with good grades. Um, went to college. I finished. Um, I master. I mean, did my bachelor's degree in human resource management. Um, mm-hmm. Worked full time an account specialist, and here I am. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm not even doing anything in my background when I went to school. I'm writing. I'm an author. So. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, so do you have any? Know, and how about you? How, how about your siblings? Did, did you have anybody to play with when you were growing up? Yes, I have a sister, and I have um, my sister two years younger than me, and I have a brother who's ten years younger than me. So, so now, that's age difference. So. so you skipped all through them. You did your presentation like in twenty seconds, and you didn't even <laughs> your brother, sister, mother, father, grandmother, nobody. Ah, Where you grew sorry. up at? Really know where you grew up at? So for you know, well, you, you said know, South, well, Georgia. South, yeah, South Georgia. South Georgia. It could be anywhere. Well, what's yeah, up, what's up know, Georgia. 
South Georgia is a little town, Griffin, Georgia. That's south of Atlanta. Okay. And right now, I currently live north of Atlanta in Gainesville, Georgia. So I mm, went from south yeah. to north. And yeah, it's, it's cold up here where I'm at right now. So, But I was born and raised in Georgia, you know, a little country mm-hmm. town, Bowden County, Griffin, Georgia. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but Atlanta is right there in the center of it all. Yeah, I've been, yeah, we've been to Atlanta and Buckhead and, you know, mm-hmm. where the money at, where the people who... Yeah, you know, where the money at, where you do. Yeah, <laughs> where the Lear Jets at. People park Lear Jets in their backyard and got <laughs> golf courses and stuff. Just like a little small Beverly Hill and Buckhead. <laughs> yeah, I heard, you know, um, you know, that's Hollywood, you know, moved out to Atlanta now, you know. That's yeah, where all the reality shows. Yeah, down there. Exactly. Yeah, we, yeah, we see your little reality shows. We see what's yeah. going on. A little Richie <laughs> restaurant. Wise. Stuff, yeah. Oh, I guess oh, that's dressed up. Yeah, that's what we need to get to, but you know, we, we're we doing what we're supposed to do. So, that's right. Get so where we need you, to go. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, would you say North Georgia, you know, it's kind of like moving on up, like the Jefferson, you know, with Well, that? I'm not going to say mm, moving on up, but for me, it's moving on up. I actually, well, when, when I was in school, I knew I didn't want to stay in Griffin, Georgia, so I want mm. to, um, you know, move a little from there. So North Georgia to me is okay. I like where I'm at. So I actually met my husband in college. We went to the same college. So I met him. He actually from here. So I moved yeah. here about 15 years ago. So yeah. this is home now. So right, that's right. So so what was it like in the household? You know, you know, what did you guys do to entertain yourselves? I mean, did you guys have like a farm, or was it just you know you you know I don't know Griffin. We didn't have a and Griffin, you know, what we do for fun, you know, just normal kid stuff, you know, school projects and, you know, little groups and stuff and clubs. Other than that, you know, my mom worked full time, my dad worked full time, and, mm-hmm. you know, we just did normal stuff. Other than that, mm-hmm. you know, I did work while I was in school, so I worked mm-hmm. when I was 15 and still kept my grades up. So other than that, I was trying to make money at an early age. I didn't have mm-hmm. to, but that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, see, Griffin oh, yeah. sounded like that was named after the mayor or somebody. Was that named after the mayor? <laughs> no, like, Griffin just like a little. You're going to have to look it up. You have to look up Griffin. Yeah. Georgia, so yeah, I'm going to Google it. I'm going I'm to <laughs> Google it, too. I'm going to look for like exactly right where the, you grew up at. Yes, exactly. right now the crime rate, if you look, is awful. They're having so many mm-hmm. um, gangs down there, so it's just scary. Mm-hmm. Every week you hear about somebody getting shot. I don't know where that comes from. I guess kid doesn't appreciate life right now. You know, human life doesn't matter at this point. So yeah. it's all the young kids and games. So that's all you hear about right now. I yeah. never in a million mm-hmm. years would have thought that. So. See, I remember too. Um, you know, growing up like in, you know in the the eastern part of Maryland is is kind of like you know like the south south like Virginia and places Carolina, uh-huh. and um the the the, the the kids really didn't have a whole lot to do. You had to be real creative. Like, I remember my uncles and them, they had, like, band. Everybody had a band or they had a DJ group. So they spent most of their, their weekends practicing for gigs. So, but during oh, the week, wow. they all had, had jobs like, you know, farming, cleaning, mm-hmm. you know, janitorial work. Like, cause my grandfather had a janitorial business. I remember they used to go around cleaning different nurseries. That's what they called daycare centers down there. So they were busy, you know. By the time they did their homework and had to do those things, then chore, take care of the farm animals, the day was done. But for the oh, boys wow. who who didn't have all of that, you know, they they didn't have much. You know, they thinking about uh-huh. you know who house they gonna break in when those people leave. You know, they could be their neighbor. They didn't care. So you be hearing yeah, dumb crime. Man. It'd be dumb crimes and drugs. It was a lot of drugs. You know, you can just pull right up and you see the man sitting right there. You know, the guy with the Mercedes is always he's the guy. You know, everybody else driving, wow. riding bikes. <laughs> yeah, so. that is sad. You know, you have that. But luckily, you know, I didn't grow up like that. I mean, like I said, there's crime and drugs everywhere. But mm-hmm. the way it is now, it's so different. Yeah, it's prevalent in the, in the low-income areas. You know, that's how they they um, survive, you know, because nobody else can get no job. And then you when you have no kids job. of your own, you know, it's just so scary so you mm-hmm. try not to bring them up like that but you want to teach them about life as well and you want to keep it 100 with your kids as well too about what's going on in the street 
Yeah, I know. You, oh, yeah. you know. So, well, let's look at, we can look at that, that, that uh, movie that was called uh, The Snow and the Drifts or something like that. Snow and the Bluffs. Yeah. <laughs> you can look at that. <laughs> I yeah, thought man. that thing was real. I was like, is this real? <laughs> they called my son up. I was like, Brian, oh, is this real? God. I know. So, you know. It's, it's life, though. It's life. I know. Mm, that was so. scary. And I, I worked know. at the hood, but I don't remember being like that. It's like, what the, yeah, me what either. The, yeah, I said, you kill people you know. They like, drive I you, by, Yeah, I think you shoot up people you don't know. You know, in the city, you know, you're going at the other rival neighborhoods. Those guys, like, live in the same hood. They yeah, that's the scary part. You can go visit yeah. family, and they have having a drive-by, and, you know, the yeah. ones always get hit. So. Yeah, you know, cookout. It's like, you know, when you put your arms down in the city, at least <laughs> they do take time off. It's like, look, man, it's, it's a holiday, you know. Everybody know. put their arms down. Leave them at home. Take the clip out. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's the way it is, though. You know, you, yeah, some people just boy. put their energy into something else. You know, you just never yeah. know what you would get. You know, people that's don't have right. time. That's they right. want to stand on the corner, shoot, and sell drugs. And there's so much potential out here for everybody. I mm-hmm. think, you know, somebody, for, there's something for everybody. So. That's right. Now, what's the, what's the ages of your kids? What are their ages? My daughter is. 15 years old. Mm. I have a son who's two. Me and my husband started all over once we spent, went back to school, finished, and did everything else. And mm. I just had a newborn who's two weeks years old, and I'm still Ooh. working. <laughs> wow. Well, not working, working, but, you know, trying to still promote my stuff. I'm okay, but I have a two-week-year-old, mm. a two-year-old, and a 15-year-old. So you actually, so, um, so you working from home right now? You, so I mean, you no, also from your other from job. I'm, I'm actually, yeah, on maternity. As far as my books and stuff, I'm still doing stuff like that, and um, mm. book tours, and just just doing stuff like that, just to get everything out there. And mm. you know, right yeah. now, I feel Can I get like an I'm agent. I know. Get an agent I know. To do all that stuff for you. That's what and they my husband's actually pretty good. Yeah, and he's actually pretty good with doing a lot of stuff like that too. He's actually doing a couple of things, but. I set up a lot of stuff with him. You need to call this person, you need to call that, you know. I just like to have my hand in everything just to make sure stuff get done. Mm-hmm. Because if it don't get done, you'll be pissed off and you'll be like, if you want something done, you do it yourself. Or you know how that mm-hmm. goes. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, I'm still just, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much getting there. So I'm almost 100% and I'm pretty good. So mm-hmm. I'm ready to get back out there. Stuff, which I know I'm taking time and stuff because this is a big snow snowstorm up here and the weather's awful too. So, oh, you guys getting the snowstorm? Cause we got some well, crazy. Um, snow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had the a flash. Had a flash. Yeah, we had a flash storm, but we did get something over the weekend. Gave us a day oh, okay. off on Tuesday, so we actually had oh. a four day weekend. So that was hot. See, the kids been yeah. out of school, and I think they're just going back tomorrow. But more weather's coming in tomorrow too, so. Wow. It's just like mm. awful and stuff. So everybody's running yeah. out of here trying to make sure they got everything. And power's been out everywhere all week. And some people yeah, just now get their power you back. Yeah. So. so you guys have no. to have make sure y'all have. Um, so you guys got to have like um, wood burning fireplaces and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So then when you run out of wood, you got to figure out what you're gonna do. And then they got a new boy, so it's like oh crap, you know. But luckily mm. we was. You know, our power wasn't out like the other ones, just a couple of hours. So we was one of the lucky ones. So I'm grateful for that with a newborn. Yeah. So. So your lines so don't run on the ground? Down. So y'all don't run your no. electric lines down on the ground? No. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, in, the, in the cities, the new development areas, that's like suburban, they run our power lines on the ground. So, no, um, they just, you know, everything just kind of worked out. But a lot of people... I guess there was ice everywhere and the power's down, lines mm. and everything down. Yeah, so. the way to the, yeah, the way to the, yeah. We haven't had no really bad ice storms in a couple of years now. Mostly the blizzard coming from the Midwest. That's what really hit us hard. But um, I understand what you're going through. I mean, it's not over yet. You know, everybody's not out of the woods. You know, I, no, it's coming from the south, some, you know. <laughs> ready for some spring weather right about now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then when it gets too hot, man. we'll be complaining about that. Yeah, because it get hot it's down there. I remember, yeah, y'all get some thunderstorms and yeah. index is crazy. 
Georgia weather is crazy. One minute yeah. it's summertime, next it's wintertime, spring, you get all the seasons in one week. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of like Long Island because my grandmother, um, you know, owned a home up in Long Island. I remember that it's really cool at night because of the water, but during the day it's like sizzling hot. You know, like you can see the steam coming off the street. It's mm-hmm. so hot, you know. Yeah, but Long yeah. Island sounds like a nice place to visit, though. Oh yeah, really nice, really nice. A lot of mixture, cult, different cultures and everything. A lot of different, different people, you know, because a lot of people come there um, from the foreign countries who specialize in, like, you know, in medicine, in nursing. So that's uh-huh. always the first stop. Is all those, those type of because they have the really big hospitals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and oh. that's where you go to get trained because I think that's where my grandmother left Virginia. Her and her sister too uh, get trained in nursing, and that's where they retired in the. Um, at a hospital. That's where they retired. Okay. You know, get them good benefits. Yeah. They live, I think they actually live across the street from a hospital. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they, they don't need no excuse not to go know. to work. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, but they retired now. They in, the, yeah. they in the 90s now, so I don't know why oh, they want to wow. cross the street from a hospital. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Well, I mean, shoot, I guess that's easy to get to work, too. So they don't come to work, somebody can go over there and check. That's right. That's right. All right. We're talking to Bianca Harrison. She has a book, a recent release, Love and War. We're going to talk about that book. It's supposed to be provocative, interracial story about deceit, love, hope, commitment, and heartache. Because of a love affair. That's right. And people doing that stuff still, too, man. You're encouraging (laughs) it in this book. I'm not encouraging. It's all my books are so diverse and it's so different. Each one of my books are different, and I just, I mean, just this one's totally different. And it talks about uh, illness and you know just things that happen in life. Yeah, in life. Okay. All right, I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna beat you up about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I mean, let's take a break. The territory. <laughs> yeah, I understand. People like reading that stuff, so they know how to do it right. All right, let's take a break. <laughs> When we come back, we're going to talk about love and war. So we're talking to Bianca Harrison. Hold tight, everybody, for a 60-second break. Hi, I am recording artist Marilyn Dunn from St. Louis, Missouri. If you are looking for some soul-stirring, anointed, spiritual, and heartfelt music, visit my website at www.marilynndunnministries.com. Dot com. Or you can also find me on CD Baby, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. For booking information, contact Mr. Kevin Dunn at 636-856-0551. That's 636-856-0551. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. Hey everyone, this is Tamika Gonzalez, spoken word poet. Whenever I'm online, I'm always listening to Jerry Royce Live. You can find Jerry on www.speaker.com. Positive Power 21. Positive Power 21. Internet Radio. You are listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. All right. Thank you, family. We appreciate the intro. Love and war. Love yeah. and war. Mm, what's the deal with that? <laughs> what's the deal with that? Oh, love, love and, and hate. No, love it's and hate. I mean, Love and War is totally an uh, interracial book for me. It's an interracial romance novel, women fiction. Um, so much diversity in this book as far as the other books that I've written. Um, this one, 
just goes with the woman whose heart's been broken, you know, found out her husband's cheating on her just to see her. And, you know, the only thing about it, she does not ask for a divorce. She doesn't believe in divorce, but he does. And the same day that he's asking her for a divorce is the same day she comes with him about her illness. But she has to make a choice. Should she tell him about her illness or should she keep it to herself? So, you know, you have to play it, you know, how it goes. Yes, that's Ava and Ryan, the couple. Yeah. Is having Ava a problem. Ryan. Yeah. Right. And Ryan, he has a, another know, woman. Yeah, another woman. Yeah, when you always think the grass is green on the other side, then you finally come to your senses and you find out it's not, but you got to figure out if it's too late, though, you know. Yeah. You get all this dirt and. So you got your idea, you a perfect, you know, you picked your perfect family, and then you come here, and then you come with this side check, and, you know, it's not what it is, and your wife is sick, but you don't know that she's sick. So there's a lot of, you know, with their characters and her Ava's friends, there's a lot of, um, to me, it's a lot of, it's showing you that you can laugh, you can cry, you can have heartache and pain, all this is in one book. You may laugh, mm-hmm. you don't cry, you know, <laughs> I've heard it all. Wow, really? Oh, but, man, so I need to go out there and check that out. Oh, so, right. yeah, I mean, you're going to get it all. If you um, think about um, The Best Man Holiday 2, mm-hmm. it was something something totally that I've heard is something totally different from that, from other people's reviews and stuff. So you're going to get mm-hmm. all that. You don't laugh and cry, but it's, you know, I want to do an interracial book because it's a variety of things out there, but I don't want to just think just one couple goes through things, everybody goes through everything. I mean, love has no color. So, I mean, you can't help who you fall in love with, so, you know. So you have experience, you have a little bit of, you had some experience to write this book or just research? No, I didn't. I had an idea, and, you know, it just came with that, the characters, and, you know, and when I write, I just write. So whatever comes to mind, I try to do an outline, but sometimes I really go with the outline. When I write, I just write. And everything <laughs> just comes together, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, why did I let her do that? Why did I let her do that? I can't believe she did that. You know, you just write, and as an author, you just write. Yeah, I was and gonna I, ask you, um, you know, what's your style? You know, how you know, what happens? Do you develop your characters first or you just let them do Well yeah, I do I do develop my I do develop my characters and mm-hmm. I do try to do an outline and I sometimes I stick with it, sometimes I go off course and just like I say, just write. And that's mm-hmm. just I mean, it just comes with the territory because you put everything else in there. And you're like, Oh god, I can't believe I let that character do that but you know, like I say, this book was totally, it, it was easy to write because everything just came together. It was so easy to write. I just finished my third book, so it was just like, oh, gosh. It took me, I feel like it took me the longest. I don't know if it's because I was pregnant, but my sister was reading and everything. She's like, oh, my God, I think this is my best book. So you just never know. Whatever yeah. takes you the longest versus what's easy. <laughs> so you just write. Because normally I can write a book so quickly, but with me being Right in the last couple of months, it took me the longest to write there. I guess I was tired too, but yeah. but I did get it done. But yeah, Love and War yeah. is is you know it just is this just a story because she's caught in between her love for her husband and fighting a battle, but trying to keep him too, and the battle with the illness that she's obtained. So she's dealing with a lot. She's a best-selling mm-hmm. author, and her husband's you know flaunting his mistress and. You know, but she's not giving up on her marriage because she doesn't believe in that. So yeah, that's why, yeah. like, there's, there's a lot of a lot of stuff to learn in this book. I even had males that read the book and he's like, "Oh my gosh, you know, the way the characters were written, and you know." So uh, you have to check it out when you get a moment. You have to check it out. Yeah, I don't think you'd be right. disappointed. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you got yeah, you got to send me something so I can um, flash it up on my on my YouTube show. I will. Want, I, I want really to see will. It. Now, is that I a hard? Mean, I, ba- I mean, what is that? I know. You, I know you got the downloads, the Kindle download. Are you? Are these books available in paperback? Yes, they are. And I do a lot of um, book tours and do a lot of book events. And I do, you know, 
sell them there and stuff too, so they are in paperback as well. And I like to do that because a lot, a lot have a lot of people that read and like, and they prefer mm-hmm. the book than an ebook. Right. Have a lot Very of people that still prefer the book. Yes, and for me, I prefer a book as well. It just seems like it take me forever to read it on my Kindle. Well, I don't I get know why. Through them quicker. <laughs> I get through them quicker. I, I just I be yeah. reading several. Yeah, I just said um, I read a few of them at the same time, and then I was like, oh. Uh-uh. It just feels like it takes me forever. I get that. I guess I'm so used. Oh gosh, I guess I'm so used to a book that I prefer a book. Mm -hmm. But I I read it on Kindle. (laughs) Yeah, I love it on on my tablet, my phone. I can read one walking. Now, Bianca, how long you been writing? You know, been a. I've written a couple years. I think I started writing in 2008. And for some reason, I first wrote my first book, the one to call my own. I think I picked it back up. I wrote it in 2008, put it down. You know how you get that, oh, who's going to read this book? And, you know, not having faith in myself enough to finish it. So 2012, I think I finished the book in 2013. I'm like, no, not me and my husband talk. Okay, you know, you never know who's going to read it. Or, until you put it out there, you got to have faith in yourself. Right. So that's what I did, and then after that, you know, I just had so many good response from people. So it just keeps me, you know, motivated and keep pushing because I'm like, okay, I got my craft. I know what I like to do, you know, mm-hmm. building characters. It was just up to me to get it out there. That's so I, so I read a lot, too. So mm-hmm. after being an avid reader, I came up with characters. I'm like, I can write my own book, and that's how I started writing. <laughs> Yeah, that's so how I get started. That's right. Hobby. Yeah, it's like just, a hobby, and then you made it your own. Yeah, yeah. so like 2013, it just became my profession. Like, okay, I've written two books and a couple of months after that. So just writing, it just became my profession. So, you know, I'm still working, still trying to get my stuff out there. You know, you that's never right. know. So, you so know, your, um, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so how's your, your fan base? You know, how your fans Actually, love Actually, so far, so good. So far, so good. Um, I'm actually still building that. I do have a lot of people actually promoting and um, advertising for me as well. So, so far, so good. I'm still building it as well, though. Yeah, because I'm, I'm looking at your reviews. Um, now, your old old school fans, they're going to they gonna be there for you no matter what. It's like just like Prince. You know, Prince fans, <laughs> fan, Prince can rap. He can spin on his head. We're still going to be happy. But, exactly. You know, but his bandwagon fans will be like, what the heck was that? <laughs> now, and what are your, now, your old school fans, they're going to protect you. They're going to look out for you. What are the new people saying about Bianca Harrison? The well, I actually get re- good reviews with you, but think it, you know, everybody don't write a review. So that's mm-hmm. the only thing. Because you would want them to. Um, but I've gotten good reviews and vibes from it. You know, yeah, I haven't. I, I just wish everybody would write a review, though. <laughs> you gotta ask them now. I now you, do that. You should I post. You should post them on your Facebook, and then encourage other people to do it. Look, yeah. like you got this good one right here. Say, it say grabs you by the throat. This is an emotional charge story about a merge. That, that's a good start. If I saw some, if I saw that on on a post, I was like, oh my god, I gotta get that book. And they say you can. Be yeah, and I do that occasionally right? on my. Um, I do have a um, Facebook page, you know, for my authors page mm-hmm. that's my author page so i do put that on there occasionally just you know just put stuff out there twitter and everything mm-hmm. like that so i just try to get it out there as well yeah but you but got faith so right people, exactly <laughs> but i've had so many people read the book that's the thing like okay you know you don't want to write it you know i even put it out there you know but i guess you just can't make them or they don't know how <laughs> Yeah, it's a way you could do it. I mean, some people be having like hundreds of them. I'm like, how the heck? But they said they, they really engage their people, you know. I, don't, I mean, yeah. some people just got a lot of time. They can just, I don't know, I guess they just fast. I don't know. Hey, but let me ask you this. Um, <laughs> now, I know Facebook is, you know, like the, the biggest phenomenon when it, you know, for authors. I mean, a lot of people becoming really successful really, really fast. I mean, I'm hearing mm-hmm. four or 5,000 downloads a week. From you know, from some of those that are, I consider to be social media gurus, they use Twitter to, to fill to, to reel them in, and they and they hook them. So they get to their page. What are some of your secrets, trade secrets you like to share with someone who's like you know, kind of like struggling right now, you know, with posting and not really understanding the good and the bad of it? You got any, well, any I, advice? Well, I think that you know, 
Well, I just say first um, learn the craft, and then, you know, you try to build your your fan base and audience out there, and then try to connect with other authors. I've connected with a lot of people on Goodreads. Um, mm-hmm. Got a lot of experience with other authors that give you um, good advice. Um, not all of them are nice, but you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get that because I mean, some right. people don't want you to do better than them. But the thing is, there's a lot of success out here for everybody. It's not like mm-hmm. you're trying to take their fan base, but you're all working together to get their book out there to get your book out there. You help me promote. I help you promote. I mean, just just promoting and advertising and getting yourself out there and just connecting with other authors. I mean, Mm -hmm. you just never know. But learn the craft as well, too. Advertising Mm -hmm. and promoting is the main thing. Advertising. That's right. And speaking of advertising, you got to come on Jerry Woods Live Worldwide. Now, yes. was it hard getting you? Was it hard getting you on this show? Did Brandon have to pull your no. teeth? No, I'm not even sure who emailed me. <laughs> he That's just said the third week, and I was like, I'm like, he just said third week or whatever. I'm like, okay, you yeah. know, I just make sure I put in my phone or whatever. I try to do that. Um, that way, I stay on tack too, or what I got mm-hmm. coming up, or because I'm easy to get with life and everything else. But I make sure that I. Program everything in my smartphone. <laughs> yeah, you really use that smartphone, man. You use that. Oh my God! I mean, it's, it's like not always secretary. smart, but yeah, it's, it's good to me as far as yeah. you know what I have to do. So it really is. But no, it was not hard at all. No, it's not hard at all. Anything I can do to help your business, and you can help me as well. That's good. Yeah, because yeah, I remember I had to make a couple phone calls. Jesus, can you? They want you to call them. I'm like, what? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm okay. And it wasn't you. Know, you're you. helping me. I'm helping you. So, no. Yeah, that's so <laughs> why I couldn't figure it out. I said, what? I said, we asking them to come on our show, you know. I yeah, mean, but, you, you know, now hand helping help them. Help. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you help, help us, we're helping you. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, no, no, no. You didn't have to yeah, pull we didn't have to. We didn't have to talk to your manager, your husband. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm good. I know it's something that can benefit me, benefit you, you know. Right. I'm good. Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison wants to speak to you first. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going through all that, you know. So. <laughs> but, yeah, we kind of, me and my husband actually worked as a team. He's actually a graphic artist as well, too. So mm-hmm. he's actually, to you know, do a lot of stuff behind the scenes on my book and website and all that stuff. So, you know, we have to work together when you're trying to build something, so. That's right. So he did your book covers for you? Mm-hmm. Book covers okay. and, um, you know, website. You have to update that, you know. But yeah, I like that. That's a nice just, one. Love him. Just yeah, love him. And, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah nice. he does other stuff, too, like music on the side. So I have to get you to talk to him, too. They actually have artists, music artists and stuff, too. And they have yeah. a big um, show um, in April. So I think Corrupt and some other rappers are coming in. So... He does all that on the side, so I try to stay out of it and just go when I need mm. to be supported and stuff. But yeah, they got artists and uh, you know entertainment stuff too. So that's his mm-hmm. side gig with the beats and stuff and mine with the author. So he's a promoter. So he's yeah, a promoter so he's or manager. Mm-hmm. He's actually he a manager and producer, so he produces oh. all the other the music. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to uh, send you get the information. You yeah, so, you know, we kind of work together and doing everything, too. So. That's right. Tell me we love that because, I mean, I love to talk to them about that because we're definitely trying to do, um, you know, weekend um, radio casting on the weekends with, um, okay. you know, performers, ind- independents mostly. You know, that's what we like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I um, actually send Brenda an email. You know, I send them an email yeah. that way, you know, connect and stuff and, that's you right. know, can go from Get there. Money. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, that. mm-hmm. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate oh, that. no problem. You know, we're trying all to right. do it all. You know, you just, you have to get yourself out there, too, because nobody else is going to do it if you don't. That's right. So. You got to. All right. So. We're going to take a quick break, Bianca. When okay. we come back, we're going we're gonna to get your your uh, final thoughts and, um, you okay. know, talk, you know, give people some advice on, um, you know, hanging in there with the game because the game can get rough, like you mentioned, you know. It's it's, 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 it can. It rough. All right, so hold tight. We're going to listen to Bill Powers, our okay. publication. All right. All righty. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars 
and human lives worth less. Nicholas Hardy, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? We Swear Publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.weeswellpublishing.com. Hi, I am Martha Crystal Lexus, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. Woohoo! All right. Thank you, Crystal. All right. We're talking to the author of Love and War, Deonta Harrison. Now, I don't see your name on these books. What's the deal? You ever. You don't, I don't understand. No, I, I'm looking at Love and War, Kindle Edition on Amazon, and say um, something about graphics. Identifying graphics, illustrator. Mm-hmm. It should be Does, there. Yeah, I don't see your name on Oh, I see it in your bio, but it, it, it didn't show you as an author, you know, when you first go into Amazon. It's, I'm in a, I'm in a messed up version. But, and, but I did see your other books. So, yeah, it uh, should you, be you, there. Yeah, you see you doing your thing. Nice, lengthy book. And when you type my name in, you get a come up. I'm sorry. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did come up. I see your That's name crazy. on the title of the book, though, but for some reason it didn't show up under the um, title when you go to the page for some reason. I don't know. Maybe that's the way they I They still paying me for them. <laughs> yeah, you got to check them out, make sure what you're doing. But, you know, Amazon can mess you up. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta I know. I know about that, but you have to stay on top of it, too. That's right. All right, so can we get your final thoughts, advice for any young author out there? thinking about venturing to writing, marketing, and promoting, all that stuff. Well, as far as other other authors out there that are trying to make it and um, be an aspiring writer and author, I mean, just keep, I mean, it's got to be your passion, so keep writing. I don't say don't give up. You have to believe and have faith. That's the only reason, the only way you're going to make it. You have to believe in your craft. You have to believe that you're going to be a success. Um, as far as writing, just keep doing what you're doing, and, hey, it's going to show up. People are going to buy your stuff. You have to promote, advertise, and get your work out there, but you have to do the work, and you can't give up. I mean, you just have to. you got to have faith. That is going to be easy. That's just like, you know, something major happening overnight. It's not going to be easy. Sometimes you may stumble, but you got to stand up and keep walking. So. That's right. All right. Now, another question would be, um, when you say invest in yourself, you know, advertising, what, what type of venues would you recommend, you know, you know, so they don't be all over the place? What would you recommend how, how to advertise? Or be I mean, there's, uh, first of all, always do social media. It's free advertisement. So use social media. Back in the days, we didn't have social media, so it was kind of hard to advertise. But as far as advertising, um, you're going to meet other people. You're going to meet um, different sites to promote. There's Goodreads out there. There's sponsors. I mean, there's there's so much out there. And once you use those avenues, you'll find ways to um, dabble in other sites to promote. I mean, use your friends, your network. I mean, have friends to promote from, from uh, advertise for you. Change your profile pictures to your book. You know, you just have to find ways out there. And it's free promotion out there as well, too. You don't always, you don't have to always be expensive. I'm looking at me. I'm talking to you. So, you know, it's free promotion. So. You'll be I free mean, today. You'll be high exactly, tomorrow. You just, exactly, you just never know what you're going to get. Right. When but they just, say you, you want to find but Let me ways. ask you this, though. But, Bianca, like, when, you know, people, a lot of people say they're getting, you know, they're getting kind of worn down. They have family they want to see and take care of, and they want to start working smarter 
if, if they had to work smarter in promotion, because, I mean, social media is tough work. You know, I know people say they it, post it is. 200 something a, a day. It is, unless you can like, pay somebody to do it for you. It's right, a lot of them do. I mean, and then sometimes you may see a significant the number of sales, and sometimes you may not. So you have to just find other streams for just using Facebook and posting and stuff. I mean, there's other people. There's people that can blog for you that would mm. be happy to blog your book do reviews for you. So I found a lot of people that does that as well. Blogging, mm-hmm. reviews, and that's when you start seeing sales, when people start um, blogging your stuff. And people are like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I like that. So, I mean, you, it can get so oh, draining. Sometimes I don't even post every day because it can get draining. And you can mm-hmm. pay somebody to do the same thing to post for you, but why would you want to pay somebody to post for you when you can just post to your group yourself? So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's, it, it can get draining. But right. you got to find out up. what works for you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right. Hit the tweet man up. And, then, you know, a lot of people got video blogs out there now, too, that they have huge followings on their YouTube channels. And that's, I was, true, um, and that's what I'm trying to yeah. build up now. I haven't had time to um, do a um, chat, not a check, but a um, blog and stuff. But that's my next avenue. I just haven't had time with the way my life is going. But I plan to do the same thing as well, so. That's right. I was cause I was just reading on this guy who's supposed to be a um, marketing guru, um, and he had this woman come on and she said, "Yeah, I built up a huge following video blog." That's cause she said she doesn't like to write, so she, all she does is video blog, and people um, uh, follow along in her little, you know, uh-huh. leave their comments. Yep, and she works for and people. She works for other people. She just mentioned them on her show and charged oh, okay. them a whole lot of money. Yep, and charged them a whole lot of Ooh. money. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. I'm sure you can make money, too. <laughs> but that was my mm-hmm. next thing was to do a video, you know, start doing videos. And mm-hmm. I hope that I can do that this weekend. I've been planning on doing it, but I just haven't had time with the cold weather and stuff. It's just been, time has been off, so. That's right. Yeah, you got to get to it. And that's one of the the big things that we saw that, that really helped out our traffic, especially to our website, was when we started mm-hmm. putting our, our audio players with the show on our website mm-hmm. that's when we really started seeing track. then we started putting out youtube because the kids like making music videos exactly. featuring me, and the people like that stuff they start showing their friends next thing you know they follow you you know you start seeing I 20 see 30 40 it. people following you at night you know you start saying hey i must be doing something right it's not gonna exactly. always be like that you know but you got to keep the momentum going you know exactly keep putting stuff out there too Yep, just like everything going. else, you got to keep mm-hmm. yourself relevant. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people doing the same thing we're doing. So you got to keep it being is. innovative. In- innovation is key. Exactly. So you know? you're absolutely right about that. So, That's right. But I, That's right. I, everybody who, I mean, somebody who's doing something, who's trying to come up in the game, I mean, just, hey, just stick to your craft. I just say don't give up. I mean, I have yeah. to learn everything. On my own, when I just first got out here in the business, like, oh, gosh, and where do I start? You know, then I have mm-hmm. a whole bunch of people who asking me all, you know, questions about how do they get started, how do they do this and stuff. And, like, I should do a class on how to get started. You know, you just, right. I mean. You don't get you video research. blood. That's exactly. Right. So do a Google, Google Hangout. See, look, you exactly. do a Google Hangout. And that's how you, people like to engage people. You know, they want to talk to you through their computers. <laughs> That's, That's true, awesome, so, but yeah, That's I mean, right. I started on my own, didn't have any help, nobody to ask questions to, I was a newbie, so I just kind of learned everything as I went, and I, like I said, I'm still learning, so, yeah, still learning, are. so it's, I, mean, right. it's, I like what I do, I like creating characters, putting stuff out there that people are going to enjoy, you know, so, and meeting mm-hmm. other authors, and people like you guys, so I appreciate it, I appreciate everything, yeah. Yeah, we somebody asked me if I could be on their show. Anybody can ask me. I can help. You know, I'm there. So that's right. And you and you and you mentioned earlier earlier that you do book signings and everything. So you love I doing do. this kind of thing. So I do have a couple of um, things coming up this year. Actually, it's going to start next month. So that's why I'm, I'm mm. healing pretty good. I'm doing everything. So well, tell I'm us, tell us where you going to be. You still got a couple of minutes left. Remember you the last yeah, show. Me... It's the last show for the week. Where you going to be at? Where you going to be? Justin, let me see what I have. Yeah, check your smartphone. <laughs> I know I have a couple things. I'm going to be at a couple of um, signings um, later this year, the Cater um, Book Show, and I'm trying to 
there's one in Atlanta as well in November I'm going to be at. But next month, I'm at March the 28th, I'm going to be at Griffin High School, actually, for a book signing. That's going to be from 4 to 6. At April the 11th, I'm going to be at Median Bookstore, and that's in um, South Lake Mall. That's in Lovejoy. Oh, and that's still around. Cool. And then April 25th, I'm going to be at Urban Grind Coffee House, and that's from 2 to 4. I'm going to be doing a book signing. So All I do right. have a couple more available this year that will be on my website, so everybody can see, and it's going to be on my Facebook page. Well, yeah, right. And that's Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have a lot of things this year, you know, that I'm working on. So you gonna take the baby my, with you? Oh be no! The baby. <laughs> no, I have people watching the baby. No, oh, I okay. have my little helper with me, mm. which is uh, actually my daughter. And I, yes, I do have a um, assistant actually, which is just like you know, a family member that helps me at all times with book signing mm. and stuff. So I'm grateful for the help that I have when I'm doing stuff like that. And I actually enjoy it because that's when I do meet a lot of readers too. And that's when, yeah. you know, they put my book out there. They like the book and, you know, tell other people about it. So. That's right. That's how you keep it moving. That's exactly. right. Oh, man. Oh, so, man. Yeah, yeah. they get your name out there and everything. <laughs> that's right. But, All I mean, right, if they want to know where I'm at, always go to my Facebook page at Facebook, mm-hmm. Arthur Bianca Harrison. Or my website at authorbeyonceharrison.com. That's right. And you said you're on Book Baby and Amazon. Yeah, and Twitter, uh, Miss Janelle, that's M R S J A N I E L L E. And Instagram is Miss Janelle as well. All right. Very good. We appreciate having you on the show and sharing all your, I appreciate you know, your secrets it. of how you're moving these books and everything and encouraging others following your path. Yeah. I appreciate it as well, too. I mean, when they follow me, they can always check out my first release, the one to call my own, and other mm-hmm. releases that will be available for this year as well. So thank mm-hmm. you for having me, Jerry. I appreciate it a lot. You're welcome. So I know you're going to share our show and tell people about I us, right? I am, and I'm going to put right. it on my Facebook page and everything else, and I'm going to tweet. <laughs> awesome. All right. So this, we, have the, we have the file, the on-demand file available to you tonight. In case you up late okay. and you feel like working. All right? No All problem. Right, everybody. Thank you guys for having me so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Everybody said thumbs up. All right. <laughs> and I tell you, Bianca, I tell people all the time, I say they want to hear the good stuff. I mean, the real good stuff. Just like tonight, you know, you told us, you know, you're juggling two small kids and a husband has a music career going on. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. But you're doing yeah. your thing and you're enjoying it, having fun, and got a full-time job. Exactly. Very motivated. <laughs> That's right. Very motivated. And we appreciate Thank you sharing you all so that. Much. I appreciate right, it so much, guys. Go buy the book. Go buy the book. Don't That's forget right. buy her book. Or and we see you in the next the... drop. <laughs> Thank you we so much. We see you in the next too. drop, too. All right. Okay. Take care. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. I'm Joy Bye, Rose Live. Worldwide. Positive Power 21.org. Exactly. Spricket.com forward slash Positive Power 21. They awesome all week long. Thank you for Thank tuning you. in to Jerry Voice Live on Positive Power 21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. All right, everybody. Don't forget to share tonight. Hi, I am recording artist Marilyn Dunn from St. Louis, Missouri. If you are looking for some soul-stirring, anointed, spiritual, and heartfelt music, visit my website at www.marilynnministries.com. Or you can also find me on CD Baby, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. For booking information, contact Mr. Kevin Dunn at 636-856-0551. That's 636-856-0551. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 
I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned. Hey, what's going on, family? This is Eric A. Terry Sr., author of Real Talk, The Making of a Man, and I'm on Jerry Ross Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Session. Hey, this is Pat. Hi. I'm Therese Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iris Sandra Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powell. Hello, this is Trisha Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBaron. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what are you doing? Boy, who's the same? Hey, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Royce Live. All right, all right, everyone. We've got Robin in, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Woods Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse. It's a so thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or Donna Inc. Org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstores. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to PositivePower21.org. I am Jerry Royce Live, and I wish I was in Barbados to make it a day, and I want to say shout-out to those guys who are listening to PositivePower21.org right about right now on Spooker.com forward slash PositivePower21. Man, we, we got an Arctic freeze going on up around here. Man, I don't know what we're going to do. School's closed two hours late tomorrow, so you know it's cold when they close school two hours late. That's all good, but we just glad we got heat. All right, everybody, stay tuned for an episode of Book Buzz, and our book sponsor for tonight's show is my man, James Deshay, the poet, the romance poet. Check him out. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, James Deshay. Anytime you guys want to sponsor, get some exposure, 
Remember, we are streaming live in Barbados, Jamaica, Canada, Spain, Germany, UK, you name it. 12 countries going strong every day. We broadcasting 15 hours on the stream, on demand, 24-7. So you want to get exposure for your product, your book, or your MP3. Come to us. That's right. We do it right here. All right, y'all. I want y'all to hold tight for this, this presentation. Today being featured on our show is Eric A. Terry, Sr., author of real, a book called Real Talk, Making of a Man. Stay tuned for his presentation. In a moment. This is a presentation for Eric A. Terry Sr. and Jerry Ruiz Live Worldwide. A native of Shenandoah, Tennessee, Eric A. Terry Sr. is an author, certified marriage coach, and relationship specialist. While he is also known throughout the Southeast as a dynamic singer and a worship leader, Eric is also an, an ordained minister of over 20 years. He was licensed in Nashville, Tennessee under Dr. H. Bruce Maxwell at the Lake Providence Baptist Church in 1995. Eric and his beautiful bride, Lady Deborah, are the owners of Real Talk Consulting, a multi-service firm that focuses on building and maintaining healthy relationships. Real Talk was developed in early 2012 when Eric began posting relationship advice on his personal Facebook page. After attracting a strong following of over 5,000 people, Eric began to receive requests for speaking engagements, seminars, and marriage retreats, as well as singles empowerment sessions to share his views on relationships. In this time, they've impacted the lives of hundreds of couples and individuals seeking God's original design for a relationship. Eric and Deborah truly have a heart for marriage and it's through the transparency of their own lives that they provide individuals, couples, and teens with the tools necessary to build and maintain a healthy relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I present to you Eric H.R.A. Sr. on Jerry Woods Live Worldwide on Positive Power 21.org, the radio network. Thank you. All right. Mr. Terry, welcome to Positive Power. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, sir. Thanks so much for having me. We appreciate it. Hey, man. My pleasure, man. Glad to have you. And the first question is, who is Eric H.R.A. Sr., the author? Oh, man. You know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a born and raised in Chattanooga, Tennessee. As the bio said, uh, my father, uh, Jerry Terry, is a pastor here, and uh, I have been uh, in ministry and in, involved in church most of my life. Um, over the last few years, God has really shifted some things for me and had me really focus on relationships and focused on mainly marriage, but for singles and also for um, for a couple for uh, couples as well. Uh, but my biggest takeaway I get from life and as far as who I am, I'm a father, I'm a husband. Um, I have uh, four beautiful kids um, that mm. are in age from 26 to 16. Um, wow. So we, uh, my wife Deborah and I, uh, basically we use our marriage as a ministry and a business um, to, mm. to help others. So we, uh, we really take this thing seriously and it's been a real blessing to be able to do it. Yeah, see, man, you got five thousand followers. They, I guess they just want to check you out to see how long yeah. you're gonna last. You yeah. know, how people are. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blessing, though, man. It's like a window to your life, man. That's all right, man. Now, yeah. now, you know, I was telling you early before we got started. I said my Merlanders, man, they they like to get to know you. You know, we got a little south in us too, because a lot of us come from. From, from the Virginia area, and, you know, that's considered really south for people living right. in Maryland, especially if you're in New York and you come from Virginia, but you're not trying right, to act right. like it. But, right. um, you know, we like to get to know you before we spend some money on you. <laughs> that's how we are. So, man, so tell us, man, how, how, you know, you told us you was in the church all your life, so pretty much, you know, what was life like, you know, growing up, man, in, in a target household, man? Tell us about that. Yeah, man, you know, a lot of people think that, I guess, because my father was a pastor, they thought, oh, man, y'all was in church all the time, and didn't do anything, didn't have fun, and that was, you know, far from the truth, man. My, my father was a very balanced man, so we we knew about church, we knew about God, but we lived life, and we had fun, we went to parties, we did the same thing our friends did. Uh, my father just gave us a balance with it by um, helping us to understand um, the role of the Christianity, or the role of the relationship, 
far as religion and as well as, you know, just living everyday life. So, man, I, I, don't, it was, I, I give people the illustration, man. It was, my house was the, uh, the lower class version of the Huxtable. <laughs> Uh, we didn't have the money. We didn't have the money that hustle was had, man. But we had the love. Yeah. So yeah. So that means you guys didn't didn't have the um the pretty sweaters on. And, no, um, man. No, no. We couldn't afford the sweaters. Now. Uh, <laughs> now, now, I know. I know y'all gave mom and pops a, a good show now and then, though, during the holidays, though, because I know you had, you had a couple <laughs> brothers and sisters. I did. I have two brothers, two older brothers, and um, we all and it's funny. My, Everybody sings, uh, plays an instrument. Everybody except my oldest brother. My oldest brother, kid, I love him dearly, but that brother <laughs> knows he's glued to his back. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, man, so we, we did. We had a lot of fun going on. We had a great, great childhood. My parents always talk about how they wish they had done, they had done more for us. And yeah. I always look at them and we're like, man, we have all, you know, our childhood mm-hmm. was, was amazing. So, you know, uh, and all of that, man. It was it was one of those things where I was growing up as a, as a younger kid. I was the youngest of three boys, and and my brothers to, to just kind of give you some dynamic. My brothers were both um, very athletic. Uh, mm-hmm. These two, I mean, my older brother played um, ran cross country. I mean, he ran track. My middle brother mm-hmm. played baseball, basketball, football, you name it, and they were good at all of them. And here wow. I came along being a little fat kid, uh, <laughs> uh, not, not really into sports, you know, not really into other things that they were, man, being totally different. But um, mm-hmm. but we, we, we found our way. We, and that's one of the, part of the things that I talk about in the book, how I, how I got out from under their shadows. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. Real talk, consulting. That's right. That's helping people out, multi-service firm. I thought I threw that in there. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, that is yeah, and, and, it's, and it's funny, man, because um, I, I love to hear you know people uh, you know reminisce about their childhood. Because sometimes you don't you don't get a chance to talk about it because you don't really know what to strike up at work. Sometimes when you're sitting at the lunch table, you know you you sit there and try to talk about you know back in the day. You know somebody may not had a good back in the day, so it may not be good lunchtime right. talk. You know, so you gotta right, know who you're right. dealing with. You know, but it's right. it's good to hear these stories. I, and I always like to ask people, you know, good or bad, you know. What it was like, and and that's the reason why some people write the books they're writing because it's based on, on you know the way they grew up, their background. Right, that's and awesome, it, man. It goes back to something you said earlier. You know, we all have a story. We all that's have a right. story. And I, I encourage anybody, man. You know, if, if, if we all have at least one book in us, at least, one. Mm-hmm. and it's nothing but your story because nobody can tell your story like you, man. That's right. That's what the legendary. Uh, Paul Coates used to always say, uh, the owner of Black Classy Press, publisher Walter Mosley, he used to always say that, man. You know, he started his self-publishing printing business. He used to always say that, man. All right, now, how did you meet Lady Deborah? That's what everybody want to know. <laughs> yeah, man, Lady Deborah. That is, that's, that's my, my baby, my heart. Uh, Deborah and I actually grew up in church together. We grew up in the same church. Um, it, it's kind of funny. Uh, one of the, you know how when you look key and you're in church, you have those little, those little uh, puppy love relationships. Yeah. My my first church girlfriend was actually her sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny because my I remember my brother um was dating my 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 son's mother. You know, when we were in elementary school. Yeah. And I'm like, man, how he get her? <laughs> right, right, right. So you know, it was one of those things, man. Where we we grew up together, we we known each other, our families grew up together. Uh, we've known each other most of our life, all of our life, really. And um, mm-hmm. after several years, she'd gone through uh, a really bad, uh, really long, uh, painful marriage, and they'd gone through a divorce, and I had gone through mine right before that. And we just, you know, our friendship just kind of went to another level, just kind of talking and wow. kind of being there, supporting one another. And then when we mm-hmm. got together, and we just decided on some things that we weren't going to do. You know what I'm saying? We just, we just yeah. we don't, we don't want to. Here's what I put up with before. I don't want to deal with that again. Right, right. And, and, now, it, and it made all the difference. So your first marriage, was, was your wife involved with, heavy, heavily involved with the church? Not at all. Not at oh. all. And, man, oh. and I think that, that was a lot of, uh, of the, the issue uh, that we had because 
you know, when you, anybody in ministry, and I say this for anyone, anyone, if you're looking to date someone, if you're interested in someone that's in ministry, understand, man, people need to understand, that is a whole other level of responsibility. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's just like uh, being, and I hate to put it in this line like, but it's kind of true, it's almost like being in a relationship with a celebrity. There, 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 there's, there's, there's a pulling on them a little more than the average guy or, or, or girl. Yeah. So, you need to understand mm-hmm. that it's a whole other level when you get to you know, the dating stuff or trying to be with someone that's in shit like that. Yeah, it is tough, man, because we've seen some guys, you know, <laughs> some big time pastors in the, in the Baltimore area, man, get into, you know, a little bit of, little bit of trouble, you know, right. when it came to, right. you know, dancing outside the relationship. Um, right. Some of them kind of rebounded. The church forgave them. Wives forgave them. No, not all the wives forgave them. Yeah, one wife, yeah. <laughs> you know, the ones that are quite more known than, you know, the corner guys. Right. Man, that's, that's something, man. That's, that's powerful, man. So so that marriage couldn't hold up. So you no. guys decided to. Now, were you, in the, were you running the church or were you passing under your father at the time? I was actually, I was actually associated under my father. And, um, and it was difficult, man, because I'll be honest with you, I, was, I really wondered how, how powerful or how effective my marriage was going to be after going through a divorce. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, I think it got stronger because I could, I could relate a little better to people mm-hmm. who were having marital issues. And I could minister to them on a different level than somebody like my father who just celebrated. My parents just celebrated 43 years of marriage. Wow, so, 43. Mm. So, you know, there was, some, and I never thought about it this way, but the truth is, Jerry, there were some things that after going through a divorce and, and handling it properly, uh, or getting to a level where I could handle it properly, there, mm-hmm. were, some, there were some things that changed. I, I could, I, there, could, there were some advantages that I had to be able to minister that my father could, because he had never That's seen right. anything like that. So, My yeah, it is powerful because your dad was only on one side of the fence. Just like me, I'm only on one side of the fence. You know, I don't really know what it's like on the other side. You know, it, you know, right. the grass don't right. look green to me. You know, where right. I'm standing. Right. You know, wow, that is powerful, man. So, so that makes you way more qualified than the yeah, average it, guy. Absolutely. And you know, here's the thing too. One of the things that I figured out with my dad. My dad has never been in the ministry for over 35 years. And in that time frame, um, he has married countless couples. I mean, I can't, he, he lost count of how many couples he actually mm-hmm. counseled and married. But here, wow. here's, 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 what's, here's the messed up part. Um, he has a PhD, he has a doctorate in theology. But the truth is, uh, the seminary never trained him on how to counsel couples. Mm-hmm. So out of all the couples that he's married in over over a thirty five year period, by only one of those couples is still together. Mm. Only one. And, 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 only here's one. The, here's, and here's the real here's the real kicker behind that. That one couple is actually in counseling with me right now. <laughs> wow. I hate to laugh about that, but goodness. Yeah, crazy. yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, it, it, it's weird, man, but yeah, ten years later, here they are, they're 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 they are 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 they are
the food is they mm-hmm. need to give them that spiritual guidance. And when they can't get it at home, it makes that man, that pastor, a little more attractive. Yeah, yeah. So it's well, how about this, Eric? This, yeah. is a good, this is a good question. This is something you could think about. Like, all right, how about the time? You remember the times, you know, you were in school, you know, probably high school most likely, and you had an attractive teacher. You kind of heard her a little clearer than you heard the other teachers for some reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that could be it, man. It's like, uh, you know, that's the class you don't miss. You know? Right. And the same women lined up on that first and second row, but they have to sit in the second, they have to sit in the, Second or third pew, first lady in the first pew, right? Or is she sitting somewhere else in your <laughs> church? Right, you know right. I know, I know. What, with my mom, she usually sits in like on the second pew to the right of my dad. Um, yeah. What he what he did was years ago. He stopped women from sitting on the front row. Yeah, I heard about them guys. They're making them wear. They make them wear little uh, blankets or something like that too. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. you know. You kind of have to look that type of mindset because you just never know how people are thinking and you know, how they're going to react to the situation. So it's, it's really a lot of the things that pastors go through and pastors are, are approached with that is really all in how we handle it. Yeah. We put so much pressure on those guys too. Man. I, I, had, I had a conversation similar to this with a gentleman on my job who was passing the church and, and I was telling him what my pastor was going through, you know, because he, you know, got caught, you know, pretty much his pants down in the, you know, at the church, you know, when wow. a deacon walked in on him and um, oh, he wow. said, but you know, and he knew him too. He said, but he said, this guy is, is, is a man just like you and I, they make mistakes. I said, yeah. dude, I said, you got, I said, you got some people, man, they, they hanging on to his every word. This is their last stop. And he said that one time. He, he said, I know a lot of y'all come from those big churches, family churches, and this is probably your last stop, you know, not before you die, but before you call it quits and say, I'm staying home watching football on Sundays now, you know, right. or hanging out with the fellas. He, he said, he knew this. He, he said, I, you guys got me on a higher pedestal than probably any other man on earth. And he was right. Someone was saying, yeah, dude, this is it right here. If you mess up, I study at home. Wow. <laughs> that's, what, that's what some of them wow. guys are saying to themselves, you know. I was thinking that. You know, I was like, yeah, you mess up, dude. I'm just going to stay home and deal with the guys on TV then. Cause I, you know, I don't know what they're doing, but I, I don't, I want to hear what's going on bad. I don't even want people to even tell me what they're doing. I just want to go get the word, participate, do some community service, take it home. You know, it was, getting, it was starting to be like that. You know, you get my age, you start to see a lot, you start to hear a lot. And then you start saying, man, you can't put a lot of trust in no man. You know, he's just a man. You know? Right. But, you know, but here's the thing, man. We, you know, the Bible is real clear when it tells them to, to, not to put that kind of pressure and that kind of trust on the man, but it also tells the men that have passed them that we have to be careful that we don't allow that stuff to go to our head. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times you have these, these, you have these rock star pastors who their mindset has, it, 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 they see themselves as rock stars too. Yeah, they do. So, you know, yeah. and if you're not careful with that, man, if you're not careful with that, you can, you can we can, uh, Use that power, use that authority in the wrong way to ultimately hurt somebody. Um, yeah. And you know, and, and, it, and it's, it's hard, it's difficult, but you're right. You, you, you do, we do put people on the pedestal because I never get one of my friends hearing my dad um, cuss for the very first time, and he he, <laughs> he, he he freaked out. He was like, "Your father was preaching," and I'm like, "Okay, but he still knows those words, and he still has emotions. He still, you know." Mm. Now, now, if he walked around, every other word out of his mouth is a tough word. <laughs> yeah, like and third maybe, preacher. Yeah, you, 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 you the hood preacher. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay, I can, I can kind of see your issue, but, but you know, when you talk about somebody, I mean, man, my dad literally when he when he cussed, when he cussed, you knew he was mad. Yeah, he was mad. Dog on red. She was about to <laughs> fart, man. People were right. like, "Oh God, Jesus coming!" <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, they got him up there, man. He up there, man. Yeah, man. Whoa. He's still a man. He's still a man. That's right. He is a man. He make mistakes, man. That, that's why I, it used to freak me out, man. When I used to hear about pastors were going that second marriage, I was like, oh, my God, what, what happened to the first one? You know, you're the yeah. man. You know, yeah. you should have been the one, the queen. You can't divorce the queen. Right. But 
you know, I had to start understanding, you know, it was like, you know, he made, it was just like some of, some of those guys run churches in the, in the hole because they mismanage money because you know, cause they steal. Right. And, you know, right. there's a lot of mistakes, you know, that's being done in the church that we don't always yeah. see. Right. Yeah. And that's mm. why we have to make sure we put that trust in God, man. That's one thing I can really say that I can take away from my dad by raising us. It's the man, you know, uh, understand that, you know, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It's, it's about God. It's not about the man in that pulpit. And right. it, it's, about a, it's about a personal relationship more than it is about a personality. And unfortunately, we get caught up on the pastor's personality, and we forget about the relationship with God. Mm-hmm. That's true. That is true. Man, that's one thing about religion. They said never talk about religion on the job. Man. <laughs> Everybody got their opinion. Oh man, yeah, that's quick. That and politics. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. that and politics, man. That's right, man. Exactly. All right. All right, we talking to Eric A. Terry, senior, author of Real Talk, Making of a Man, married to Lady Deborah. His dad is the man that we all look up to. And he's he must he's the last man standing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know, I got twenty three years coming up this uh, spring, man. You know, okay. twenty three years. I did, right. But I did a lot of dating. It was almost like being married. <laughs> Cause I, was like, gotcha. I had like six years with like this one and that one. Oh, and wow. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was only wow. really like really one that was a pretty long stretch. That was like being married. So that was like a long engagement. Yeah. All right, bro. Hold tight. We're going to take a quick commercial. A 60-second break. Everybody, you want to get a drink of water? We're talking to Ty. Pastor Ty, he's the man. We gonna, When we come back, we're going to talk about his book. Real talk, make him a man. Stay tuned for Book Buzz, a Book Buzz presentation from Reese Publishing. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? Reese World Publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.reeswellpublishing.com. Have you been hurt? Been hurt in back God, I'm talking back to you. Talking back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escaping to another reality. reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books, audio books, paperback, ebook, good book. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbooks.com. Hi, I am Arthur Crystal Alexis, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Jerry Royce Live Worldwide, Positive Power 21. Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. Worldwide, 12 countries, everybody. You have to, you got to stick it out with us, y'all. We're here for the long haul. That's right. Promoting and branding our good name. That's right. All right. You're being led by God, man. That's all I can say. All right, we're talking to Eric A. Terry Sr. He's the author of Real Talk. I'm sorry, he's the owner of Real Talk Consulting, multi-services firm that focuses on building and maintaining healthy relationships. So I'm assuming that this book kind of was a rebound from this from this business. You would say, Eric? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But tell us about Real Talk Consulting, and then we're going to get into the book. Yeah, man, with Real Talk Consulting, um, what we did was basically, you know, I, I was on Facebook just with my family, friends, and classmates, and, and just started to see a lot of drama. And I was like, wow, you know, I remember having a relationship like that. And it just, I, I hated to see other people in that situation. So, you know, I would post different, um, different scenarios and different advice, relationship advice, just trying to, you know, give some people some, some clear um uh, ways to handle and to manage their relationship, you know, to make mm-hmm. things look better, man. And in doing that, man, um, my numbers started to grow. I mean, it, just, it, 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 it expanded so fast before I even realized it. You know, before I knew that, I looked up and all of a sudden, I, you know, I've maxed out at 5,000 people and literally, wow. had, and literally had to start a fan page, mm. you know, 
and it was either that or go to a, a second uh, second personal page. I really didn't want to be there. So I did the fan page. Um, and in the process, man, I started getting a lot of contact about uh, different people from different people, especially churches who wanted me to come in and do um, marriage retreats and seminars. So we began to do that. And um, and I'll be honest with you, man, when that first happened, I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, are you serious? Who, who wants me to do a marriage retreat? But I realized that this was something that God was putting me in that position to do. So um, I just took it. I said, all right, let's, let's, fire, let's, let's do some homework, find out what we need to do to make it work, and let's get it done. That's right. Yeah, people want to hear you, man, and they want to read your post. So obviously, so so out of that five thousand, what's the percentage of men and women that's part of that that fan fan base? Oh man, the last, when I looked at my last um, um, statistics from my page, the um, it's about seventy, probably seventy eight, seventy nine percent is women. Oh, um, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, it's mostly. Mostly single women. I've got a lot of married women too, but mostly single women. And um, mm. which, which, which I found to be real interesting because mm. it, it, it showed me something. It showed me that women women really have a mindset to want to know about men. They want to know. Yeah, yeah. They want to know what we're thinking. They want to know why we think certain ways. Uh, when we do events, when we started doing the events and sessions, man, women come out. I mean, yeah, they do. You know what I'm saying? They come to this stuff now. Mm-hmm. Trying to get trying to get these brothers to come out. That's a whole other ball game. I know, uh, man. Geez. Especially during football season. Oh man, don't no, let we, football going on. No, you can't you mean, find them. Yeah, no, no, no. That ain't happening. So yeah, man, so it, it it's um but what it's allowed me to do, it's allowed me to to talk to women and, and give them some tips. Because I think some women just have uh, a uh Kind of, a, I won't say a bad mindset, but just a different mindset on how to handle or how to talk to men. And I'm like, you see it all the time. You see women, you know, getting in a man's face and putting their finger in their face and pushing him. It's like, yeah. you, you can't, man, that's just, that's, that's not how you approach a man, you know. Yeah, all right. But, Even on the job, man. Even on the job when, yeah. when, he, when yeah. they're your leaders, your supervisors. Some of them just don't know how, especially the ones that have never been married or in really good relationships. Right, you know. right. And that's the key. That's the key. Because if you've never had that and you don't know how to correspond, man, it really it all comes back down to communication. And being mm-hmm. able to communicate effectively. So I'm trying to teach people that. Now I'm uh, volunteering at a place here called the House of Refuge, where there's a uh, uh, kind of a halfway house program for men. Uh, and these guys, man, I'm, I'm able to go in every Tuesday and teach a class with them. And basically, I'm, I've made the book a workbook. And I'm kind of walking through that with them. And just helping these guys mm-hmm. get their leadership skills up, increase their communication skills, yeah. kind of change, change their situation now. Yeah, y'all talk about anger management and everything. That's, a, that's Definitely. like a key issue. Definitely. <laughs> but you know, here's, here's one of the things that I figured out, even when it came to anger management. If I could get guys to recognize, to, to respond, let's put it this way, if I can get guys to reply Instead of responding, mm-hmm. they can control their anger. I think a lot yeah. of what happens with, with men, is, and this was me back in the day, uh, I would listen to respond instead of listening to understand. Mm. So I think what, yeah. I would end up doing, what I would do is I would, I, I'm listening to what she's saying, but I'm only listening to get enough <laughs> for me to, to make a comeback. Right. Right. You know, we're trying to win. You're trying to win the argument. I'm trying to, you're trying to win, right? Right, absolutely. And, and that's, and I think that's one of the biggest struggles because, listen, the, the truth is, a man's number one need is success. So, mm-hmm. so we we need that challenge. That's why we like sports. That's why right. we like games. We, that's why we don't like to lose. It's, mm-hmm. it's, success is our number one need. So, when we're in those situations and we feel like we're losing an argument. I mean, you you put that brother, uh, you know, you back him up against him with the rope, and he he's gonna fight wow. you. Right, wow, that's that's funny, man, because like you can use that same analogy when it comes to education. If a young man, you know, if he if he's having problems in school, and he's in the eighth ninth grade, and his parents are not home, or he's a single family household, and he, his mom need help anyway with money. Right, right. You know, he's gonna bail. You know, yeah. you feel like he's losing the race anyway. Right, you know? absolutely. Wow. 
All right. Now, now your book. Now your book covers all of this. You know, is it addressing more females or more male or was fifty fifty? Well, you know what? Originally, the book is the first four chapters is all about me. Because in the process, I was writing the book and going through all this uh, relationship tips. And, and in the process of writing, God said, okay, but the people, like, kind of like what you said about your listeners, he said, all right, the people need to know who you are. Mm-hmm. They, need to, they need to know your story. So the first four chapters, man, I really talk about my story. I talk about my growing up, my, uh, you know, being raised in a, in a pastor's home, being raised with two older brothers who were very athletic and very popular. Um, mm-hmm. Know, who were who were thin, who were, you know, um good looking and here I was becoming a little chubby fat kid, you know, mm-hmm. you know, um and trying to live up under that um the scrutiny of that. Right. So um so a lot of those things, man, uh the first four chapters pretty much are just all about that. All about my, my life and my relationship issues and the issues that I had um that kept me from you know, doing things properly that I needed to do. So it, it, it really, you know, because here's one of the things, if you start wrong, it, it's hard to get back. You know what I'm saying? Um, so for me, a lot of situations that I have been through with it, when it came to relationships, it was stuff that I had done wrong from the beginning but never got the right information. Yeah. yeah. To do it so I right, you know, and my question is that before you met your first wife, were, were you doing a lot of dating? Were you married? Did you have a lot of experience with women? No, I mean, you know what? Honestly, um, I, I was that, again, I was that fat kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was afraid. Uh, I, was, I, I had a, a major fear of rejection. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I wasn't the guy that would go out and, and start talking to women, trying to get their attention. Um, so right. for me, I didn't date a whole lot. Now, when I did start dating, it was all because either somebody set me up with somebody or uh, I just told a friend of mine this other day, I used to use my singing ability to get mm. because, you know, right. I knew, I said, hey, if I can, you know, if I saw a young lady that I liked, man, I would, I'm one of those, I would start singing to make her make sure she heard me and hope she would come and say something. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I use that. I use that, and um, but the problem was for me is that was cool for a minute. But the problem is you can't continue to hide behind that for too long. You got to, mm-hmm. you know, you got to, you got to open your mouth and start talking. You know, you can't just come out like that. So yeah, you be like uh, Michael but, Jackson, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. Okay. So yeah, man. So I really didn't. I didn't do a whole lot now in high school, probably. Probably more than average, but I think it was only because um, once I started singing, it it changed people's perception of me. I was no oh, longer just a little fat kid, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, so it made yeah. it a little different. And, and, you know, and plus I stood out because there wasn't a lot of guys, you know, running around singing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you like the Levert. You like, like Joe Levert, his son. Oh, that's man. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Man. Wow. You had to do hey, you had to do what you had to do, man. You know, some guys got the loose, some got the voices, some got the height. You know. Exactly. You what God gave you. That's right. Exactly. So attracted, but then, but when you're counseling women, like I find out I found that like women when they the way they, they identify men in high school they, they 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 look at guys the same way when they're in their forties and fifties. They still looking for that same type of guy. Absolutely. You know? And there's not going to be a lot of them out there that's going to be available at forty and fifty. You know. Right. You kind of gotta scale down a little bit. Right. You know? <laughs> right. With, and I think what the problem is, I know. With, I know for me, when I think back to my exes, uh, I had a couple of girls that I talk about in the book that didn't want to be with me in high school because. They didn't mind being my friend, but they didn't, they couldn't see themselves dating me because of my weight or whatever at that time. And, um, then of course, years later, get out of graduate high school and, you know, go through divorce and lose a bunch of weight. And it's like, oh, oh, you know, there everything changes. But it, it was sad because to see these same women, like you said, still chasing the athletic dude that 
Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, your history with these dudes ain't that good. I mean, you <laughs> you know, you you had these brothers and they treated you like dirt. Why would you keep looking for that same type of dude? But you know, it, it, for me, it's all about it. it's all about teaching women now to value themselves, so that when they find somebody who values them, they recognize it. That's right. That's right. I mean, I understand you have to have some type of attraction for somebody, but sure. but always, I, I, I told I told my sister and a couple of friends, I said, you guys missed the boat when you didn't marry the guy that was like your really good friend. That was the one that was really for you. I said, you should yeah. have a relationship where you're like so. I mean, I met couples that. They have longevity in their marriage, and then you look at the the secret to their success or their formula of why it's still going strong, and it's because they get along. So when they want to be with each other all the time, it's like, are y'all together all? Do you have to drive her everywhere? Do you have to go everywhere he goes? They together all the time. You know? Now this it, it is key. We, we my wife and I tell people all the time. You got to understand. If you don't understand anything else, people are so busy trying to fall in love, and the truth. Mm-hmm. You need like. That's right. Like them. Like, them. like them. like them a lot. You got to be able to like them, man, because I'm telling you, man, there is, and, and listen, I'm, I'm sure there's there plenty of your listeners can, can attest to this. There is nothing worse than being in love with somebody you don't like. Yeah. That's a man that about way. to be here, man. <laughs> yeah, you sit next to him at the movie. I can't stand this person. Why am I at the <laughs> movies with them? Why I'm laying in this bed with them? I can't stand them. Right. Yeah. Right. Gotta like him. Yeah. Don't even call him when you, when you don't see him all day. <laughs> like you don't right. care. They like right. your roommate. <laughs> right. And, and, and you know, man, and, and so many people get married now, man, for the wrong reasons, and they end up being in relationships where they are. They're just roommates. And you mm-hmm. know, they, they can't they can't break up because they got too many bills together. You know, they got too much stuff going on. So it's like mm-hmm. you you're just there. But we here we are married, mm-hmm. living single. I mean, that is no. That's, that's, that's not a good place to be, man. Yeah, especially, especially you hook up with them girls that had them supermodel bodies, man. You know, they get start getting in their 40s and 50s, man. They, you know, they're they not going to be that much of a supermodel no more. Right, you know? and it's the same thing, same thing with those athletic guys. Because I, 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 yeah. I don't know about your experience. I know for me, a lot of those, when I went to my 20th anniversary, 20th reunion, man, I remember laughing so hard. <laughs> because I walked to my 20th reunion, and all the dudes that were the, the athletic, you know, shock guys, man, they were just as sad as I was, and I thought it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember my best friend, man, he said, I used to I used to brush my hair forward all the time and back. He said, he he said, yeah, Jerry, he said, you're going to be bald. You're going to be bald when you get in your 40s or something like that. He said, man, I saw him in his 30s. He had no hair. I still got my <laughs> hair. You know, I, that's what I focus on. That's my focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, man. Yeah, man. You know, man, you know, it's Good old days, man. You gotta love your boys, though, man. The homies, yeah, man. You gotta love yeah, the homies. Yeah. They keep you in check, man. Make, they, some of them guys have, have made their buddies successful because of certain things they've said in high school to them. You know, Absolutely. you're gonna be nothing. You know, you're gonna go prove them wrong when you yeah, pull right. up yeah. in, the, in, the, in the helicopter. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Look, we're gonna take a quick break, man. So we when we get back. We're gonna take your your final thoughts, man. To to, uh, today's conversation, man. We appreciate you being here, all right, you know, telling your story, man. We wish you the best with the book with 5,000 people following you, man. I know you probably sold, you be selling out all the time, man. Trying that and, um, best, <laughs> That's right, that's right. All right, hold tight. A quick presentation with Lisa Sandler, WRP Promotions. Are you an author looking for promotional services? For a reader looking for a great read at low prices, in this competitive world of books, Fighting Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Positive Power 21.0 Internet Radio. You are listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. All right. Thank you, family. We're talking to Eric A. Terry Sr., Real Talk Consulting, Real Talk Making a Man. All right. Tell people where they can get your book at, man. Absolutely. Where they can meet man. you. Absolutely, man. I'm on Facebook. Uh, they 
go to facebook.com slash Real Talk Consulting. Uh, Got to get you to my fan page. Uh, the book is available right now on Amazon, also on Create Space, Create Space, the ebook store. Uh, there are a lot of little independent stores that also have it now. Um, they can also go to our website, realtalkconsultant.com, and they can get the book there. Um, and we, we've been having an awesome, awesome time with the book. The, the response has been amazing. Uh, the thing that's really been blessing me here is me. I've got brothers calling me that are reading the book saying, man, I'm not a big reader, but I read your book in a couple of hours. I read your book in a couple of days, and I saw myself, and it really helped me. And now that's the thing yeah. really, that's really been blessing me, man. So, uh, but yeah, always, they can also go uh, to, um, we actually working there to get it in Barnes & Noble. Um, okay. Like Amazon is the biggest thing there right now. Uh, but if they want an autograph copy, you know, I'm still doing autograph copy, they can go to my website, realtalkconsultants.com. Man, you got to give me a copy, man, so I can present it on my show, man, my, my you. YouTube show. You. All yes, right? sir, I got you. I got you. I see, I see my address, man, so we can talk it up, man. I love talking yeah. about Matter of fact, I was trying to do a romance show, but my dad said I got out of control. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. <laughs> I'm going to read your book first, and then I'm going to try it again. There you go. There you go. There you go. That work. Yeah, was, yeah, he said we were too dark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read your book, man, then I'm going to try it again. I even got a host that's going to help me out this time, man. Keep me, keep me in perspective. Yeah, okay. man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Now, tell us again about Real Talk Consulting, how people get in contact with you, man, who's looking for some help. You know, they're on the fence right now, about to jump. Absolutely, man. Listen, and, and, and this is one of the things I tell anybody. If you were in a relationship that you value, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't want to talk to people who don't value the relationship they have because not only will you not be, will you not be willing to invest in something you don't value, but you won't invest mm -hmm. time either. So in mm -hmm. other words, everything I say, everything I tell you, you know, if you try, you won't even attempt it because, you know, um, that's got to be key. So if you are in a relationship that you value and if you feel like there are just some key things that you're missing that you don't have that you need to make this thing work, contact us. Listen, we, um, and listen, we're like you, dear. We're worldwide with this thing, man. We, um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't just do local. If uh, I have couples that are, they call us on Skype, we, we set up Skype sessions. Um, mm -hmm. And I can meet with them right there, you know, and talk to them and, and you know, speak to both. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and give them some tools, man, to really help them make the relationship better. Because the truth is, the church hasn't prepared us, the educational system hasn't prepared us. So we created Real Talk Consulting to be a place to help people build their relationships and make it work. Yeah, sounds good, man. Sounds good. Yeah, definitely send me that book, man, so I can straighten yes, up sir. old girl. Let us straighten old girl up, man. She likes to work all the time, man. We both <laughs> like to work. So, yeah, uh, we make we make we make the weekend special though, because you know, this matter of fact, the next show is my last show until Monday. And it's all about her, man. It's all about her. That's right. That's right. Miss Nene. It's all about her. All right, bro, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. We gotta have you back on here too, man. We gotta have hey, you man. back. Anytime, man. Anytime. Yeah. yeah, we got, we got, a, we got a man. Fact, if you do a webinar, man, let us know, man, so we can tell people, you know, where they can find you. Do, do you do Google Hangout? I sure do. Yeah, we got to let us know, man, so we can crank that up, man. I'm always trying yeah. to push um positive things, man. You got to give me some positive stuff to push. I get tired hey, of pushing man, we, all these urban fiction books all the time, man. Got to hey, push man, some, some nonfiction, right? Doc, I'm gonna tell you, we got plenty because we we doing. Classes and schedules all the time, so we've got plenty of stuff that we can yeah. do. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, please. Yeah, please let us know. This should be right in the inbox, man. We'll make sure we put that on the, the front of our things to do list and promoting. Gotcha. All right, we'll all do. right, y'all. Man, look, all right, we appreciate you, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank and you, look, sir. All right, I, you. I tell I tell people all the time, man. When they want to hear the good stuff, man, especially tonight, man. This guy has over five thousand people following him on Facebook. They want to know, women want to know what they're doing wrong, what they can do right, how they can get a man, how they can keep their man. And then men want to know how they can treat their women right, how they can communicate, how they can listen to them and not try to win, win, the, win the race every time. Right. Eric is the man to talk to. Real Talk Consulting. He's on Facebook. Take care, everybody. We appreciate you listening. And like I always say, stay awesome all week long. Peace, everybody. I'm Positive Power 21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21.
Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. All right, that's. Have you been hurt? Been hurt. Been back, back there. Got a talking back to you. Talking back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escape into another reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books of your book paperback. Ebook, good book. Available on author D. Wilkins, good books.com. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned and we'll see you there. My name is author Alita H. My book is Dangerously in Love, Blame It on the Streets, and I'm on Jerry Rose Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Pat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is I am Sandra Carter. Hi, this is Phil Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBurn. I'm live on the Dream World Show. Hi, what do you do? Boy, do what you say. Hey, this is Dolly, the Polish spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a world winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Voice Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Hardy, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse. It's a sense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or Donna Inc. Org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane, is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstores. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. I am Jerry Royce Live, and you, we have a sponsor for tonight. Tonight's sponsor is James Deshay. That's right. So stay tuned for his 30-second presentation. The poet, James Deshay, romance man. Mm-hmm. 
Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. Deshay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. All right, all right, everybody. Thank you for coming back. Stand with us. That's right. Support our sponsors, everybody. We really appreciate having sponsors. You know, we've just been around for a year now. We celebrate on December 21st, 2013. And it just, it's just awesome to say, hey, this podcast has, has generated some, some great buzz. Um, we have some fantastic guests on the show, including the one we're having tonight. That will be Mr. Alita Hodges. She's here to talk about her new book, Dangerously in Love. Let me unmute her so I can bring her on. I'm going to read her bio, then we're going to say hi to her and, and get to know her. That's right, because my, 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 my Merlin family and my D.C. family, we like to know who you are. All right. Dangerously in Love, Blaming on the Street, Volume 1, Paperback. It was, uh, it was released October 2014. Author Lita Hodges is poet and writer born and raised in mid-Michigan. Her debut novel, Dangerously in Love, was published in August 2014, on Cinematic Inc., a subsidiary of SBR Publications, owned and operated by best-selling author David Weaver. Oh, we still haven't had that brother on yet. Alita currently lives in Lansing, Michigan, where she is a dental assistant. She began writing poetry at the age of 12 and has always been an avid reader. Her poems have been sought out by fans and friends of life for years. Her book, Dangerously in Love, is a trilogy series that chronicles a love tale filled with danger passion and one woman dream of escape. And I remember that commercial too on my show. We still play that <laughs> sometimes. I'm just sorry we put a date on that thing when you released it in November. I can still be rocking that. So how you doing, Lita? Welcome to Positive Power. Oh, thank you for having me. I am doing great. I am doing so great. Yeah. So awesome to have you back. Second time around. Right, doing, right. Right. You must love it here. You know, you can Yeah, I do, I time. do. <laughs> That's right. We had you featured on our, our adult program, and he said, she said, which I really love that show. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to revamp that show. But you know, no, no, yeah. that was fun. Yeah, I had a ball that night. Yeah, we did. We we, we cut up. We all cut up. So they gotta let your hair down sometimes. Right. <laughs> but the powers of the be, you know, the company, they weren't all that happy with the program. So we must have to have to steer in another direction. So I'm gonna be working with Ramon. We're gonna come up with some topics and. And stick to them, because, of course, you know, we was reading our questions from some of the popular online publications that's based on, you know, men and women relationships and, and their uh, habits, <laughs> their sexual habits. Right. So it was kind of funny, though, you know, talking to people, finding out what they know and what they don't know. It was just so much fun, though. But anyway, you know, but, you know, I got to think about some of the kids that listen to the program. After all, we are streaming in other countries now, and, and you know, it, where it's nighttime here, it's daytime there. You don't know people are, uh, you know, listen to internet radio these days. With, uh, exactly. You know, computers being the way it is. And, you know, some places actually have free wire, free wireless services in their country. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, we're not there yet, but <laughs> we're close, though. I heard we're close. Yeah, I get a, I get a wireless signal um, in my house. And my kids, you know, switch back and forth sometimes. All right. So we're here to talk about you. Brand new project. Well, I remember we promoted this for you when you released it. I think it was around November. Uh-huh. I'm dangerously in love. Uh, it's out there on Amazon.com for anybody looking to snatch it up real quick. And we're going to talk about your reviews later in the show. But before we get started, we want to know who is author Alita Hodges? Um, I'm just a regular person. I'm just, you know, I'm a dental assistant. I work daily. I got a regular nine to five. You know, my passion is writing. So, in my spare time, I write. I like to write. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. You know, I'm really close with my sisters, my family. So, you know, I, I stay in the house a lot. I'm not really a um, party or, you know, that type of that type of person. But I just love to write. And I'm just stepping in this, you know, writing game with everybody else. And I'm just, I love it. It's like I'm home. It's like, okay, I belong. This is what I should be doing. That's right. That's right. All right. That's so awesome. Now, Lisa, so 
so you know you're a grandmother and you know i would uh-huh. i forgot that you was a grandmother you know because we see you you know posting out there on facebook you know <laughs> i guess it's just hard to tell people ages these days you know people yeah. age so well you know people found the you know the fountain of youth now you know then we know you know, that you're not a you know you're basically a homebody you're a nine to five uh-huh. But tell us a little bit about you know how you how you was brought up and everything you know the upbringing. I was the upbringing. youngest of you know I was the youngest of four. Um, my mom and dad was together for forty, um, like forty five years, and he passed a few years ago. Oh, so you know I was, we had like a, a really tight knit family. Um, my mom was a team mom. Her mom was a team mom. I was a team mom. It was just like. You know, family, you know, this is just a family curse. It's just a generational curse, I guess. But, yeah. you know, everybody made it through it, just made a stronger woman at the end. We didn't let it, we didn't take it and, you know, let it interfere in anything we were doing. It just made a stronger woman at the end. So that's why I'm, I'm not that old. So to be a grandmother, I'm only, you know, I'm just about to hit the 40 mark this year. So. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I know, I'm, something I wish I could be a oh, grandpa, pop, pop. You know, because my son, you know, Brandon, you know, he's he's about your age. No, he's oh, okay. actually younger than you, but he's in his early 30s. But, um, oh, okay. You know, he's still out there looking. You know, he's been dating a little young lady for the past year, so who knows. But, uh, yeah, you you know, but I got a young son, too. I got a son that's only 11. I think he's 11. He's 12, he's 12 now. So I'm still running <laughs> the Little League event. Okay. School event. And my daughter, she's just uh, 14. She's 14. Oh, you know, they grow up so fast. You kind of lose yeah. track of their age. You know, you don't want so them to youngest, grow up. My youngest is a boy. He's 17. And then I have um, three three girls. That's my youngest. And my girls are 24, 22, and 19. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, grown wow. women. They grow women. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. So, y'all, so if you do hang out, you can take them with you. you know? Nah. <laughs> so nah, mom gonna let mom wanna let her head down. I can't go. That's I'll right. Tell mom. Right. So when you so when you're not writing, you know what's going on. What, what are you doing when you're not writing? I you spend know. a lot. You know, I try to spend a lot of my spare time with my grandkids. I love them to death. And you know, I just write like I've been really on like focused. Like um, so, my first book came out in October. I'm done with the second book, and I'm working on a new series. So, you know, I've really been writing a lot lately. So I'm just trying to, you know, I'm really trying to get some books under my belt this year. Yeah, so yeah, my right. main focus this year is just to keep writing and just keep going. That's right. Keep grinding. That's what they do out yeah. there. All right. So, so the last time we talked, you know, you know, you, you were doing the same thing with grinding. So, so what's new out there in the in the social media world when it comes to, well, let's just say what's new in the publishing world? Any, any changes, anything that you can share that can help a young writer? someone who's, who's looking to get into the business? What's your advice? Um, my advice is to try. You know, a lot of people, I know people that say, well, I write all the time, but, you know, I can't, you know, they don't really believe in themselves that they can write a book. You know, and it's just, it's just not that. If you're a writer and you like to write, or even if you like to do journals, you know, write journals or something, you know, it's a writer inside. You just got to get out there and try and believe mm-hmm. in your work. That's your piece of art. That's your work. So you got to right. just believe in it so somebody else can believe in it, too, or they're not going to believe in it. you got to believe in mm-hmm. yourself. That's right. Now, I mean, you have a lot of motivation in you. Is, is, is that because, you you know, you're a poet? You know, you write poetry. I know a lot of people write poetry of self-motivated. Is that is that the deal with you? Why? You said why? Because I have a lot of motivation in me. I think it's yeah, you, yeah, you can, yeah, you seem to be self-motivated. Is it because, you're, you know, you're a poet? Maybe so. I, po- poetry to me is like therapy. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, that's when I let out or whatever. Usually, you know, make my best poem, something was going on in my life. So mm. it's like therapy for me. But I just try to stay positive, you know. I really believe, you know, you stay positive and positive come back to you. You negative and complain and, you know, then mm. that's what's going to come around you. I really believe that. That's right. So. That is so true. Now, when did you first start writing poetry? When, when, I was 12, when I was 12 years old. Twelve years old. All right. Yeah. So you found it on your own. Did somebody introduce it to you, or stumble across it in the library and you just loved it? I was in a. Yeah. I was sitting in um in my civics class, and the teacher was talking about um. You know, a lot of the violence and stuff going on around. You know, around that time. You know, it was like the nineties, whatever. Around that time, then early late eighties, nineties, whatever. Around that time, that's when a lot of violence just started happening. A lot of kids was getting shot. A lot of stuff was just happening. 
So I wrote a um, poem, and he was just like, you know, how we can figure out ways to, you know, help the world or whatever. And I wrote a poem called Teach Peace when I was 12 years old. And he printed it out, and he gave it to every teacher. And I was so mm-hmm. impressed. It was mm-hmm. a really, I re, you know, I put an excerpt in it in my first book. I don't know how mm-hmm. I remembered that poem. It must have been meant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know that yeah. was a great feeling, um, a teacher sharing your work with his colleagues. Yeah. Know. Uh, great feeling. So, so what happened after that? Did you continue to write? Did you join a newspaper team? The, you know, the nope, not you know. I've always team? been, yeah. I've always you know been a like you know an inside person. So, um, no, I would just write at home. So, I wanted to you know for Christmas, I didn't want no new Jordans or Nikes or no Dows or nothing like that. I wanted a typewriter. I wanted some paper and pencils, and you know, I wanted to write. You know, that's all I could think of. I love the feeling of the keyboard. I love that. Mm-hmm. So have you published a poetry book yet? No, but I, I want to eventually. Poetry is not that easy for me because it's like it just happens sometimes. You know, oh. it might be something on my mind or something going on and it just happens. So, you know, it's just, you know, I got poetry here and there. I don't think I could just actually sit down and try to write a whole poetry book because I would want it to be genuine. Yeah. So, so, so you, don't, you don't do spoken word? No, but I want to eventually. Yeah. Oh, I love spoken word. I was hoping you were going to say, yeah, Dre, I have a couple pieces I can read for you right now. No, that's on my bucket list. I'm shy. I got a book signing Saturday, my first book signing. I am so shy. I'm really going to have to put my big girl pants on and, you yeah. know, get out there. <laughs> you going to have family with you? Family going to be yeah. with you? Yeah, my sister and my mom probably be there with me. Yeah, as long as you got that support, there, everything be okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, so your first book sign. So why why is it taking so long for you to do a book sign? You know, I work. It's just been a lot going on. And then I've been writing. You know, I just like I said, I've been writing and all that. And I really didn't even think about a book signing, you know. And then a lot of people from my hometown, which is like 40 minutes away from where I live now, it's like, we want a book. We want a book, you know. And I'm like, order. You know, don't nobody like ordering, I guess, paperback. So mm-hmm. I, that's when I was like, well, let me do a book signing. I ordered book, books and I just started making arrangements, and I'm like, "Wow, I planned a book signing. I'm having a book signing." <laughs> oh, so you okay? So you did went ahead and ordered a couple of books yourself. So would you order them through Amazon? Yeah, well, my publisher do, does that part for me. Oh, your publisher. That's right. I forgot yeah. you got a publisher. So how's the publishing relationship going on? How's that going? Oh, for you? it's you know what uh, PBRS that group. That's like the um, that's like a blessing. I'm blessed to be in that group. You know. Yeah. It's just they, they, they inspire each other. You know, every time I wake up, I, you know, if I'm on Facebook and I'm going on a um, feed, you know, and it's the group, you know, like our private group that we talk in, everybody mm-hmm. got so much inspirational stuff to say. It just keeps you going. It keeps me going. You know, and I really mm-hmm. appreciate that. I can get advice from other authors that's well-established. That's, you know, number one, number two, every book they touch, they, you know, their numbers are just, you know, phenomenal. And they, they talk to me, you know, just like, you know, to me, they're not normal. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I read your books, you know. So for them to talk to me and I can communicate with them and they can help me, that's like everything to me. I love that group. That's yeah. the best thing that could have ever happened to me to be a part of TBRS. That's right. Amen. That's a blessing. So they really working it out there. So where are they based at? Um, um, did you say CB, SBR, um, right? Oh, well, uh, TB, TBRS, that's a group of publishing companies and people. But I'm with Cin- Cinematic Inc. Publications, which is a part of the TBRS group. Okay. Oh, you said, see, because I thought we downloaded it said SBR. So you said TBR. Yeah, it's S- it was SBR. Yeah, I got to do some updating to that. Oh, they call it T now. Okay. All it's right. It's TBR, yep. yep. All right, good, good. All right, well, hold tight. When we come back, we're going to talk about what they're saying about Dangerously in Love and, you know, how you feel about the trilogy series and how's it coming along when the next one going to drop. So we're going to stay tuned. For a book buzz presentation, like I tell everybody, you know, if you want to get your your name out there and you want people to know who you are, so when you start dropping your second and third book, they already know who you are on Positive Power 21 because we're in Washington, the Merlin area, where we buy books. That's right, everybody. Check us out. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company, where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career 
family and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse. It's a spent thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose live radio i will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in february stay tuned and we'll see you there hi i am arthur crystal Alexis, and i'm on positive power 21 with jerry royce live Woohoo! that's right crystal she was here crystal Alexis. And don't forget Angel Sessions coming soon. The big superstar, urban gospel star. That's right. She coming back to Positive Power. I think she was one of my first musical um, artists to come on the show. You know, that was my first time interviewing them after talking to book authors for so long. <laughs> I'm ready to ask them, you know, where did they get that fictional story from? <laughs> you can't ask them that. But anyway, she's coming back. It's Jerry Royce's second chance. That's right, talking to a superstar. All right, right now we're talking to superstar author Lita Hodges. She got to be a superstar because she came back, gave me a second chance. What's going on, Lita? You ready to talk about this book? Oh, don't tell me Lita call dropped again. All right, hold tight. Let me see. Yep. You here? Lady, you still here? See her call. All right, y'all. So we, we can you hear? I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, you hear? Yeah, I hear you yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> All right, no problem. All right, leaders, so we ready to talk about this book of yours. Now, what are the people saying out there? Are you happy about what's going on with the, with the book? Is it selling the way you want? Do you need more yeah, marketing? What's did. going on? I can't. I can't complain. You know, this is my first book. I, you know, I put myself out there with that book and getting it published, and you know, I didn't know. You know, I didn't. You know, but. I got, you know, some really good reviews. Of course, I got a couple bad reviews, you know, but you got to have mm-hmm. tough skin. You got to keep going. Everybody ain't going to like you, and that's fine. But I got yeah. some really good reviews, you know, some really good reviews. And I got, you know, fans, people who like the book, can't wait to book two, who follow me, who, you know, that feels good to know that people read my book and they know the characters, and, you know, that really feels good. Yeah. Now, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty competitive out there. In the urban fiction world, do you, do you see yourself, you know, writing some other genre, you know, once you get yourself finished established here, you know, with this company? Maybe, I mean, um, maybe a poetry book or self-help. I want to write um, some self-help. Yeah, I can see you doing that. You know, you seem like the type. Now, let's see what they're saying out there. I just finished reading Dangerously in Love, Five Stars, um, Alita H. I couldn't put it down once I started. This book is amazing. Can't wait for the next book. That's right. She said she ready to pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> she said very talented. So you got so much talent. Why you're not you're not just going to limit yourself, you know, just with urban fiction, are you? You know, you see yourself um, doing romance. You know, romance is pretty hot. I remember. Yeah. You know, talking about that. So what's up with that? Um, you know, I, you never know. I never know. You know. That like the the new book, the third book I'm r- writing right now is um, I you know drifted from dangerously in love. Um, mm-hmm. This is a whole new series, you know. And I always like in my dangerously in love, you know, it was a street literature book, urban fiction, but you know, it was a message in there as far as domestic violence, you know, women women lifting themselves up. So now I'm um, kind of tackling the issue of um, um, police, you know, all these guys getting shot, men getting shot by police officers, mm-hmm. you know. So why that story? You that's like just in the story a little bit, but I'm hitting a lot of main points why another story is going on around it. But it's it's a really good story. I'm I'm getting you know proud of myself. I'm really proud of myself. Yeah, can you talk in this book? You talk about a abusive cheat and a womanizer. Yeah, you know, a woman's a woman's worst enemy. You know, man yeah. that just can't stay in one place. You know. Now, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I guess we'll go off the subject a little bit, but you know, it's pretty much the character in your book. I think we're talking about Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you know, black men, you know, you, you know, your experience with us, 
you know, the character in your book. I'm sure you had to do some research. What were what some of the, the known facts, you know, that was coming out when you was researching your character, Jimmy? Because you wanted to be truthful with him. You didn't want to just make him all up. But, you know. Right. You, what, what did you find out about black men when you was researching this book? Um, um, as far as um, abusers or black men in general? Yeah, you own your research, Black Men Pray. What did you learn? You know, that was a surprise um, to you. Um, that was a surprise to me. I, I, I don't think I can be surprised. <laughs> you were surprised. <laughs> yeah, you've been around a while. Okay, but well, well, tell us what were some of the things that, you know, you like to share that, you know, that, you know about black men that you think you like to talk about. That you know, like, as far as um, black men, period, as far as people, period, you know, hurt people, hurt people. So you never know what that went on in somebody else's life, you know. And then as a woman, we got, you know, women just got to just really love themselves and, you know, try to, to do what's best for them at the end of the day. We, you know, as a woman, we get, we so emotional. We always trying to take care of somebody and love and no matter what, mm-hmm. it, you know, no matter what should come to do, it should be only with yourself, you know, mm-hmm. you should love yourself like that. So, you know, just as, you know, people in general, you know, yeah. with the book. So you're saying that, you know, when you was researching this character, it was nothing really surprised you that what men had to say? You know, when you, because you did have to do some research about Jimmy, right? You didn't just yeah. write him from your mind, right? So it was nothing that guys said to kind of like, whoa, y'all think like that? Nothing? You know? A lot of men don't, a lot of men don't think it's, um, I know that a lot of men think it's okay to cheat and that everybody do it. And I think that's because of the media and how it's just out there like that. Like that's that's the new thing to have a, you know, more than one girlfriend or cheat, and a woman, that, that shouldn't even be a problem no more. You know, a lot of men think that's okay. And I, I think that, I don't think that that's okay. Now, these were single guys, or these guys were married or engaged? Both. 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 Yeah. Well, I, I remember, I met a guy from Africa, and I remember, you know, when I was just, you know, out there myself, you know, just not sure who I want to, you know, make the main lady, you know, because you, right. you just keep thinking you're going to miss the, you know, you're going to miss the opportunity the ultimate and i remember this guy said um his name was joe i'll never forget him he's from saigon saigon he said um he said it's okay to have more than one wife but you gotta be able to afford all of them you can't buy a house for one and not the other wow like, really yes you know, <laughs> wow you got really you really got a big king <laughs> you know everybody live in a townhouse you know right but i said wow you know he said it's okay, but you gotta be, the, you know, for both of them, you know. So, I guess guys do have it inside them, you know, that, you know, you see it on TV when you watch those those, those movies on those African kings and queens, you know, how they, you know, the guys bathe by many women, and yeah. that might be enough for that be enough for a guy right there to keep him happy. You know, he's all right, baby, we're gonna take a bath. You got twelve girls yeah. washing you down. He'd be, you know, he'd be okay. He's not going nowhere. I don't know. I guess the world we in, man. You know, people yeah. gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta understand. Um, you know, the principles of the Bible, what the Bible say. But exactly. You know, then, then. All right, let's move on. Yeah, all right. Yeah, now, the book. You know, it's just stressing people. But far as I didn't want to be with book one. You know, it's all about reminisce. This girl, oh poor reminisce. So, like mm-hmm. I say, hurt people, hurt people. So my book two. It's Jimmy's telling his story from when he grew up, how he got where uh, he got. Yeah, so Jimmy. you know, I, I had Jimmy to, I had to give him a say. Yeah, I had to let everybody know where, how he thinks, where his mind comes from. And for me to turn myself into that character was amazing. I was mm. so surprised, you know. And I was, it, and so book two is a little more street. It's a little mm. more urban, but more you know, I'm like Jimmy speaks, so of course it's gonna be. Yeah, it's his turn. Jimmy's turn. It's his turn. Right. Yeah. So, so this is going to be a three book series, then, huh? Yep. Three book trilogy, trilogy, yep. the Chronicles of Love. So is it a lot of love in it, or is this a lot of danger? It's and a, one it's, woman? I think, I think it's turning it. It's, it's you know danger and love, but it's a lot of danger. You know, a lot, a lot of, of stuff gonna keep you on, on suspense on book two. It's just like a page turner. Like, oh my gosh, you know, I really, mm. I just took this, took my gloves off and just took, you know, just wrote. I didn't, you know, I wasn't trying to worry about what people would think about this or what, you know, maybe I shouldn't say this. I just let myself go and just wrote. So yeah. I'm really surprised to see what everybody got to say about that book. All and there's some right. poetry in the book. Oh, yeah, really? and there's some, oh, yeah, some poetry. Yep. Jimmy. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, Jimmy writing poetry this time. Yes, Jimmy, okay. yes. Some, there's yeah. some poetry in the book, but I never forced my poetry, so it's not as much as in book one. Yeah, I can reminisce with the writer then. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. Now, a lot of people said the book didn't make them cry. So what was yeah. it about it that was sad? You know, what was going on re- reminiscing, you know? Who made, her made father, her father, her, the, the whole scene of her father passing. Her, oh. you, know, pe- you know, her passing, it was death for the family. But reminiscing, you know, growing up. So the, her father passing, her nephew passing. You know, she went really in detail, you know, with those characters. I went, you know, those characters, you know, it takes you through the whole scene. So it's kind of sad. It is kind of sad. Yeah, man. So, so you took the... The audience on the emotional roller coaster ride at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so we gonna see any of that in the second book, where you know it's gonna be some some sadness to the book, or is it just gonna be all hard, Jimmy? Poetry? No, it's sad. It's sad. It uh, starts off sad. It starts off. It starts, hmm. starts off really sad, and then you know, like the first book ended. You know, it goes. It jumps right back into where the first book ended, and it, it's sad. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, hmm. I can't believe this. So. And then Jimmy mm. start, you know, like I said, I give him a voice, and those poems, you know, those are his poems, and <laughs> so the, the writer, that's right. Yeah. Now, did you introduce us to any new characters in the second book? Uh huh. Yeah, who we got? Yeah, it's um. Let me think. Yeah, it's one new character in the book because you know, Reminis still feel like she got work to do, so she go back in time and she mentioned a mm. character, and the you know that's the character that later on come on in the end of the book, you know. So, okay. yeah, it's like one new character is another female. It's um, another, some more characters that was in the previous book, of course, in there. She has a new love mm-hmm. interest in book two, which mm-hmm. was one of the previous characters. Oh, uh, hmm. I see, I see. Uh-oh, yeah. dangerously in love. Oh, so you ready, you ready to get everybody on this one then, huh? Yeah, so I, so I took my gloves off, and I hope, you know, it's, I mean, you know, I have, like I wrote, a, it's, a, it's a sex scene in there, so... I took my gloves off. I, I didn't want to be Uh-oh. like, well, I was. I'm worried. I don't want people to, you know. No, I had to just write. If mm. I'm a write, I'm a write. I'm not gonna hold. I'm not gonna so hold that. So you got a little graphic on this one. A little graphic. A little graphic. Oh, neither. Uh oh. I hear you. We can't wait to read it. So when right. is this Thank one supposed you. to drop? When When Dangerous in Love the second one book supposed Actually, to drop? Actually, I should have a cover reveal probably in the next week. <laughs> And so probably in the next few weeks, that's about to drop, you know, mm. in the next couple of weeks or next few weeks, that should be dropping. Mm. And I plan on having three out by the summer and it, I want to have three out by the summer and my new series started too. So by the end of the year, you know, I keep saying 10 books, but that don't really sound realistic when I think about it. So I want to have, you know, maybe six, seven books out by the end of the year. Awesome. Now, now what are the, what are your fans saying? On, on your Facebook, on your fan page, you know, how they engage in you. Are they, they happy the direction you're going in to know another book is about to drop? Yeah, they're, they're excited. They're excited. They, they're really excited. You know, my fans, I feel good because I know it feels good that people, you know, I, people be like, you know, you really inspire me. and You know, you have, you know, and I, that really makes me feel good. I get an inbox like, you know, that's great. You're writing a book and that inspired me. I want to write it. You know, or maybe I get an inbox, you know, I used to get abused and I, that was so good how strong she's been. And, you know, so mm-hmm. it just feel good. I love the, I love the fans. I love them. I love, you know, I met a lot of interesting, like just phenomenal people, period, just writing this year. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. That's, see, that's the world we're in. Now, yeah, it is. Now, now, a lot of people use Instagram, Twitter, you know, are you all over the place? You know, I'm everywhere. Help. Yep. Everywhere. Tell people exactly, you know, your your method to your manners when it comes to promotion. How you start your day out when it's when it's time to promote and and then share some time in writing. How does you know, it, how just like you asked me, we talked about that before, and like I was like, Facebook is like the main source to me. So if I'm posting when I can, you know, because I work, you know, I work a regular job, I work, I open and close, you know, I'm a dental assistant, but I try or I hire somebody, but. 200 groups a day is my goal to post a day. If I can post at least 200 groups a day and, tw- you know, tweet it a couple times and Instagram mm-hmm. it a couple times, you know, then I'm doing great, you know. That's, that's, right. that's my goal. And if you can do that a day and you can be in those big groups and you can interact with the people and start, you know, being familiar with names and knowing people and they knowing you, you know, those likes that they hit, that really makes a difference, in, you know, in the book world. When people mm-hmm. like you and you start engaging in more friends and, 
having, you know, just more interaction. I have 5,000 Facebook friends, 1,700 mm-hmm. people on my author page, and like 200 people in my group. So I got a nice audience on Facebook. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Now, when you have an audience that size, do, do you, does it materialize in the sales? Or is of like course. A, lot of them, a lot of them doing the same thing, too. They're marketing books. Some yeah, of them might not I, be all on the same time. No, you know what? At first, when I first start getting my friends, I just wanted any friends or whatever because I wanted, you know, audience. But then I start filtering through my friends. So if all the people that's marketing books and all that, you know, if we're doing the same thing and, you know, we really don't communicate, no, that, you know, then I don't keep them in my feed or maybe I don't keep them up at all if I need some, to add some new friends that's interested in my book. So mm-hmm. you got to, you know, just be kind of tedious with all that, with your friends on Facebook, with who's in your group. Just be, you know, you want people interested. All right. So tell us exactly how the feed thing works, to, to, you know, for those who, not, who don't understand how the Facebook um, engine works. And how does that work? What is that saying when you're talking about the news feed or filtering people out? What does that mean? Oh, I'm just basically saying, like, um, I was saying that as far as people coming through my feed, I don't want to look at everybody. You know, I do got a, a lot of authors that I do, you know, engage and read their books and stuff. But I, as, far as, a, as far as my feed, you can unfollow people from your Facebook. You can unfollow them. You can just don't have them coming through your feed. So you can, you can, you have an option of what you see seeing going down your page. But as far as advertising, you know, if I'm advertising to 200 groups a day and, those groups got 10, 20, 30, 40,000 people in them, you know, or more, you know, mm-hmm. just the numbers just add up. If you, if you get one click or one like from the group or two likes from the group, group it just it just like a domino effect. It just adds up. And it's like, oh, yeah. thanks for the like. And they're like, no, your book is great. Where can I get it? And it's just like you just communicate. Just always mm-hmm. communicate and always be thankful. Be thankful and and share. If somebody share your stuff, you share their stuff too, you know. That's right. You just, That's just, right. Just, Keep it going. Be fair. That's right. Yeah, that, that's one of the things I know is I'm starting to see people that, you know, the behavior is starting to get a little better. Like sometimes yeah. you see some jealousy out there and you catch a couple um, people um, uh, posting about somebody. You, you know, you try to stay away from the negativity, but when it comes to sharing and promoting a, another individual, you see a nice thread of everybody complimenting that person's book and say, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. thank you very much, you know, and I want to get your book too when it comes out. You know, right. that's, that's what you're talking about, networking right there. You know, you don't hear a lot yeah. about that networking. You know, Most of you hear yeah. people saying, I'm grinding, I'm posting. Yeah, but, you know, are you networking? It's different when you have a relationship with people. Relationship you know? with people, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm developing some, I mean, some great people out there. I'm, I'm not coming with, you know, no harm. I just want to, you know, I just, if I'm, I'm asked questions, like I say, with my group. They just, so, it's like the best place to be, I swear. Even with my book signing, I tell them I'm nervous. I got support. Alita, you're going to do fine. Alita, you're going to be great. Yeah. You know, they don't know me in real life, but they, you know, I'm a part of this group, and I'm like family. It's like my family now. All right. And I like, sometimes I, sometimes I do find myself going to some of the groups and just scrolling there for maybe like a half hour. You, you find some interesting people in the groups, you know, that's not yeah. on your normal fan, you know, your normal page that you see all the time. And sometimes you can get some people that can give you the blues. But, like, I love the business side of Facebook, so I go inside the groups where people are promoting radio shows or yep. book signings or poetry sessions. Love checking those out. Sometimes I don't have the opportunity to always listen to those shows because they go live, and it's hard to find that, you know, that yeah, demand, that, you know, show. But, um, you know, it's good to see people trying to do some positive things, you know. It's a lot of promotion. Awesome. It's a lot of great promotion groups out there, too, like you. You know, I, I think you was one of the first ones I worked with. You know, you really helped me out. You know, I was I was so thankful to be on your show. You know, it's like really, um, Kasha Jordan, Miss Jetson. I think she's MissJetson.com. dot mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. I mean, I love her. Yeah. People and then people. She she. You know, I like the promoters that want to help. Not okay. You're gonna pay for the service and then it's over. Like you. Mm-hmm. You know, you keep it going for weeks and that's beautiful because advertising it doesn't stop. That's not nothing that's that right. stops. Yeah, yeah, you're so very really welcome. Appreciate we appreciate that. yeah, we appreciate you coming on board, giving us the opportunity to work with you too, and showing people you know what we can do here at Positive right. Power Twenty One. That's right, helping people. That's right about growth, wealth, and success. And there's so exactly. many things that I know people want to do, but you know, when you got your family, you got grandchildren and family. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you know you find yourself being consumed with this business because you you know you can almost have an obsession with it. You know, it if is. you let it. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> it, it, is. it is exciting. You know, it's like, just think, when we didn't have this type of community, and I remember Yahoo Groups was pretty neat, too. I used to love Yahoo Groups. It wasn't as pretty as this. You know, graphically, you couldn't, you know, post a whole bunch of stuff. You just basically put your comment or your poem, and I, I guess everything else was through MySpace back then. Right, you know, right. But MySpace had, like, viruses and stuff all in it. You had to be careful. But people yeah. would, would send you to their, to their website back then, so you had to have, like, a really expensive website back in the day. But now Facebook said, well, I'll give you a page, a fan page. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. so that is awesome. All right, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick break, and we come back. We're gonna get your final thoughts and let people know where they can find you. Tell, tell them about your book signing if they out there in the area. Remember, y'all, we are we are we are streaming, so you don't know who's gonna be listening to the show. <laughs> and I already know we're in twelve countries. We got our report. We are doing really well in the Chicago area, New York, Texas, out west, California, and we appreciate all the support in my hometown, Maryland. Eastern Shore, Maryland, that's right, and Baltimore, and Washington, D.C., my stomping ground. All right, so hold tight, everybody. That's right, hold tight, D.C., hold tight, Baltimore, hold tight, Eastern. This is Joy Voice Live Worldwide, I'm talking to Alita Hodges. She's the author of Dangerously in Love. Here we go, an episode of Book Buzz with ReesePublishing.com. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? We to our publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.reachworldpublishing.com. to a person who has everything. Hi, I'm Darlene Wood, and I am the owner of Stylish and Stylish Gifts by Dar. I get this question all of the time. At Stylish and Stylish Gifts by Dar, we specialize in customizing gifts for people and pets too. Our gifts are original and one of a kind. Not only do we deliver, we ship as well. We work according to your budget and your things. We have gifts for all things including baby showers, sports teams, get well, bridles, birthdays, pets, just because, and that's just to name a few. So let's now and sell a gift by Dar. Take the worry out of your gift giving today and also for the holidays. Our website is www.stylishandseller.com and our phone number is 443-682-5661. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You are listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. All right. Thank you, Studio 21. That's family right there. They looking out for me. All right. We're talking to Alita Hodges, poet, writer, Michigan. Her family's out there supporting her. She has a book signing coming up. Tell us a, tell us a little bit more about the book signing coming up, Alita. Um, well, it's going to be in Jackson, Michigan, um, this Saturday from 2 to 5 at the Jackson Coffee House downtown. Yeah, it sounds like fun. I love coffee. <laughs> love coffee. All right. That's going to be fun. Y'all going to have fun, yeah, right? it's going to be fun. I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting. It is really exciting. Yeah, you're, doing, you're doing giveaways. You can get away some prizes, door, door I got, prizes. no, you know, I've I got a goodie bag. I'm only selling my book. The book is only $10 there. I'm going to sign it, and then i got a goodie bag with, uh, I'm going to put a sample of the new book, some, you know, some new must-read books and some information mm-hmm. about how to get published and, you know, some, just, you know, just a little goodie bag to help people out to thinking about writing. Yeah. So, no raffle tickets, none, none, none of that? You know, I, this my, I didn't even know. It's my first Man, book signing. You, yeah, you got to get some raffle to get people, you know, a ticket, and then you call that number, and they win a free book or, or a gift basket or something. You got to crank it up. Okay, maybe maybe yeah. I will crank it up. Maybe I will yeah. do that. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah people like 
like this stuff. So the next time you get one, they're gonna they're gonna bring their friends. Right. <laughs> so right. I'm just yeah, because they go, they they come to look for food anyway. But you want to give them some prizes. <laughs> <laughs> right, maybe I'll raffle off some um, coffee coupons from the place. Yeah, something. that's right. Some gift cards, some five dollars gift yeah. cards for coffee. That's, that's right. Do it up. All right, y'all. We ready to hear Lita's final thoughts for tonight's show. We appreciate having you here as always. It's our third time, you know, having the show with you, and we we had a great time talking to you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. So you ready? Give me your final yeah, thoughts. Yeah, I'm ready. My final thoughts is, you know. Everybody follow me on Twitter at Author Alita H. I'm on Instagram at Author Alita, Facebook, Author Alita H. Um, you can even you can even um, Google me, www. Um, Google me or www.alitah.com. Book two is coming soon. Um, thanks, everybody, for your support. You know, everybody stay positive. Just stay positive. Keep going. You know, keep smiling. Keep laughing. And just, you know, just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. That's right. Keep it moving forward. Momentum. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Did you see it? You see my, my kids' music video? Oh, no, I didn't. Movie. I'm going to have to look. Your, yeah. your son is a rapper? No, they, they was on their drums and guitar. They played, but we, you know, we did everything from a uh, track. But they, you know, we was having fun, you know, trying oh, yeah. to crank everything like up. Yeah, I sent it to you. All right, everybody. Oh, yeah, one more, one more oh. thing. I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, sure. I'm on the cover of. Um, issue 11 of Black Rain magazine, and it'll be a link on my page. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of our broadcast, our podcast, but it's going to be available for replay, rewind, on demand. It's going to be streaming with a whole bunch of other awesome authors. That's right. They're talking about growth, wealth, and success, fiction, nonfiction, survivors of domestic abuse. Child molestation, all that stuff, homelessness, all that written, all that stories being told right here on PositivePower21.org. And I always tell people all the time, Alita, if they want to hear the good stuff, I mean the real good stuff, you better listen to Jerry Voice Live worldwide yes. on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker right here on Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21 and share this with your with your Facebook page, y'all. It's gonna help somebody, believe me. We got some serious stories on here. All right. I'm Joy Voice Live. We out. I'll be fine. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Joy Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Joy Voice Live. All right, y'all, stay awesome all week long. Have you been hurt? Been hurt. Been bad, babe. Gotta talk him back to you. Talk him back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escape into another reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books of your book paperback. Ebook, good book. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbook.com. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned. And we'll see you there. Hi, this is Joyce Ree. I'm the author of Hurt You Still Live Here, and I'm on the Jerry Rose Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Pat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iris Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Chris Bobby with Jerry Royce. Hi. Hi, I'm Phil LeBaron. I'm live on the Dream Show. Hi, what do you do? Boy, do what you say. Peace, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. We've got Robin in, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Worth Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war-winning podcast.
with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Voice Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse is a sense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane, is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.tamikapatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services, and online bookstore. So head over to writeworldsypromotions.com and check us out. Hey, everyone. This is Tamika Gonzalez, spoken word poet. Whenever I'm online, I'm always listening to Jerry Royce Live. You can find Jerry on www.speaker.com. Positive Power 21. Hey, hey, that's right, Tanika, Tanika Gonzalez in Florida, they listen to Joy Woods Live Worldwide, that's right, and thank everybody for joining us, and welcome to Positive Power 21.org, I am Joy Woods Live, that's right, and we got a book bus sponsor for tonight's show, that's right, because tonight, we got Joyce Reed, the author, she's here tonight. And we're going to talk to her, and, and we're going to hear her bio right after this presentation. So hold tight, everybody. This is James the Shade, the male poet. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. DeShay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. All right, check them out. James and Shay, the romance one. Good book of poetry. Check them out, y'all. Support their author. All right, tonight on Jerry Voice Live, we got Joyce Reed. We're here to talk about her book, Hurt Used to Live Here. Based on a true story, in the early 80s, a young girl was born into a family that left her heartless, helpless, and emotionless, allowing her to always fend for herself, alone and barely loved, she grew up and experienced so many things that eventually allowed her to learn, forgive, forget, and grow, sharing her story to touch hearts of others that can relate to the struggle, life's disappointment, abuse, death, and betrayal, and come out with a positive attitude. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Joyce Reed. How you doing, Joyce? Welcome to Positive Power. Thank you for having me. I'm fine to yourself. I'm doing great. We're in the middle of a snowstorm here in Maryland, but, you know, that's the way it is. We're in, we in the middle of February now. Mother, Mother Nature's going to get us now. We've been ducking it all January, but we'll be all right. I know. I've seen it on the news. 
Yeah, it's supposed to be like a blast of a storm. It's supposed to just come right on through and leave us, but who knows? The weather guys always get it wrong. But anyway, welcome to the show, and we're glad to have you um, present your, your new project, one I know that's real dear to your heart. I know you wrote that with, you know, with, a, with, a, with many, many tissue boxes next to the, to the writing pen. So I know it's tough, but um, I know God put on your heart to do it, and you're here to share. All right? So the first question is, who is Joyce Reed? I am an author, entrepreneur, and a survivor of many things. Um, I'm not here to preach to you, but I am here to let you in my world a little bit and help whomever I can. Um, everyone has a story, but not everyone has the courage to speak out about it. Um, I was alone at eight. I was a mother at 14. I was a single mom with two boys at, at 19 and, event, and eventually homeless with two boys. That's just who I was. But now I am a survivor, not a victim. That's right. We are not alone. Right. right. Strength. Hmm. So I guess my next question, what got you through that period? I mean, I know we're going to go back a little bit, but what got you through all of that? You know, with the two boys out there by yourself. What, what state were you living in when, when you were homeless? I was in Georgia. You in Georgia? Okay. Mm-hmm. So what got you through it all? Got you and the boys? Oh, first and foremost, it, God got me through it. Nobody else could get me through it but him. That's right. And when I was younger, I always knew that it was a higher power, but never understood why he would allow everything to happen to me. To happen to me. And right now, mm-hmm. speaking about it, I didn't understand it then, but I definitely understand it now, and I don't regret anything that I've been through. Because if I do regret it, I wouldn't even be here today, taking help and inspire, inspiring other people that's been through similar or more worse than I've been through. Like I said before, everyone has a story, but not everyone has the courage to speak out about it. That's right. Keep it under the rug. Keep moving. So, yeah. Joey, so what happened What happened in the early 80s as a young girl going into this family? What happened? I was, basically, I was basically alone since I was eight years old. I raised myself um, since I was 10. Um, I had a mother that was there, but only there financially. I taught myself um, how to tie my shoe. I taught myself how to be a woman. I taught myself everything. Um, and I've learned that being there financially isn't raising a child. It takes mm-hmm. more than just being there financially. Anybody can give you money, but it takes more responsibility and more and, and love to mm-hmm. raise a child. That's right. So were you living in a single family household, single parent household? Yes, up until I was three. Uh, my mom and my Dad, um, I got a divorce. I don't really remember it all, but um, there was always a man around. Mm. Always a man around. Mm-hmm. So, so you said your mom was there financially. So what did mean she just leave you money and did she just go off for days or weeks? No, she worked. She worked three jobs. So. Oh. She was uh, so it was like we only communicated by writing. So I would write a letter, leave it on the uh, mirror in the bathroom, and I would say, "I need this. I need underwear. I need a bra. I need lunch money." And then she would leave it, right. and that's how we would communicate that way. So she's working. <clears throat> so she's working three jobs. So she's working around the clock. So, but that meant, that meant she wasn't home on the weekends at all. So no, you, you, you didn't have them. Well, so you didn't have that mother daughter bond. No. How about grandmother? No grandmother. Well, my grandmother she passed away um, when I was only thirteen. I actually lost six people in my family in '96, which includes mm-hmm. uh, my grandmother on both sides of my family, my grandfather, my brother, my auntie, um, and my cousin. 
within seven months mm-hmm. in 1996. So my grandmother passed away when she was, I think she was 56. Um, and my great grandmother, she passed away when she was 64. So I didn't raise, I wasn't raised with grandparents and anything mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, they're pretty young. Mm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. young age, you know, considering, you know, nowadays I see uh, women in, in their 50s and 60s and they look awesome, you know. Mm-hmm. You know people are taking really good care of themselves. Now, so basically the abuse came in because you were always alone. So you weren't, you weren't left with no, no adult supervision, just in the house or in the apartment? I have sisters and brothers, um, but it was, me and my brother, we were really close. Um, but my sister, we, we wasn't really close at all because she was like four years older than I am. Um, okay. But we would be left with, at the time, my mother's boyfriend, you know, at the time, which whomever that would be. Um, it was one guy that she used to leave us with. Um, he's passed away now, but he used to beat us every single day. Mm, every day? Every single day. Because he was trying to watch TV and y'all was trying to play and he thought y'all was too noisy. Or he just you know, was an angry would man. Just have to, he was just angry. Like, as soon as my mother walked out the door to go to work, he would sit us on the couch for hours. We had to sit there with our legs crossed and um, our hands folded. And if we asked to go to the bathroom, if we asked to get, if we were hungry, he would just beat us. Mm. Wow. How long did that go on? That went on. I was I was five or six, so I think it went on. I want to say. I mean, it felt like a lifetime, but I want to say six months to a year. Mm. Wow, that's a good long time. All yeah. right, now in your book you state you say using the words I record in journals and notebooks I kept as a young girl. I now bear my soul within these pages by sharing my truth. I share my personal struggles with the world to help others and give them support and love I never felt as a young girl. I don't want anyone to feel what I felt growing up. But in my years of healing, I realize I'm certainly not the, the only one. So there's a lot of people out there feeling what you felt, you know, no mother in the house, no father, grandmother. She's gone now. Basically, when you really need a grandmother, you know, especially yeah. in adult age, you really do need your grandma and parents. Mm-hmm. So what else did you guys go through? You know, you've seen it for yourself. You know, you're young. You're pretty much babies. And um, now, okay, this guy, he's gone. So mom, so what? You know, so your mom, she just bring these guys around just, you know, because she needs a man around the house or she just, you know, just, she just had friends, boyfriends, and they need a place to stay for a little while. What was the deal with that? I- I never knew because, again, me and my mom, we didn't have that relationship where we communicated with each other. So I really, I really don't, I honestly can't answer that question because we just never had it. Still to this day, we communicate, but we just don't have that relationship. Yeah. Now, now you wrote this book. What was the purpose of this book, the main purpose, you know, in your words? The main part was, it, first, it was, it was therapy for me because I've been writing in journals and notebooks since I was 10 years old. So I basically just took everything from my journals and notebooks and I created a book because people, um, I, I just get tired of people talking about me, calling me names and just doing harmful things to me. And it's like I didn't have a voice. And I just, I just, I just was tired of feeling ashamed and embarrassed, it's just, it has, I'm just like, it has to come to a point where I can't feel this way. And like I tell anybody, this book is, is beyond you, it's beyond me. And when I found my purpose was in 2012 is when I found my purpose, when I tried to commit suicide after the third time. That's when I found my purpose. And that's when I knew that God has me here for a reason. And it's a reason why I did not die those three times. There's a reason, and this is my reason, and that's to inspire and motivate people, other people to tell their story. If I, if, if I can tell my story to help someone, because it's people out here that go through what I go through right now 
on a day to day basis. You know, yeah. I've been I've been beaten. I've been I've been raped six times. I've been molested. I've been raped by my own biological father. I I've, I've been through it all. So you, I've, I've done it all. So so you was a tech breaker. So when did your, your biological dad was living with you? Or was it you was visiting him or something? Is that when the attack happened? Yeah, I was visiting him. And you were what, in your teens? Mm-hmm. I was I was twelve years old. Yeah. So at that point what happened? Your your dad didn't really feel like he, he knew you and he was trying to open up and he just went a little too far. I mean, what was on his mind? You know, did he have problems? Well, you just don't know what the deal was. I mean, out. he he was like in and out of of our lives when I was younger, but I just knew that he used to work a lot. And if we wanted to, he was he was the person that if we get in trouble, he he would beat us. So my mother mm. would call him if we got in trouble, we did something bad. He she would call him, and then he would come over and he would beat us. So this particular time, I had to go over there because he worked at a flea market. So I had to um, work off my punishment, and that's when it happened. I was 11 going on 12 mm. when it happened. So, I mean, he was, he's never done drugs. He does not smoke, drink, never done drugs, never drank nothing. So I can't say yeah. that was the issue. So he had a mental so. breakdown. Something happened. That's, that's sick. That's real sick right yeah. there. Yeah. Now, now, he, now, your dad, your, your brother, your siblings share the same biological father. Just my my brother, me and my brother did it. Okay. He's so, he, so really, so for this, oh, your dad passed away. No, my brother. Oh, your brother passed away. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. So, so your your dad. So there's no explanation for his actions. You know. No, and like I you still said, no don't drugs. Know no drugs, and he has not served his crime. Nope. Mm. Nope, and that I don't want to give you all of it, but you have to read the book to, to get that information, but no, he has not served time um, to this day, and I'm not the only sibling he's done it to. No. no. Yes. That's, that's I'm the only right one there. that speak out about it, you know, so. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, what were some of the challenges you know, that you face writing this book? Reliving everything. Mm. Because when it happened, it's like I can tell the story and it's like I can be in that place. I put myself, because when I write the book, I want you to be where I am. I want you to feel what I feel and felt what I felt and so you can get a better understanding on who I am. And that was basically the hard part, putting myself back into that place, that negative place that I'm no longer in. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that you tried to take your life six times. Is that right? You said mm-hmm. your life six times or you were, you were raped six times? Three times. I was raped six now, times. I, mm-hmm. And that was because of the attacks or you just didn't feel like, you know, you, life didn't owe you anything? So it was time to leave. What was going on in your um, mind then? The first time is when um, my brother um, wasn't here because he was the only person that listened to me. He was the only person that was there for me. It's like someone, like my soul was ripped out of my body when he left. Mm. So I felt that um, I started having negative thoughts and, you know, if it was the devil, um, I just had this negative thoughts and dreams and thinking that it was okay for me to leave and be with him. And that's when I tried to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. I took, yeah, I took like 40 pills. Mm-hmm. Oh, your brother had passed. Mm-hmm. Oh, he had passed. Oh. Mm. Yeah. But he was a fighter, though, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, your reviews, you got some reviews out there, people read, reading the book. Mm-hmm. Heart-wrenching, uplifting. Joy Sheree has poured her heart out on paper for all the world to see. This fearless woman discuss her tragedies and triumphs 
in his autobiographical novel. The stories are real, and so is her pain. I hope this book gets in the hands of these kids out there facing similar situations, so they know that it will it will, it will get better. I look forward to reading future books. Wow. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. This, this, this reader was grateful. Five stars. Courageous, they say. Proud of you. You proud of yourself for doing yes, this, this project? Yes. Yeah, yeah, kudos. Take much strength. Mm-hmm. All right, Ms. Joyce, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk to you about where people can find you. You know, somebody out there probably want to give you a hug. We want to communicate with you on Facebook. You know, who knows? There's some people out there hurting going through the same thing. All right, hold yeah. tight for episode of Book Buzz, ladies and gentlemen. Just keep in mind, if you're one of those authors, you try and get the word out. If you can't get on the show, you can, you can advertise and promote you, all right? Let everybody hear about you. Remember, we, we're promoting the show in 12 countries, and we're doing very well here in the States. All right, hold tight, everybody. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction, looking for drama, suspense, and more? We to our publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website www.reachwellpublishing.com How would you like to have a book that reflects your life? Hi, I'm Luca Butterfly. I would like to tell you more about my latest book, The Reality of Luca Butterfly. It's a poetry chat book capturing my life that covers subjects such as self-esteem, anti-bullying, spirituality, family, friends, love, and heartbreak. You can purchase your copy online at twopenceandlit.com forward slash Thompson. To find out more about me, visit me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash M-H-C-H-A-Y. Thanks for listening. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You are listening to Power21.org with Jerry Royce. All right. Thank you, family. Thank you. It's Jerry Royce Live, y'all. We're talking to Joyce Reed based on a true story. Hurt. Hurt used to live here. And her website is www.imyourvoice.com and that's I M U R Voice.com. All right, and you can find on Facebook under author Joyce Reed, R E E D. It's like Christopher Reed from Superman. All right, and we're talking to Joyce Reed. Um, man, she reads, let's read, this reads, so will, I'm sorry. I read the wrong word. I am a single mom of two wonderful boys. I am a business owner. I am a writer. I am a college graduate. I am a friend. I am a woman. I am stubborn. I am real. I am a best friend. I am loving. I am worthy. I am forgiving. I am a fighter. I am beautiful. I am wonderful. I am God's child. Wow, you accomplished a lot. You're doing well. Um, College graduate, business owner, writer, raising two boys. Boys doing great now. Do they remember those those times? Do they remember what you went through, the struggles? Um, some, some of it. They were um, my youngest son. He was too young to really remember. But um, I do. I did sit my oldest son down and talk to him about everything, and um, because I knew that I was writing a book and I wanted him to hear from me and not anyone else. Yeah. Now. And Joyce, now during that time when you, you sound like you might have been in what middle school or high school when you got pregnant the first time. Now, now were you dating, you know, young guys then, or was it older guys, or you got pregnant accidentally? What, what went on during that time? Well, actually, the first first time that I, I actually um, got pregnant, um, I was eleven years old, um, mm-hmm. and that was that was out of rape. Um, 
and then my two sons that I um, I miscarried um, with that baby, mm-hmm. um, oh. and uh, my my two children that I have now they were out of weight. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Now, did those situations happen like during school? Were were you were you institutionalized, or you know, were you in a facility for girls? And you know, you know, you have males working at those places. Well, you just yeah. that, that's when you was on the streets. Then were you on the streets? No, I wasn't. Um, I actually, I was at home, um, and I was asleep. And uh, my mom let a man that she thought that she knew, a young man that she thought that she knew, um, in the house, and he raped me. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and then my second son, I was actually in a relationship with someone for five years. And um, most most women, with some women, don't understand that rape doesn't have to come from a stranger. It can be from yeah. your spouse, your husband, your boyfriend. I was in a relationship with this man for five years, and I was forced to have a baby with him. He raped me even though he was my boyfriend. Rape is rape. When it's unwilling and you say no and you're forced to do something you do not want to do, that is rape. That's right. Now, when you was in a relationship, did, did you have a problem, you know, when, when it came to, you know, being sensual with a man or there was no problem? You know, it just, was just wasn't a good time. You, you said, no, not tonight. You know, we do hear that, you know. Not tonight, babe, maybe tomorrow. Put on my calendar, you know. What was the deal with that? Uh, some men don't want to hear the word no or don't want to hear what well, I'm leaving you. And that was the case. Uh, I was that's a long time. With, five years. Yeah. I was just fed up with, you know, the lies and, you know, how. And I was young. So I met him when I was 16 years old. And, you know, he was 10 years older than me. So it was mm-hmm. like I was of the, you know, the lies. I was young. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you hear, well, it wasn't, he, he wasn't abusive to me. But uh, mentally he was. And it's like, you know how men, some some men, I'm not going to speak for all men, but some men, it's like when you tell me you're leaving or you get into an argument, I'm sorry, baby, let me buy you this, and then we fall back in. Mm-hmm. But you only know when you're tired. I can sit here and call my friends, my best friends, Friend, oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna leave him, but only you know when you're tired and when you're fed up. Now, are you in a relationship right now? No, I'm not in a relationship. No, just with God, just with God. Yes, I'm. Yes, I'm focused on me and my book and my career, my companies. And I'm just focused on me, and I'm waiting on God to place the right man in, in my life. Yeah, because I read here say, read in your bio, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's, yeah. that's, that's Jesus right there. That's right. The only way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only way. Now, it took a lot of strength for you to, to publish this book. You know, was it a friend or was it just the Lord speaking to you? What, what gave you the courage? The Lord, he, 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 he spoke to me because I wasn't into church when I was little. Um, I went to Catholic school, and I was raised as a Jehovah Witness, so right there I was confused. So I oh, never, yeah, <laughs> so I, just, I never really, like, I, like I said, I believe there was a higher power, but I just never knew that he would allow this to happen to me. But my last attempt at trying to commit suicide, that's when I realized when I was older, um, I was 29 years old, and that's when I knew that he has my back. He would never leave me nor forsake me. I've been in the, I've been literally in hell and back three or four times. He has mm. never left me. I didn't understand then, but I understand now. He never left me. He still mm. loves me. Of who I was and who I am now, who I'm going to be. Mm. Now, I didn't. I didn't think it was really possible, 
you know, just me thinking, you know, living in a big city that, you know, you can be homeless in, a, you know, in Georgia. It just seems like everybody's so southern, you know, country, they're going to help you. So many helping hands. You know, what happened that I, you and your boys were living on the streets? I mean, you guys were homeless. How did that happen in a state like that? Well, basically, the gangs were after my son. So I literally left my job. I picked up and we left to move to Georgia. I didn't know a soul. I didn't know one mm-hmm. person. So. Oh, I, okay. You re- yeah, oh, so, so you relocated from a. Oh, you relocated Chicago. from another place. Oh, from Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah, the homelessness is big there, and the gangs, right? Mm. Yes. So I was always I wanted to do what what my mom or my father didn't do for me, and that was protect my child, protect my kids. So I was going to do whatever I had to do to protect my son, and that's what I did. But in the process, I made the wrong choices too fast, and mm. I came down here, I got a job, um, I was working, and um, all within one week, lost mm-hmm. my job, couldn't pay my car note, um, just moved into an apartment, but within 60 days I had, I was about to get evicted, um, because I couldn't pay my rent, because I couldn't find a job. But one thing in Georgia, people are nice and friendly, but it's hard to find a job. <laughs> it's very mm-hmm. hard. Had no money saved up, so we had to leave. And then when we left, I was always thinking about my kids, putting my kids first. So I could have went back home, but I wanted my kids to finish two months, which was left of school, because I didn't want to take them out of school. So we lived in the car for the, for the two months. So we got up, um, woke up early in the morning, drove to different hotels, washed up, changed whatever we had in the car at the moment. Um, and that's how we survived. Two months later, I had, um, after they got out of school, I had moved to back to Chicago. Hmm. Oh, so you, did, you went back. So that's your home, Chicago. Chicago is my, uh, my home where I was born and raised. Wow. So you went back, started over again. Started then, over again for two years. And then it didn't work out, and you left. I'm back in Georgia again. Back in Georgia again. So you decided yeah. this time you was going to be prepared, though. I was going to be yeah, prepared. Money. I had I had $10,000 saved up. I, I knew where I was going. I knew what I wanted. I came back with the money saved up, but I didn't have a job. But I was blessed with a job within 30 days. I was down here, and I'm still there. Yeah. 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 Now, so the gangs, so how old was your son that the gangs wanted him so bad? He was 12. He was 12. Yeah, that's the age. Yeah, that's the age. He's trying to, because he can be a runner. Mm. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't look his age. Like, people still now think he's my yeah. boyfriend or, you know. But he, he was, he, 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 he plays football. So he's big and he, you know, muscular and, you know, you know mm. big. So he doesn't look like a, he didn't look like a normal 12-year-old. Right. So you were living in the housing projects in Chicago? Is, is that what the deal was? No. 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 I, no, I was fine when I was in Chicago. Oh, okay, so I, they I just were trying in. to recruit them to school. Yeah, because they're going to the good schools and try to recruit boys to sell drugs in those schools. Yeah, so it was, that it was bad around that my mom's to... house. It was around my mom's house. She stayed, she stayed in the city of Chicago, the south side of Chicago. So, so so wait, so when you lived there, there was no trouble, no problem with the gangs for him. No, you when said. I went back, when I went back for those two years, no, we stayed in the suburbs. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, you, so you, so basically, you ran out of Chicago, scared, and really was really it wasn't that panic of a situation then. It was like oh, you it was kind of, because it, it was. was. When they ask you, do you want to be in the gang? You tell them no, they will beat you. Oh, oh, so they was after him. Yeah, they Man. were they were after him. Oh, at his school when he was going to school, or no, at my mom's house. Oh. When he was so he had to go. Over, oh, so he had to go see your mom all the time because I mean, I mean, there was no way of avoiding that. No, because my job that I worked 
um, he had to go to that school because I, I didn't have a way to take him or pick him up because of the hours that I worked. So he would walk to my mom's house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a, a mother protecting her son. All right. Yeah. All right, Joyce. So um, let's talk a little bit before we, we got a few minutes left. Just how are you doing on, on social media? Are you engaging people? I mean, how how is the reaction to the book so far on social media? Well, so far I get a lot of messages on Facebook saying you're a powerful woman, you're amazing, you inspired me. I've had people, I've actually helped like two to three people write their own book. Um, people, some people just write to me and just say, just, can you just listen to me? I just want to vent. I've heard so many things. You know, I've, I've met, you know, friends on Facebook just by them just inboxing me and saying, you know, I've been through the, same, the similar things that you've been through. And maybe this story was worse than mine, but I was there to listen. Sometimes that's what people need. They need to just vent or they need someone to listen to them. Even if it's a stranger, I felt that talking to a stranger was better than talking to people that you love your family because they're always there they're judging you. I always have people mm-hmm. to throw things in my face. And, you know, it's always better to talk to a stranger to me, in my opinion. So oh, really? I'm assuming that was the same for for them as well. And, you know, we became friends and we're still communicating to this day. And, you know, most 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 people inbox me private messages because they don't want to put it on, you know, Facebook. Mm-hmm. But um I mean I get I get a lot of different responses because I also have a YouTube uh channel which is uh Joyce Reed and I have a YouTube video that I have actually two um, called My Life, My Journey, My Future, mm-hmm. and I have another video um, titled My Cancer Story. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Now, I've been on your Facebook page. Like I said, I, I thought I thought she was a model because I thought I remember seeing, you know, photograph sessions and everything. I said, oh, model won't come on. She must, must, must have written a book, you know, about the, you know, the industry, you know, because, you know, the hurt. Um, you you have no problems um showing your sexuality. You seem like you're real comfortable in your skin. So you know, so you are you recovered? Because I think I asked you that early in the show. You know, are you recovered? Or are you you recovering? And you you have, you have accepted yourself. I've accepted myself, and um, I am still recovering. Um, it's a it's a process because it's like like I said before. Um, I'm reliving everything, and my first step of therapy was writing a book. I've had therapy, so you know, with a person, but it's it's still you have to accept that therapy. You have to accept wanting to get past everything, and you just have to accept certain things. And it's just certain. It's just one thing that I just can't grasp and understand on how my brother is no longer here. Like, part of me was missing for so long. Even though it's been since 96, it's like I can relive that day like it was yesterday. And I know people lose their parents. People lose, you know, their spouses. People lose certain people. But when you have that person that you are there with every single day that you can talk to, never judge you, and just taken away from you like like that, it's just like it's detrimental and it's, I mean, it's just something that will always have a, I will always have a soft spot in my heart for that because he was like my best friend and part of my soul was just taken away from me. I think that's the yeah. only thing that I get like, you know, teary eyed and, you know, get all, you know, sensitive and soft mm-hmm. about, but everything else that happened to me, I'm, I forgive because um, that's the only way I can be forgiven. I forgive everyone that did harm to me, that put their hands on me, raped me, molested me, fondled me. I, I forgive them all because I always thought it was something wrong with me. But there's nothing yeah, wrong that's, with yeah. me. Yeah, that's right. That's what they try to make you feel like. Yeah. All right, Julie. Yeah. Mm. Sorry to hear about your brother. Did, were you able to devote a chapter in your book to your brother? Yes, a whole chapter. All right, yeah. all right we're going to take a quick break. We come back. You're going to give us your final thoughts. 
And um, we run out of time. We got to get ready for our next show. But we really appreciate you coming on Positive Power 21 and sharing your story, your life, your journey. All right? Thank you. Hold so tight. Mm-hmm. All right. Here's another episode of Book Buzz with Tamika Kane and her book, Seasons of Change. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.tamikapatrice.com. Hi, I am Martha Crystal Lexus, and I'm on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. Woohoo! Hey, hey, Jerry Royce Live, broke by. We talking to Joyce Reed, her book, Hurt Used to Live Here. You can find her on I Am You Are Voice, I Am Your Voice.com. Her website, I mean, Amazon.com. You can find her book under Joyce Reed. Just type in Joyce Reed, come right on up. And her book is based on a true story. You will cry, you will laugh, you will get chills, you may even get upset and want to hurt somebody, but that's her story. All right, Joyce, your final final thoughts for tonight's show? I really appreciate you having me on the show and me sharing my story. Um, I'm hoping that I inspired, motivated someone that's listening today to um, Mm -hmm also have the courage to speak out about what they've been through or what they are going through and always understand that love does not hurt and you don't have to be ashamed and embarrassed about what you've been through because God would not put anything on you that you cannot handle. We are all strong, beautiful people and we can get through it all because he will never leave you nor forsake you. And I appreciate again I appreciate you having me on the show and me sharing my story to help and motivate um, so many people. But I do want to say before we leave, um, I know you did mention that my book is on Amazon as well as my um, my website. But if anyone is in the Atlanta area next week on the 28th, I'm having a book signing. Um, you can ask me any questions. You can meet me in person. Um, you can also find that um, I'll post something on Facebook as well, but it's, uh, it's going to be at Fifth Plaza from 4 to 6. And um, I also do want to mention that in the process of me writing this book and getting through everything, um, I found the outlet, and my outlet was nail polish. So yeah. I started my own. I, I love colors. I love to be bright. I love to be different. So I started my own nail polish company, which is called Ironic Nails, um, which, mm-hmm. again, you can you can, um, I have a website for that, and I also have a Facebook page as well as Instagram. My Instagram is I am you are voice, as well as my nail polish is Ironic Nails. I have over 200 colors, and the proceeds, some of the proceeds every month, goes to a foundation or charity that empowers women. Yeah, so I do, I do get that. Yeah, well, you, you heard we, you know, we're in 12 countries, so if you want to go worldwide, you have to advertise with us. Your um, nail polish business. It sounds nice. I like your name as a business name. Joyce Reed, you know, cosmetics. Sounds powerful. I like that. So sometimes we get yeah. so creative with our name. I, I don't remember I don't remember people's really fancy like I I, I do um business um like workshops once a month, my director and I for the government. And um people have all these names like some 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 something consulting. Or whatever, and we never remember their names. We remember their name, but we don't remember their business name. They just try to be so creative. I'm like, why people don't keep the, the name names of their business simple anymore? Because <laughs> you want people to remember you, and they won't be able to find your website. You know, they can't remember the name of your company. I just be tripping out on that sometimes. Especially some people have some very very nice, um, you know, names that be that are. If you look at some of the most successful businesses, they named after people. All right, anyway, that's my little piece. Anyway, Joyce Reed, 
so glad you were able to share your story with my audience and um, hope they support you. You told a great story. And um, we'd be in touch with you. All right? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you all the time, y'all want to hear the good stuff. You got to listen to Jerry Voice, Jerry Voice Live Worldwide at Positive Power 21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. Take care, everybody. And stay awesome. Stay awesome all week long. Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on Positive Power 21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. All right. Take care, everybody. Have you been hurt? Been hurt been back, back there. God are talking back to you. Talking back. Cause you're not alone. No, no. Escaping to another reality. Through Dominic Wilkins' good book. Good books of your books, paperback, ebook, good book. Available on author D. Wilkins, goodbooks.com. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose Live Radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned and hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Terry B. Stewart, author of Playing While Hurt, and I'm with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy, Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iris Sendo Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Phil LeBurn. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what are you Boy, who's insane? Hey, this is Dahlia, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Lamar Marquis with Jerry Royce Live. All right, all right, everyone. We've got Robin in, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. On internet radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the Green Hills of Western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse is a sense thriller novel by Bill Power, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read. Deeply in thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various 
promotional services, and online bookstore. So head over to writeroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. I am Jerry Voice Live, and our book buzz sponsor for tonight's show is James DeShay. He has a brand new poetry book out, and his website is jamesdeshay.com. Hold tight for his presentation. Are you looking for a great book of poetry that is romantic, heartfelt, and full of male emotion? Then get Thoughts, Love, and Reflections by James K. DeShay. That's D-E-S-H-A-Y. Go to www.jamesdeshay.com. You will enjoy thoughts, love, and reflection. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Positive Power 21.org. That's right. Tonight on the show, we have Terry V. Stewart. She's a woman who wears many hats. She's a wife, a mother, a daughter, a sister, and a teacher. She was born in Atlanta, Georgia, and raised in South Georgia. She attended Albany State University and earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in sociology. She went on to obtain her special education certification at Vadasta State University. Soon after, she became a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, incorporated with the Valdosta alumni, alumni chapter. While teaching special education for 14 years, she earned her master's degree in education at Cambridge College and then went on to earn her education specialist degree in Nova Southeastern University. She is married to Charles L. Stewart, and together they have a beautiful and smart seven-year-old daughter, Tristan Stewart. All right, her hobbies include reading, traveling, shopping, cooking, watching movies, and spending time with her family and friends. She describes herself as having an adventurous spirit and is always willing to try something new she shares her mother's, mother's story of love, triumph, and pain with the world in her first published book, Playing While Hurt. Mrs. Stewart currently resides in Valdosta, Georgia. I hope I'm saying that right. All right. Welcome to the show. Terry V. Stewart, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Did I say that right? Did I say your school right? Did I say yeah, Valdosta? you did. All right. Valdosta. Mm-hmm. You yeah. did. Yeah, first time you've seen that. All right. Well, welcome to Jerry Voice Live Worldwide, and glad to have you. All right. Glad to be on your show. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And your first question for tonight is, who is Terry V. Stewart? <laughs> um, Terry V. Stewart um, is a woman who um, has gone through a lot, but I don't wear it. I don't look like what I've been through. Um, and I use my pain for my mess for a message. I'm that person that um, can see the glass half full instead of half empty. Um, I am, like I said, like you read in my bio, I enjoy many different things. I have an adventurous spirit. I'm always the daredevil. I'm the one that want to try stuff. Um, and I'm never the one to be outdone. I got that little um, sportsmanship type, you know, that little um, competitive thing going on. And I just enjoy life. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Now, beautiful book cover. We're going to talk about oh. your book in the second half of the show. Yeah. Now, you mentioned yeah. that um, you've been through a lot. Now, you have a lot of education, so, um, you know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Stay, I see you've been busy. Now, <laughs> what you've what you been through, what was, you know, what was so um, triumphant? Um, when you said I have a beautiful book cover, um, the lady on the book cover is my mom my mother and because of her I am the woman I am today but it took me a, it took a full circle moment for me to get to be this woman today um, when I say I've gone through a lot you know I've gone through witnessing um, my mom being beaten um, emotionally abused mentally abused um, and then to have her life um, literally um, stopped at the age of 50 due to a um, mishap um, she walked in for outpatient surgery on her shoulder to being 16 years of being incapac- totally incapacitated due to the mm. negligence of her anesthesiologist. And so mm. um, watching her, you know, and when, during that time I had to fill her shoes because when she um, had that accident, she was taking care of my grandmother, 
And so that responsibility fell on me. And I was still like a um, junior in college in Albany State when that happened. So you got this um, 21-year-old um, who's been about an honorary 90-year-old lady and my mother at the same time and trying to maintain um, my grades as well at undergrad. Mm. Wow. Um, <laughs> That's a lot. But, yeah, it's a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Did you hear to talk about it? Bro? Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, I have one brother. We are 12 years apart. Um, we're very close. Um, and he has been like a, like almost like a father for you too, as well as my big brother. Um, mm-hmm. But he and I have both kind of witnessed the same thing, you know, trying to figure out like why, you know, what what happened to our mom to make her endure the um pain and suffering that she went through, the need of pain and suffering she went through with relationships and, you know, mm-hmm. us having to watch it and to, you know, when she's finally starting to come into her own to be to being struck down in the crime of her life, you know, we just, you know, just a lot of um, questions that we were just trying to figure out why, how did this happen? And then how, in, in the midst of all of that, how well my mother handled the adversity that she took hard to herself. Um, the title, Playing While Hurt, was actually... Um, my brother's um, sermon the first um, Sunday after my mother's funeral um, mm-hmm. that he preached. Yeah, and he compared my um, um, mother to like an athlete. You know, athletes, they're always, you know, they, they, it's about the game. You know, it's not about them, it's about the game, the sport that they love. And, you know, they play hurt, whether it be physically, um, mentally, maybe going through something financially. You know, athletes go through a lot of challenges. You know, the politicking of the sports, which is, you know, NFL or, NBA or what have you, but they say, you know, it's all about that game. And so although my mom didn't play an actual sport, she understood that the mentality of an athlete was in the game of life. You know, she mm-hmm. taught my brother and I how to play while hurt. You know, about this life is not about you, it's about servitude. You know, if, it's, if, if my pain can be somebody else's relief, so be it. You know, we go through mm-hmm. it to help somebody else. Yeah, it's not about us. Mm-hmm. And so, wow. So how 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 um young were you guys when you were seeing her go through this abuse? Well, you know, my brother got to see the, the most of the majority of the physical abuse because he had to witness it from his dad. Then he walked when she thought he was, they were walking away from it with his dad, and then she married my father. You know, and to walk right back into the same thing. And um, I was smaller, or younger, but I do remember of the incidents that, you know, just really just stuck out to me at being um, four or five years old. And then when she finally left my father, um, it's a excerpt from the, um, the sample of my book where I talked about when she shared with me how my father had wrapped the um, telephone cord around her neck and he was dragging her. And mm. she literally was um, like the life of her breath, she was losing her last breath. And she managed to like just pray like God, if you let me live, I'll read him. And she said the cord instantly broke, and so mm. she knew she had to make good on the promise she had to walk away. And so when mm. she moved back to South Georgia, um, she didn't want to go. <laughs> of course, you know, going back leaving because South Georgia, she was from a town called Tipton, Georgia, and she did not want to go back to Tipton. She wanted to stay in Atlanta, but because she had to make good on that promise, she had to, she, she left, and mm. um. A few years later, she married again, my stepfather, and went from the, I mean, he was the church going, like family man. He had eight kids of his own, and he had raised wow. by himself. And mm. they were mostly grown, but it was the emotional um, abuse. And that's what I really got to um, witness, kind of like, you know, it's my way, no way at all. You mm. know, um, his kids could be sitting in the living room, and I could be sitting there with them. They were grown for the most part. And... If he was not home and he, and he would pull up in the driveway, they would all scatter. And I would be wow. sitting there like, why is everybody running? Why is everybody running? And, you know, he was, mm-hmm. and they would call me disrespectful. You know, you, mm-hmm. you're not respecting our dad. And he didn't like that, you know. And my mom was like, Terry, you know, maybe you should just go to your room sometime. So, you know how he is. We've got to work on him. And, you know, and I just couldn't figure out, like, why? You know, what was the big mm-hmm. deal? Yeah, mm-hmm. so. Wow. <laughs> Emotional abuse. Yeah, it was wow. the yeah, so he yeah. had no problems with them eight kids, though, did he? <laughs> he ruled with an iron fist. It wasn't until they got grown to some acting out, and they started, but he did. He ruled 
who do the iron fist. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, you, so it's not like your mom went through the same type of abuse. It was a different type when in the second marriage. It was more emotional. No, the, the, no, the first two, she was married three times. The first mm. two marriages was the actual, it was all that was incorporated. It was the emotional, it was the physical, you know, mental, it was all of it. Oh. And, and I remember her even sharing with me the first one. Um, she didn't really want to marry this guy, but she had gotten pregnant, 18 years old. So you married me, you know. That was my grandmother mm. pushing her to marry, you know, because you're pregnant. And she really didn't, she resented that, but she looked at it as a ticket of leaving, you know, South Georgia to get to Atlanta. And um, she would actually, she even shared with me how she would even initiate some of the fights, like in hoping that maybe he would leave her, you know. She, you know, mm-hmm. and well, she would fight with him, but then when she got with my dad, it was different. She, you know, she said it was like he would just, you know, tower her, but he would just beat her, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, not to give a whole lot of the book away, she even shared an incident where she had caught my father. Um, you know, she had made friends with this lady who was actually having a affair with my father, and she didn't realize it was my father. She was, you know, it was my mother's husband she was having an affair with, and they had wow. became friends. And so when they were going to confront the um, my daddy about his infidelity, like he's been busted, you know, my dad just looked at them and laughed. He said and left, mm. but he beat the other lady. Wow. So bad, you know, and so she, she was from like up north somewhere and she left and he didn't even, you know, he just looked at her, he never addressed it. And, you know, she said she should have known, like, saying like, come with this little kick being like, he really don't care about, you know, yeah. what else is going to take. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What did he go through in life to, to be that right? Right. 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 So you didn't get him, so you didn't get that in your, in your book, did you? <laughs> you know, only because I don't know a whole lot about his childhood, but I will say um, I just think hurt people hurt people, yeah. and something happened to him to make him be the way he was, you know. Because, but at the same token, I could see how my mom was attracted to him because he was funny, he was charismatic. He, you know, he when he was in his good mood, he was mm-hmm. the life of the party. But wow. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Mm, something just snap, yeah. So he, right. was he, was he, did he serve in the armed forces or anything? He did, and let me tell you, and he got hit in the head. And um, the doctors wanted to go in to repair something. You know, my mom was trying to you know, share it with me, and she said he wouldn't do it because he felt fine at that time. You got to keep in mind, this was like in the early 70s, and he was like, you know, doctors are not going to operate on me. I'm fine opening up my head. And he started having seizures as a result mm. of not having the procedure. And so he started, he began to self-medicate, like with um, smoking uh, marijuana, drinking, that kind of thing. Right. And the seizure progressively got worse to the point where today um, he had a, a real bad seizure back in like 04. So the, when, he, um, when he fell in the grocery store, he hit his head. And he doesn't know me to be his daughter anymore. He, just, he actually talks to me for my mother. He talked. Oh, he asked me how how baby girl is doing, but he doesn't know who I am. Mm. Wow, so he's pretty yeah. much up now. Right, so how old, right. How old so is he now? Now he's um I think like sixty eight. Wow, he's young so. guy. He's young yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are some answers I probably would never get. You know, as to like what happened. You know, with you because of course I was bitter, and I didn't have a relationship like a real relationship with him because I was just resentful, you know, the fact. And then when my, my stepfather, he adopted me. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like, you know, you, you let this other man, you gave me away to another man. You know, you didn't want me. So I had a lot of resentment toward him um, for that. So it wasn't until I got grown. And, you know, I was at Albany State, and I had this professor. Um, I was needing to take a class out of sequence because due to my mom's illness, I, had to, I sat out of school a um, term. Mm-hmm. And I had to get a special permission from her. And I went to share with her what, what I was dealing with, what's going on. And before I left that, she pretty much was like, you don't think your mom knew your dad was trifling or who he was before she got with him? You know, it's like, your mom, what, you know, why are you putting all the blame on your dad? Why you're not dancing with your mom? And I got so upset with that lady because I was, I felt guilty for I wanted to be mad with my mom because it's like I couldn't understand why she felt like she had to take what she, you know, took from men. But as I did more history in her childhood, she watched my grandmother do the same thing. She literally lost her oldest sister to the 
sustain domestic violence. Um, mm. So it it was just a generational curse, you know, if you will. Yeah, yeah. You mm-hmm. know, you hear about that. You know, now, I've been doing this show for about over a year now, and all these stories sound exactly the same. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, like it's a generational curse. It's like these women just attract these kind of men no matter where they go, where mm-hmm. they find them, whether it's in mm-hmm. church or in the hood. That's mm-hmm. what they attract. Mm-hmm. And the little good, the good little guys, they don't even see them guys. Mm-mm. They see the Mm-mm. one with the horns on their head. And, mm-hmm. and like them. Yeah, and attract them. Oh, love them to death. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they, they, that's what we saw a play this past summer that was produced by my cousin. And man, she put a twist on that thing. And that was it was written from the perspective of um this guy shows up like an angel, but, but once he put that ring on the finger, bam. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Different guy. Yeah. A different guy. Yes. The true colors. Wow. Yeah. I think that was a good play. And that and you know, and I can I can see that. But you know, um my grandma used to tell me, you know, I was dating this guy in college, and he was carrying me through all kind of changes, and, and I just, we had stopped seeing each other, and she, you know, she had asked about him, and I was just like, I'm not seeing him anymore, that guy anymore, and she was like, why? I said, I could just, if I could, I could get someone else, I don't have to deal with that, and she's like, why? Because all men are the same, you just trade off one for the other, I mean, all of them do the same thing, you know, and so that's what she had taught to her daughters, you know, um, my, my aunt, my mom, um, and it was and my brother, and I was starting to buy into it a little bit. And when I made that comment to my brother, and he just went in. He was like, look at me. Look at me, Terry. What do you see? Do you see me being like those men that hurt our mama? Do you see me being like Trice? I mean, he just got it. I mean, he was livid. But in that moment, he validated me to tell me I was special. I was worthy. You know, I, I didn't have to take you no know, or so for nothing but, the, you know, the bad. So. Yeah. I'm so grateful for that because no man had never really validated me like in that, you know, on uh, uh, way before. Mm. Now your your brother is your brother married? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Been married over thirty years. His wow. high school sweetheart. Yeah, and mm. he had three kids and like, two grand. <laughs> yeah. So he so he know so he knew the way a woman should be treated and, and, and right. not to be treated. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So, because you know he left us in Atlanta. He got to the point, he said he got tired of feeling like that helpless little boy, you know, not couldn't help mama and just like got to sit in the room and listen to her get beaten, you know, and trying mm-hmm. to help her up off the floor, that kind of thing. He said he just, he just couldn't take it anymore when he would talk to her and she still wouldn't leave. By the time he was entering, in high, entering high school, he decided to go back to Tipton um, with my grandma. Oh, wow. And yeah, and he was just like, because I just couldn't take it anymore. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. So he feared for her death that he was going to get that phone call one day from you. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, mama didn't make it. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. And you know, and my mom has had so many, um, had so many surgeries, orthopedic surgeries. Um, and she never played a sport in her life. But all of us from mm. domestic violence. Like she had like three back surgeries. Um, even after she gave birth to me, I was the oldest baby in the. Um, baby room or what have you because she didn't let me go home with anybody but it, we had been in the hospital almost three months because she mm. had allegedly fallen downstairs. She would never tell us what, what really happened but she had fallen wow. down the stairs. Mm. So, um, yeah, and I was like three months old and we, I left the hospital with her. Yeah. Mm. I just stayed too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You're talking to Terry V. Stewart, the woman who wear many hats the wife, the mother, the daughter, the sister, and the teacher. She wrote a book called Playing While Hurt, my um, mom's story. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna, we wanna, people want to find out where they can meet Terry Stewart so they can hug her. <laughs> yeah, oh, find, wow. out where she get, find out where she get her strength from. All right, hold tight. But it's, uh, okay. These episodes of Book Buzz, hold tight. Okay. What happens when a man meets a woman who's everything? He wished his girlfriend was. Is his girlfriend's unconditional love and ride or die loyalty worth dealing with in her baggage? Find out the consequences of a man's need of self-completion and learn a lesson that everything comes with a price. The Lesson by Miss Cynthia Blue on Amazon.com.
think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey, inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Hardy, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse. It's a sense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Hello, I am Authorist Queen Inoshi, and I am on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And when I'm online, I listen to Jerry Royce live on PositivePower21.org. Hey, everyone. This is Tanika Gonzalez, spoken word poet. Whenever I'm online, I'm always listening to Jerry Royce live. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. On February 23rd, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I will be live on Jerry Rose live radio. I will be discussing my new album and my new single coming in February. Stay tuned. We'll see you there. All right. We're talking to Terry V. Stewart. Right. Woman with a Bachelor of Arts degree. <laughs> Woman with a Master's degree. <laughs> you have a doctorate? I didn't read a doctorate. No. You know what? I stopped. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Education, your <laughs> occupation. Mm. <laughs> All right. That's All right. Well, you've been um, teaching in special education for 14 years. You must have a yeah. lot of patience. I know the kids are so difficult. And probably no more difficult <laughs> than back in the day, but. No, uh, no, no. It's understatement. It's an understatement. Uh, um, kids, I, yeah, yeah. That, the, um, Population kids I work with, you know, you wouldn't know they have a disability, you know, uh, just by look. Um, they're LD, and my kids, um, and so it's like, you know, and that's kind of the challenge of trying to bring them up to par to meet the graduation standards um, or the passing standards. Like this year's my first year actually working at middle school level because I've done my first 14 years at the high school level, so now I'm mm. at the middle school. And that's just a whole nother challenge. I'm still getting used to um <laughs> and we got the only thirteen school up but I'm still trying to adjust to middle yeah. school age kids. Yeah, yeah but um they're totally else. different. Totally yeah. different. Especially them little girls, I know them. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. it's interesting. No day right. no, every day is different. Every day is different. <laughs> right, you never know. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we're going to talk about your book now. We talked a lot about your mom and who's in the book. Um, so what were some of the challenges in writing this book? Oh, gosh. Um, well, it was like um, during the, I'm sorry, about six years ago, um, my mom um, had developed um, the cubitus ulcers. And they were so bad until she had to have, like, three surgeries within one week. And that was, like, a, a real trying time, trying to figure out, you know, like, how this happened. And, and it was, what, she was, what she was dealing with was totally unavoidable, you know, because of, you know, she was a caregiver. She was a CNA. And I, she had taught me how to take care of patients with my grandmother. I to go to work with her. So mm-hmm. I knew what set of care she should have, but that was, like, a constant battle with my stepfather and me, you know, her care. And so during that time of turmoil with the families or what have you, I um, was sitting there and God was like, you, wanna, you need to write a book. You need to tell your story. You need to tell the story. And I'm trying to think, now, why am I thinking about this year at that time? And I kind of, like, brushed it off. And, you know, but it just kept coming back up. You know, you need to write a story. You need to write a story. So fast forward um, to 2011, and my mom passes in that August 18th, and uh, probably about maybe three or four weeks after she passed, um, she came to me in a dream and told me it was time to write, to go get the books, to, uh, and we need to go write. We can go get the books. And I started um, trying to um, write a little bit more. I was just, I, you know, I was kind of journal anyway, and I was just kind of mm-hmm. journaling some things down or what have you. 
But um, it was like until last, due to budget cuts or what have you, I didn't teach summer school. And that was the first time in like 12 years last summer that I have never taught, you know, that I didn't teach summer school. And um, mm. I just took that time to just really just put it together and just kind of dive in. And it just and it made me have to, um, you know, revisit some dark place, some things that I just didn't want to remember. It just, mm-hmm. it was just, you know, so it was really um, an emotional journey, if you will. And I, you know, and I would stop, you know, and I'd pick it up and I'd, you know, get myself together and come back mm-hmm. to it. And then some things when I would need my brother's input, you know, for the first 12 years of life, he had mama by himself. So then I'm, I got to put him in a funk, you know, put mm-hmm. him in a dark spot. You know, um, how about your my, husband? I mean, he had to be supported he, too. Yeah, hard. you know, yeah, he probably thought I was civil over here, you know, different personalities. I probably was <laughs> no one, you know, <laughs> sitting there writing. I might be dropping tears, or even I'm kind of like laughing or chuckling to myself. Yeah, so he said he has been like a, you know, like my rock and my biggest fan and cheerleader, you know, through this whole process. You know, yeah, it's like you can yeah. do it, and you can do it. And That's I'm grateful right. for that. Yeah, right. I am. Well, what do you What do you remember? What was the last, the last like final words your mom gave you? You know about her life. You know that you that you shared in the book. When my mom, before she that um, summer '91, I mean summer '95, excuse me. Um, that spring I had turned 21, and um, she started like actually talking to me like. You know, woman style, you know, it was just woman to woman. And so from like that May until that September, she had that story. That's when really and truly just like she took every moment to just really share the things that I wrote about in this book. It came directly from her. And one thing she used to always tell me, no matter what, Terry, I want you to stay to the cross and be of good courage. Stay to the cross. She even wrote it in my Bible. I didn't find it so late and I looked at it that she had actually written it to me, you know, so... That was her mantra, like, you stay to the cross, you know, and be of good courage. Mm, and so that's, that, that, yeah, and, and that's one thing that you know, I, it really resonates with me. Even when I was viewing her body for the first time after she passed, I literally heard her. Cause when I really felt like I was just going to, like, just lose it and pass out, and I, it's like I heard her tell me that, and I just immediately, like, gathered my composure. You know, you know, she told me, mm-hmm. that, you know, stay to the cross and be of good courage. Yeah. Wow. That's one wow. the most powerful thing I think my mom could have told me. Yeah. So did she so when she met so she she did she met Charles. She knew who Charles was, right? Yeah, yeah, she All did, right. but when she you know, he didn't get the privilege of meeting her prior to the surgery. He only met her afterwards. So she was um you know, incapacitated when he met her, but she knew him, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so he she, was there, like, no, was say, did she get a chance to Get to know him to be a good man, you know, knowing that you were yeah. safe. And I mean, you're sure that, that Charles wasn't one of those those demons that, that she was, you know, <laughs> that she was married to. You you know, yes, and even to the point where she would even like she gave me her like that seal of approval. No, like you did good, you know, yeah. yeah. Because during the time when, and before she had the surgery, the guy I was dating then, she just did not like him, and she was just telling me, you know, even though you know he's not. It, 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 the interesting part was for me. I had this thing where as long as you didn't put your hands on me, you know, now, and I was dealing with the emotional um, abuse and the mental stuff, but, you know, and the disrespect, but you just did not put your hands on me, you know, and that was twisted. It was like I was separating them, like, you know, just to put your hands on me. And oh, she would just wow. tell me, she said, yeah, and I couldn't understand why she would tell me. She was like, you know, that dude, he reminds me so much of your daddy. I'm like, how you can say that? Because my daddy actually put his hands on you. But no, he, he never touched me, but you know, I get it. I know in hindsight, mm-hmm. I, I got it. You know what he was saying. And, and yeah. so when he said Charles, and she saw how Charles would, you know, come with me and you know, beat me to visit home. We would do things together. She just, I mean, she loves Charles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Playing while hurt. All right. Now, I think you told me why you chose that title. Uh-huh. Um, give it to me again. I think you were t- you kind of related to sports. You know. Yeah, I think your brother, your brother. Yeah, when the first Sunday after my mom's funeral, that was his sermon title. Yeah, that's right. I like the, I like the um, title of that book. That's powerful. Now, have you had a chance to uh, go out and uh, speak to women groups? Um, you know, where, where are you um, right now? 
far as um, as, as right now um we still like in the planning phases because it's gonna um the book is gonna drop on um march 7th and um Right now, we're in the process of locking down a venue for local book signers, but since it has been on Facebook and the word is getting out, um, I have been, I've gotten invites to come and speak at different um, um, events um, with you, but they're like local here, and the one is in you know, October, it's Domestic Violence Month, and um, someone from Fort um, Stewart contacted me about coming over there to that base, and um, we can we tell them to share my story with the women there. And so, um, of course, you know, I got a sisterhood luncheon with my Sarah, um on March, actually the day of release. And um, we'll be at Austin's um, restaurant here in Valdosta. And, mm-hmm. I'll, and, I'll, and I just thought how fitting, you know, the day my book drop, I'll be with, you know, my Sarah's. And so we're definitely going to, um, you know, of course, you know, market and share there. So, um, but when I do get actual the dates and times of my actual book signings, of course, it will be all over social media. The um, Get It Right Consulting dot com, um, mm. my Facebook, um, Instagram, at TV Stewart. Um, it will be out there. <laughs> <laughs> I will make yeah, sure yeah. you all know, and I will, look, and I will even tag you, Mister Roy. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You better tag me too. Yes. That's right, Ty. That's how you market. Because I know a lot of people kind of new to the marketing game. But what have yeah. you learned so far about, about social media that you think? Because um, I know I didn't get into it until it was time to start this company, and then that's when I really started seeing, you know, how powerful it was. At the same time, you could see the evilness in it too. Right. But I saw right. more good than bad. So tell us, what, what have you seen about, you know, social media that kind of impress you? Um, it's it's a great tool. Um. Yes, I just upload, you know, just as a, um, when uh, my editor was saying that she's going to go ahead and put it on the, um, her page, on the page, her web, on the website about the book coming out, I decided just to share my um, bio peek in the cover on my Facebook page. And it was um, amazing how 